<clears throat> says seven, not says six. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Missouri Freedom Initiative. Today is Tuesday, April 19, 2022, and we have a special show today. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, I'd like to actually first, before we do anything else, if we have any Missouri politicians watching this right now on YouTube, please chime in and let us know you're here. Uh, invites were sent to multiple representatives, and so we're hoping some representatives will join us today. Uh, so please chime in on the YouTube side. Uh, please chime in and let us know you can hear us okay, five by five. That would be just awesome if you guys could do that. A five by five from Casey Rich. Awesome. Okay, good deal. Well, like I said, uh, it's a beautiful morning. We don't often do live streams in the morning, but we have some tough questions today. I'm joined by Casey Rich. We'll probably have some other people join us in the Discord group very shortly. Uh, Sheraton Farmer, five by five. Thank you, Sheraton. And the subject of interest today is Dean Plocker. He's the floor leader for the Missouri House of Representatives. Susie Bosch, 5x5. Five five. Thank you, Susie. Uh, we're uh, an invite, by the way, uh, in warrior class, 5x5. Five five. Excellent. Okay, guys, just so you know what was done this morning, um, I created this YouTube event and emailed this event to 14 representatives. And so I'm hoping uh, some of them can uh, come in. Um, can't leave a voicemail with Plocker right now because Plocker's voicemail is full. So, uh, hey, Chris Stiegman. Hey there, buddy. Nice of you to come in. Uh, so I can't let Plocker know, but I'll tell you, Jody Grace is here. Good morning, Jody. Thank you. Um, so I can't uh, call Plocker and leave him a voicemail. Uh, I did leave one with him yesterday, but since sometime, I think, what, what time did I call him? About 6.45 p.m. last night. So sometime between 6.45 last night and 7.35 this morning, his voicemail box is full. So hopefully his L.A. can start cleaning those out so we can leave messages with uh, Dean Plocker and talk to him a little bit more, hopefully, about uh, HB 2009, Susie Pollock's bill, and HB 2118, Jared Taylor's bill, two bills that he apparently, uh, apparently just won't let through. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. And welcome to Caleb, Liberty Revolutionary. Good morning to you, buddy. So uh, at any rate, uh, good morning to Casey Rich and Liberty. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Okay. Hey, guys, if you don't mind, let's start out this morning by playing uh, Ron's video. Now, I realize it's about 20 minutes long, but for those of you who don't know what happened on the House floor on April 14th, that would be uh, last Thursday, uh, this is a good primer or primer. You know, however that's pronounced, on what Dean Plocker and Rudy Veit did to Susie Pollock's very popular, the most popular bill of the year that everyone in Missouri wants, what he did to that. So let's go ahead and get that video queued up. And uh, hope, actually, hopefully you guys can hear it. If you can't hear it, let me know. But I will give you a link to it. In fact, if you can't hear it, we won't play it. So let's go... Rally day. Here we go. On April 14th, 2022, these two members of the Missouri House of Representatives deceived and made fools of nearly the entire Republican caucus. What follows is the background and the actual video of the 15 minutes of floor debate when they perpetrated their evil deed. For years now, literally thousands of moms, dads, healthcare freedom activists, and other average Missouri citizens have been trying to rein in the abusive power of the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. The 2022 effort has been focused on House Bill 2009, sponsored by Representative Susie Pollack. This bill does three things. It reins in the overreach by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, it restores parents' authority over health care decisions for their children, particularly vaccines. And it protects medical professionals' right to serve their patients in the patient's best interest. House Bill 2009 embodies some of the most important priorities of the House Republican Caucus for 2022. 
Over 45 Republican representatives have co-sponsored House Bill 2009, more than any other bill this session. You would think by now this bill would have already been passed out of the House and sent to the Senate. It hasn't, though. It's been stalled by Majority Floor Leader Dean Plocker. And on Thursday, April 14th, one of the dirtiest tricks in a long time in the Missouri General Assembly was perpetrated by Representative Dean Plocker and Representative Rudy Veet. Together they hoodwinked and made fools of the entire Republican caucus while Democrats sat quietly aside enjoying the spectacle. You're about to see Floor Leader Dean Plocker's plan to harass and humiliate Representative Pollock with the help of the deceitful actions of Representative Rudy Veet and at the expense of the integrity of the entire House of Representatives. Plucker's plan started by getting unsuspecting Representative Benny Cook to bring his bill, House Bill 2452, to the floor for perfection. Then he tricked Representative John Weeman into offering what amounts to the entirety of House Bill 2009 as an amendment to Benny's bill. All the while, though, he had Rudy Veet waiting in the wings with an amendment to Weeman's amendment, and his amendment would virtually gut the entirety of the House Bill 2009 language, leaving only an exemption form that is not much different than what is already in statute. Normally, offering such an amendment is fair game, but in this case, Rudy Veet misrepresented what his amendment would do. He made it sound like it was actually an enhancement on a parent's right to use a religious exemption. Using logic that would be an embarrassment to a first-year law student, let alone a former judge, he actually took away parents' options with his amendment. What's worse, he didn't reveal the fact that his complex amendment actually removed the vast majority of the bill, leaving only the exemption form. Even when questioned by Weeman, Rudy Veet didn't admit that his amendment was going to remove virtually all of Weeman's language. Among the first things a new legislator is told is that his word is his most important asset. It is his sacred trust. Veet betrayed that sacred trust. And not just to John Weeman, but to the entire General Assembly. On that same order of business, I ask that you recognize the gentleman from Texas on a motion for House Committee substitute to House Bill 2452. Gentleman from Texas. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that House Committee substitute for House Bill 2452 be perfected and printed. The gentleman from Texas has moved for the perfection and printing of House Bill 2452. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that House Committee substitute for House Bill 2452 be adopted. The gentleman from Texas has moved for the adoption of House Committee substitute for House Bill 2452. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the title for House Committee substitute for House Bill 2452 be agreed to. The gentleman from Texas has moved that the title be agreed to. Gentleman from St. Charles. Mr. Speaker, I have a titling amendment ending in point zero seven H. It has been distributed and I move for its adoption. Don't worry, guys, the audio comes back. The gentleman from St. Charles has moved for the adoption of House Amendment one. Gentleman from St. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the titling change here, we are just deleting the words by pharmacist, so that way the title then reads uh, three new sections relating to the administration of medications. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Discussion on House Amendment 1. Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the titling amendment, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no? And the ayes have it. You've adopted House Amendment 1. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is House Bill 2452. Uh, currently in the state of Missouri, pharmacists are allowed to administer vaccines, but this can only be done with a protocol from a physician. 
While current, state stat while current statute does not dictate that pharmacists may immunize without a protocol, emergency situations have proven that a pharmacist mo is more than capable of administering vaccines. Under the former emer emergency order we had, uh, pharmacists were allowed to immunize under the emergency order. This piece of legislation reduces this piece of legislation reduces regulations and gives patients greater access to health care. This le piece of legislation has went through emergent issues. It passed out 12 to 0 and through rules, and it passed out 12 to 0. With that, I'll take any questions. Gentleman from St. Charles, Wilbur we'll Steve Rise. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to, brief, uh, to speak briefly on this bill and also to offer an amendment. Proceed, gentlemen. Uh, first off, this bill was heard through the insurance committee, which I chair, and uh, we thoroughly vetted it. It's a good quality bill. I think uh, the bill sponsor uh, certainly uh, did a great job articulating what it does, and I, I, I solidly support this, um, this legislation. Now, moving on, Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment ending in point 06H. It has been distributed. I move for its adoption. The gentleman from St. Charles has moved for the adoption of House Amendment 2. Gentleman from St. Charles. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, this amendment provides a little more of a streamlined method for parents uh, to opt out of vaccine requirements if they strongly ha um, have held beliefs to the contrary. In some cases, parents have made, been made to go through complicated and inconsistent requirements in order to opt out of that requirement. Uh, this amendment will standardize that process, eliminate burdensome and unnecessary requirements. In addition, it uh, provides a standardized form for opting out of the requirement, because in many cases they've, they've gotten conflicting forms that they have to complete. Uh, this amendment also provides for acknowledgement of acquired immunity, much like the provisions in the bill that I filed, 1575, um, which I filed earlier this year, has gone through committee hearings. And then also provides um, just protections for physicians who recommend that a patient opt out of a vaccination. With that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Discussion, gentleman from Cole. I move to offer an amendment ending in 2.12H and move for its adoption. Amendment to the amendment. The gentleman from Cole has moved for the adoption of House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Gentleman from Cole. Speaker, we presently have a statute on the books which requires that uh, certain vaccines that children have for protection of the children and for protection of all of us and to address pandemics. But in that, in that statute, we also have a provision that protects the religious freedom of people to file an exemption. The problems we have today that has been brought to my attention is that there are schools that are not honoring that exemption. They're making it hard for parents to, to get that exemption, creates confusion, and they're denying people the e easy opportunity to, ex uh, to, ex to exercise their religious exemption. My amendment gets straight to the point, and basically it sets up that every school board has to have on its website uh, the, the terminology that we put, it determines which uh, vaccines they want to be exempt from. It gives them uh, a clear, de defined right to do that, and there won't be any objection. There was some discussion in the original one whether or not we had conscientious objection. That is not in my bill, and that's for a reason. The, the U.S. Uh, Missouri Constitution may have the word in it, but the U.S. Constitution does not refer to conscientious exemptions. It talks about religious rights, and, and we want to protect those rights to be able to go into federal court where your real action is if someone's denying your rights. And under 1983, you have much greater benefits and rights, and the federal court has defined religious beliefs very broadly. So the, while some discussion about whether or not conscientious objection should be in there, if we leave it in there, it's taken away easy access if, you're, if your rights are being denied when you went to the school, gave them the form, and said, here it is, and they refused to honor it. So my amendment, one, it clarifies what needs to be done. 
It's not taking the shotgun approach through the whole bill. It's a scaffold. The problem I've been told is schools are not honoring our religious exemption. And by putting and narrowing it to religious exemptions, I have re we are guaranteed the right to be able to use the federal rights and benefits of 1983 in the U.S. Constitution, which refers to religious freedom. So this bill, I think, will, will make schools that understand the consequences if they don't and, and, and sets a clear path for those who want to claim religious exemptions. And that the other part of it does is you may want your child to have one vaccine and not the other one. So the, the provision it has in there clearly delineates which ones you don't you have a religious objection to. So this this amendment I think clarifies what the problem is, gets to the point, and offers more remedies than what any uh, the existing law does. Thank you. Discussion on House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Gentleman from St. Charles. Uh, to inquire the uh, amendment to the amendment maker. Gentleman from Cole, do you yield? Yes. Proceed, gentlemen. Okay, so just real quickly, I want to clarify some things. So your amendment is not taking out the, the existing requirements that we have right now for children to get the, the basic immunizations that are required right now. No, we... I believe those existing requirements are, from a society standpoint, good. And I had many doctors and nurses in my office even today and this week talking about it. But we also have to recognize people's religious freedoms. And this is a balancing act of doing both, that it relieves in, in existence those there. But if you have a religious objection to it, you can exercise it. And more importantly, if, you, if they interfere with your exercising that right, they now have a, a federal cause of action and a state cause of action. And I think the schools, once they know it's clear they have to, they'll quit playing games with those that don't want to enforce it. So you're striking out a portion of this bill uh, that specific talks about religious um, and conscientious objections. So um, where is it still allowing them to request for that exemption? I know there's, the form is, you're keeping the form in there, I guess. I left in the bill the religious exemption. The only word I took out was that conscientious. Religious oh, okay. is still so in there. Okay, so you took out the conscientious portion. I just took out the word conscientious because, one, that just creates another gray area. And while it's in the state Missouri Constitution, you can argue one way or the other. Certainly when you want to get remedies, uh, a federal court and a threat of a federal court action where you can collect action on punitive damages, et cetera, uh, rings the bell. And we don't want any of these cases wanting, ending up in lawsuits. We don't want parents being forced to go go to court to ex exercise their religious freedom. This puts the hammer out there that schools now know this is the law, we have to abide by it, and these people are entitled to their exemption. So does it remove the portion with regards to physicians who were to uh, sign off on the exemption? Rel the only people who sign off on their exemption, yes, it does. It's the parent or the guardian signs off. Okay. All right, thank you for the inquiry, Speaker. That's clear in there, and, and the form. It's just the parent or the guardian who signs off. A few minutes left to the video, gang. For the discussion, gentlemen from Caldwell, what purpose do you rise? Scott. Scott, I apologize, gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, to speak briefly on the bill. Proceed. I am strongly opposed to mandatory COVID vaccines for anybody. Even though I've had two COVID vaccines and the booster myself, but that's my choice. I think when we dive off into uh, vaccines, we may allow the emergence of long control diseases that are deadly or debilitating like polio, diphtheria, and meningitis. I think we have a chance to increase cost across all taxpayers due to increased health care and costs associated with illnesses. Increased in childhood, and infant mortality rates due to illness that is severe, decreased school attendance to illness which translates into lost wages for parents, major step back for public health advances. Infectious disease was leading cause of illness and death prior to vaccines. Bottom line, vaccines work and keep our economy going. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the discussion, gentlemen from Texas. Uh, permission to inquire, uh, permission to speak on the amendment. Proceed, gentlemen. Uh, I approve of uh, the amendment and the uh, um, amendment to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. 
and the ayes have it. You've adopted House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Further discussion on House Amendment 2 is amended. Seeing none, gentlemen. Lady from Laclede, what purpose do you rise? Uh, to speak on behalf of the amendment. Proceed. Uh, this is a great amendment. Um, a lot of people have worked very hard on this amendment. It looks a lot like um, something I've seen before, and it's very, very needed in the state of Missouri to protect our children. And um, unlike some people in this house, I don't care who gets recognition for this legislation. It's just very needed. And so please support this amendment. It is, it is um, vital to our freedom and the health of our children. Thank you. For the discussion on House Amendment 2 is amended. Seeing none, all those in favor, I'm sorry, gentleman from uh, St. Charles, you recognize the close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just real quickly, I would like to acknowledge uh, other members in this chamber, uh, especially the lady from Laclede who put a lot of effort into this amendment. Um, and you know, I know myself and others filed many bills related to uh, vaccine mandates and to try to address the concerns that many of us were facing from our constituents in our in our various districts and um, this is uh, hopefully a good attempt to try to move the ball forward and get some um, reasonable uh, requirements in place to protect our parents and their rights and their children's rights and with that I renew my motion. The gentleman from St. Charles renews, renewed his motion for the adoption of House Amendment 2 as amended. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. You've adopted House Amendment 2 as amended. Gentleman from St. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an amendment, amendment ending in .01H. It has been distributed, and I move for its adoption. The gentleman from St. Charles has moved for the adoption of House Amendment 3. Gentleman from St. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, just to let the body know, this is the Tricia Leanne Tharp Act that would have the Board of Pharmacy recommend that all licensed pharmacists who are employed uh, to obtain two hours of continuing education in suicide awareness and prevention. Uh, this is a bill that has been heard in the health, mental health uh, committee. It has been voted out unanimously, and I will be happy to answer any questions, and if there are none, I renew my motion. Discussion on House Amendment 3. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, this uh, did come through health, mental health. Uh, we, we voted it out. It's a, a great amendment. I approve of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the discussion on House Amendment 3, seeing none, gentlemen from St. Charles, you recognize the close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I renew my motion. The gentleman from St. Charles has renewed his motion for the adoption of House Amendment 3. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. You've adopted House Amendment 3. Further discussion on House Committee substitute for House Bill 2452 is amended. Seeing none, gentlemen from Texas, you recognize the close. I renew my motion. The gentleman from Texas has renewed his motion for the adoption of House Committee substitute for House Bill 20. Okay, gang, that's basically it. So let me see if I can, there we go, get it back. Okay, uh, we're back to regular talking now. Um, thank you for, for watching that with us because like I said, that's kind of a primer for uh, basically the treachery that happened in Jefferson City. Um, you know, apparently treachery anyway. Uh, because basically what um, Dean Plocker had done is actually eviscerate or kill Susie's bill um, and with the help of Rudy Veit, or Veet, however you pronounce his name. If you're watching, sir, I apologize. I'm not meaning to slaughter your name. I just don't know how to pronounce it. But I think it's important and it's incumbent upon all of us to understand this was a bill that the people of Missouri wanted. They called... They emailed, they made visits to Jefferson City. They wanted this bill. And what does Dean Plocker do as house leader? He blocks it. He, you know, Plocker the Blocker. He's, he's got a nickname, Plocker the Blocker. He blocks this bill from having a real hearing, a real hearing in the house. And obfuscates and uh, using deceit, you know, basically in misdirection. Uh, ends up killing the bill. Now, the interesting part about, about all this, let me put another thing here on the screen, is, let's see if I can find it. There we go. Here is Dean Plocker's campaign contributors. Now, uh, Veet, thank you very much, Chris. Okay, Rudy Veet. 
So, and I renew uh, my request. If any politicians are watching right now live on YouTube, please chime in in the comment section. In fact, we'd love to have you come into our Discord and talk to us. If uh, Plocker, Plocker did get an invite to come in uh, today and talk to us. If you're here, you know, uh, Representative Plocker, please come in because we have some very serious questions for you. I'm going to go ahead and put the campaign con uh, contributors to Plocker into the uh, YouTube chat here. So you guys can start scrolling through and looking who his campaign contributors are because we're going to talk about the two bills that he simply just won't let happen. And, and oddly enough, the campaign contributors he has may have something to do with that. So uh, this being the case, this man is the floor leader. He's the floor leader on the House of Representatives in the state of Missouri, and he is not letting bills through that the people of Missouri want. But oddly enough, these are bills that his campaign contributors don't want. And, uh, you know, this has actually been documented. So at any rate, you guys can go ahead and look through that if you like and see who's backing him up. Of, of particular interest, we scroll down just a little bit, Top 10 industries, lawyers and lobbyists, health professionals, other single issue groups, and uh, conservative policy organizations, banks, and uh, public sector unions. Those are the ones of interest because uh, if you start diving down in there, you'll see that, you know, basically uh, organizations that are receiving federal funds through lobbying organizations in D.C., um, are also uh, uh, donating to Dean Plocker that actually get federal funding, federal grant money. So we have to ask some questions now because this is pretty easily found out. This, this, is, this is not like a, a year-long investigation, um, but we don't know. We don't know this to be the case, but it sure looks interesting. So I thought maybe we could talk about that a little bit today. And we're hoping that Dean Plocker will uh, change direction on HB 2009 and allow a fair hearing on the House floor because this is what the people of Missouri want. This is very clear. There's no way they could say they don't want this bill. There's no way that he could say he had more calls against this bill than for this bill. This is not what we're hearing from representatives in the House. We're hearing that this is the number one bill that they got phone calls on. Um, okay, gotcha. Voodoo Queen. Hey there, Voodoo. Thank you for coming in. And uh, so, but what's more interesting for a moment here, let's talk about, um, you know, 2009 most popular bill. Second most popular bill is HB 2118, which we're kind of calling the Stand Your Ground Enhancement Act. So, uh, and I have here with me KC Rich. And KC, you have a story to tell about that one, don't you? Yeah. First of all, I, I think we should call that bill innocent until proven guilty, Bill, because that's how it should be. Unfortunately, in the state of Missouri, you use uh, lethal force to protect yourself. You are you have to prove your innocence, but this bill basically takes that statute out and then flips it around where it should be, where the burden of proof is upon the state, and your defendant is innocent until proven guilty. But uh, Plocker doesn't, you know, he doesn't seem to like that too much. Yeah, um, basically, um, I've already said it on here before. I had an audience with Plocker. It was a uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday. It was after the House adjourned. And he basically just told me that 2118 wasn't going to see a lot of day, period, in a sentence. He's an ex-prosecutor. He sides with the prosecutors, you know, the police chief associations, and, you know, whatnot. And, uh, you know, we went around and around and argued about a few different points on it, which basically he didn't have a leg to stand on. But what it comes down to is he's an ex-prosecutor and he gets support from other prosecutors. And just look at his donors. You know, 2118 isn't in their interest. You've seen how they killed the sister bill, um, Senate Bill 666, pretty quick. When you had all those uh, prosecutor associations and stuff show up to testify against that bill. And they've been doing it throughout the house, but fortunately, after 666 got killed pretty quick, everybody started concentrating, you know, paying attention to 2118, and it, you know, got through both committees, you know, there's tons of people out there testifying in favor of 2118, 
and all the ones against, again, with the prosecutor associations and, you know, police chiefs associations and stuff like that. And that's basically who Plocker sides with. He doesn't, he doesn't side with we the people. He, he, you know, seems to side with the government entities more and uh, does their bidding. But yeah, when we had that conversation, basically just told me that 2118 wasn't going to see the light of day. Yep. I mean, and I can get more detail if you want. I can tell it everything verbatim, but that's your bottom line. You know, he has, it doesn't matter how popular this bill, how much the people want it. He's going to do everything, make sure it doesn't even get on the floor. That's what he told me. Yep, that's the bottom I, line. I, did, I didn't record. I didn't record the conversation. There are other people in the room, but that's basically how it went down. Okay. Well, uh, it is what it is. I mean, he basically has said that bill will never see the light of day. Yep. And this is the second most popular bill after HB 2009, Susie Pollock's bill, the most uh, popular bill this year, people calling wanting this. This is nothing more than parental choice. The parents can make the choice on whether or not the kids get the beer flu vaccine. That's what this is all about. Um, but basically by killing this bill, uh, but we're putting it in the hands of government, health departments, uh, whether or not your kids get an experimental vaccine. So, but I mean, this is actually really important to most parents. They don't want their kids to get this. So, you know, once again, it is interesting that Dean Plocker has an enormous amount of financial backers that are in the medical industry that have publicly stated they want kids five years old and up to get the beer flu vaccine. So I have to speculate that he is answering to campaign contributors and he really doesn't care what the people of Missouri want. That's what it looks like. Can I prove it? No, I sure can't, but it sure does smell like it. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Yeah. I, what else is there to say? I mean, like I said, you know, he flat out, you know, he flat out told me at 2118, when he going to see a lot of day, he wasn't even going to put it on the floor for, for a debate or anything again you know this this is where you got government ruling the people instead of them doing what the people want yep I, it's yeah I don't, know, I don't know how you can make it any plainer yeah i don't either and so i'm at a loss you know basically we're hoping dean plocker comes in today he's been invited we'd very much like to speak with him but if it is true sir if you happen to be watching this video and don't want to talk yet if it is true that uh, basically your campaign contributors matter more to you than the people of Missouri, um, then if that is so, please give us a number. We will start a GoFundMe and we'll start collecting funds so we can get HB 2009 through. We'll, you know, basically how much money do you need us to contribute uh, in order to get that done? Just let us know. And we'll, because this is a bill that the people of Missouri want. And I guess if we have to pay for it, just like uh, campaign contributors pay to get their special interests through, as opposed to just what the people of Missouri want, just let us know. Um, we're reasonable people. So, and, you know, once again, we're just speculating here. We don't know. Um, by the way, I want to say for the record, I have called Plocker's office six times. No response. I have emailed him now a total of three times. No response. So we're doing this video today in the hopes, and by the way, Plocker was emailed to let him know this video is happening today in his honor and uh, that he was invited to come in. And uh, uh, hopefully he shows up in the YouTube chat. We're, we're hoping. Um, but I think these questions need to be answered. Why is it that the second most popular bill that the people of Missouri want, which is HB 2118, why is that simply not allowed and you're simply not going to let it through and you're making that decision for everyone in Missouri? Is it because you have a strong moral objection to it and you're willing to override the will of the people of Missouri? Or is it because people that are contributing to your campaign tell you your job is not to let that bill through, to stymie, to to um, you know, obfuscate, to stall in any way possible. So we need clarification from you, sir. Please do chime in. If there's any other representatives here today, please let us know. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah, right now it looks like Plocker's more interested in uh, prosecutors having the power. They don't want to give any of it up. Yep. They would much rather 
uh, defendant have to prove their innocence so they can, you know, because that gives them that much more power over them, you know, makes it a little easier for the prosecution, I guess. You know, that was one of the things we discussed. I mean, he kept saying things, you know, like, uh, what's the one he said? If uh, him and me were the only person in the room, he's a Broncos fan, that's a Chiefs fan. He started talking smack. I started talking smack back. He shoots me. He said, how, how would they be able to prove that in court of law? Of course, I'd just say, well, if you guys can't, if the prosecution can't prove it with the power of the state, you know, law enforcement behind them and everything like that, how, how is somebody, you know, how is your average defendant who can't even afford a lawyer going to defend them, prove their innocence? And plus, you got to scrap all that anyway, because you should be innocent until presumed guilty in a court of law. Yeah. In fact, this this law is even here in the first place is, is, is ridiculous. It needs to change. And, and pretty much any argument, it was all just boiled down to he wants as much power and enhance a prosecution as possible. As far as your rights of the citizen goes, eh, that's all right. I mean, that's, that's well, the, basically, that's how it went down, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the guy does not care about the average citizen. He's more concerned about prosecu- prosecution having that much more power or keeping as much power as they can. Yep. You know, rights, forget it. Now, if he wants to come on here and say something different, come on. But, hey, that's what was said when we was in that room. Yeah, it does seem when you look through uh, his campaign contributors, the vast majority of his money is coming from corporate sponsorship. It's not coming from the people. So I'm wondering if if that's where his loyalties lie. Once again, guys, I don't know. We don't know. I mean, I've been trying to ask Plocker questions for months, and he's not responding. But it does seem that you know, basically, he gets not only seem it's reported he gets a lot more money from corporations than he does from individuals by far. Now, he may say that's true with everyone, but that's not true with many representatives that, that I talk to. The vast majority of theirs come from the grassroots as opposed to, you know, businesses. But I do find it interesting that it, it's uh, very interesting indeed that there's a lot of corporate sponsorship from the medical community to Dean Plocker that are very open about it. They want all kids to get the beer flu um, serum you know, starting at five years old and up. And yet he keeps uh, stopping the legislation that would help parents actually get out of that situation. And you got to remember a lot of hospitals were firing people, you know, employees that didn't want to get the, the jab last, uh, last year. That's correct. And by the way, I have Dean Plocker's so, telephone number up on the screen right now. Those of you who want to give or try giving Dean Plocker a call, his voicemail is full as of 930 this morning. Uh, hopefully uh, his L.A. has uh, uh, cleared up some of that so we can actually start calling again and, and leaving messages with him or hopefully talking to someone in his office. If anyone gets a hold of him, please let him know about this live stream. Please let him know. Uh, I'm not going to call because I get in trouble every time I call and someone picks up the phone. Uh, another long story. But if you guys want to call... Um, Please do. And then if you do get a hold of someone, please let them know. Hey, YouTube, in uh, Dean Plocker's honors going on right now, YouTube, get it there. You know, give them a link. Let them know. And we're joined today by Rebel Cry as well. Hey there, Rebel. Hey. Hey, thank you for joining so, us, man. Go ahead. Seems we've got time today. Has anyone looked up Plocker's record on SEPA? Did he vote for SEPA or not? Plocker was, um, and yes, he voted for SEPA. Uh, but he okay. also, uh, but there was political pressure like crazy for people to uh, sign right. on to SEPA. Uh, but Plocker yeah, actually has a long history of stopping SEPA during its eight-year um, uh, history. Actually, the last four years we tried to get SEPA done, Plocker was a problem. So, so it was just from his voting record and what he's not willing to let even come to the floor, all the bills that the people want. All the bills that put power back in the hands of the people. This guy's a track record of big government and not doing what the people asked. Well, a big exactly. government, yes, but also fascism. I mean, he he definitely represents large corporations and their interests. Right. So that's a big deal too. But federal government, guys, we have to speculate at this point. Federal money is going to these organizations that are donating to Plocker. So actually. You know, his 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 masters may be once again, we're speculating, maybe the federal government, the federal government may have, you know, a man in, uh, you know, the house, you know, right here in Missouri. 
because of federal money that you and I pay taxes for federally, uh, filtering through organizations like the Sheriff's Association, the Police Chiefs Association, the Prosecutors Association, and then them donating to Plocker. So, I mean, once again, we're just speculating. We don't know. But we're hoping that he can come on and answer some questions. Dean Plocker, if you are watching, please come in. Uh, Dean Plocker, if you are in, I will email you my telephone number. You can call on the phone if you don't want to come into Discord or come into the YouTube side. So uh, anyone in the House of Representatives watching right now that have some insights as to what Dean Plocker is doing, please chime in. Let us know. We're just asking questions at this point. Dean Plocker will not return our phone call. And by the way, we got plenty of people here in YouTube right now. We got plenty of people in Discord. If anyone has asked these questions of Dean Plocker and got a response, please let us know because he's not responding to me at all. And these are legitimate questions based on the fact he's stopping the two most popular pieces of legislation this year from getting through. I'm sure there's more, more legislation that he won't let through. But, you know, I can't track everything. We can't track everything. But at any rate, uh, so if anyone has any information on what Dean Plocker's doing, please chime in and let us know. Well, hey, we tracked the two most popular, and it's pretty obvious. He's yep. trying to block those. Yep. And is his reasons for doing it don't, you know, don't have a leg to stand on. I feel like an idiot at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I uh I just uh I went to go uh get in the group here and uh I kept having audio problems and then I realized in my audio mixer I had the Discord turned all the way down. Okay, no problem man. We're happy to have you back with us. <laughs> hey, Paul from the Talk Junkies is asking, "Hey Pat, do we have term limits coming anytime soon?" Well, we do have term limits in Missouri. Uh, no one can serve in the House or in the Senate longer than eight years. So we do actually have term limits, but it gets more complicated with Plocker because, you know, Plocker um, raises so much money for the quote-unquote Republican Party and himself. He raises a lot of money himself, you know, for himself to run that uh, basically he seems to get, uh, you know, put into positions of power in the Missouri House because he raises so much for the party. So that's a party problem. He's got two more years, Worthwhile says. I believe that is correct. He's got two more years. And by the way, uh, right now he's a shoe in for Speaker of the House in the state of Missouri for next year. He's a shoe in for it. This is, can you guys imagine two more years with Plocker running the show in the House? Especially with what the treatment he gave Susie. You know, the treatment he's giving, um, you know, uh, HB 2118, where it simply just can't come to the floor. It's, it, you know, it's just right now, guys, if you're watching Missouri politics, we're not even hitting uh, basically the um, uh, the stuff that's, oh, gosh darn it. Uh, what's the name of the list again, T, uh, uh, Casey? Uh, the stuff that's actually scheduled for the floor versus the stuff that's not. Yeah, let me pull that up real quick. He's he's actually uh, pulling stuff up from the informal list right now and ahead of the formal list in order to keep 2118, you know, in the background. And so it just can't get to the floor. It, that's what it looks like. That's honest to God what it looks like. So uh, I, once again, if anyone, anyone on YouTube right now is a politician in Missouri and you're watching, Please chime in. Please let us know. Dean Plocker, if you're out there, we want to talk to you. Please come in and talk to us. And if anyone's calling Plocker's office, please uh, chime in as well. Let us know that you're trying to call uh, Plocker. Anyone uh, you know, calling 573-751-1544, uh, please let us know if uh, the voicemail is still full or if it's uh, emptied out a little bit so we can start calling again. Yeah, right now, uh, 2118, and actually 1992 is 5th uh, is, uh, in the queue on House bills for perfection, and 2118 is 7th. But the thing is, he can move that stuff back and forth. And he will. sure can. Yep. You know, just because you know, it's lingering there, it's, it's kind of like holding a carrot in front of you, making it look like, oh, yeah, it's almost there, it's almost there. But, uh, you know, we'll see if it actually gets there. Yep. 
hopefully after today, it'll be up front and center, you know, 2009, 2118, 1992. It should I, all be up there. Yeah, I love what uh, Rebel Cry just said, you know, when he, when he was talking. You know, basically, um, it, it comes down to this. Uh, he basically isn't serving the people of Missouri. It doesn't look like he's serving the people of Missouri. Um, he's serving yeah. special interests and lobbyist groups. And he has a lot of power as floor leader. Too and you much know, they, always say, they right. always say the cream rises to the top. I don't know. We got a lot of good people as representatives and even senators, but they don't seem to rise to the top. Seems like the <laughs> yep. we get the people who who says, no, nah, that, yeah, that's the most popular bill. Nah, not happening. Second most popular bill. Nah, not going to touch it. Yep. You know, it, it's like, how did these people get up there in their positions? How that's do a, they do it? That's a good question. We don't have a good answer for it at this point. Dean Plocker. People uh, have been asleep for years. Yeah, that's part of it. And, and also, too, I think many people don't pay attention to state politics. Guys, I'm that, curious about the representatives that vote for them. You know, they get voted into those positions, don't they? They do. And it, it has to do with how much money they raise. I think that's the biggest uh, factor when they hold those internal elections in the Republican caucus. You know, basically, um, that's how he gets there. And it's not really a vote, then, is it? Not really. <laughs> It's a buyout. It's a popular. I mean, if that's at it, I mean, it's speculation. A bribe. Speculation. Yeah. Yeah. Speculation. Yep. So once again, we renew um, our, you know, our, our, you know, request to um, Plocker. Plocker, if you want money to put 2009 on the floor, let us know. We will start a GoFundMe. And we will raise money so that you'll put it on the floor. I mean, tell us how much money, if we're speculating right now, because once again, you won't talk to us. But it does look like your campaign contributors are actually, uh, you know, taking, uh, you know, all your attention away from the Missouri voters. Tell us how much money we need to raise for you and give to you in order to let 2009 on the House floor. Um, because we all we could do is speculate at this point. You're not answering our phone calls. You're not answering our emails. In months, months we've been doing this. So we know you're a busy man, but uh, we're talking about the two most popular bills in the state of Missouri. Or maybe we have to go to law school and become prosecutors. Maybe, you know, pay attention to us. Then. Yep. Let's see. Well, Danny, I don't think we'd have time for that, though. Danny Harris says, get him out. He's for the swamp. Yeah, it seems that way. Patriot Pearl uh, is chiming in. Warrior Class 3, all the special interests know he's for sale so they can buy him. Yep, that's, uh, once again, we don't know, but that seems what it's like. I mean, it just, it seems like it anyway. Uh, Gary Here we Rod go. We got one in the chat. Too much power for one man. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I sent him one of my emails I sent to him had said something like that too. Yep. Gary yeah. Ride says he called Plocker's number, and it says voicemail for Deanna Hendrick is full. That's correct. Uh, Deanna Hendrick is his L.A. Yep. So, uh, legal assistant. Legislative assistant. Uh, I, I'm not sure which one it actually refers to. We call them L.A.'s. Forget Igor. <laughs> Most of my friends are at work, but intend to watch this after they get off. They want to know Plocker's response to our questions. Warrior class, we want to know too. Uh, guys, please share this uh, live stream. Please like the live stream if you can. Um, let's, uh, let's once again, Plocker, and if you're here, Plocker, please come in. Uh, there's a bunch of people here in Missouri that have questions for you. You're not answering our emails. You're not answering our, our phone calls. We're hoping that maybe, you know, a live stream in your honor will get your attention. So please come in if you're here. If if uh, any LAs are here, please let us know. We'd love to talk to you. Warrior Class says I'll post this to social media. Okay, that's, you know, once again, we, we do what we can. We are trying our best to communicate with our leadership in the state of Missouri. And it seems to me they don't want to talk to us. But wouldn't that wouldn't that be consistent with not doing what we want either? They're not doing what we want, and they don't want to communicate with us either. They communicate with us, you know, basically when they're running for office. 
but it seems like as soon as they get into office, well, not they. I don't want to say that. We have wonderful people in the Missouri House. Wonderful people. Yeah, we just can't get them into these positions of power. Yep. You know, we get these, well, you know, we get these uh, blockers <laughs> find, yep. their to, find their way to the top. And they have no interest in what the people want. Yep. And uh, blatantly obvious. Yep. To those of you who may watch this now or watching live or watch it later and say, oh, yeah, look at all the problems Missouri has. Every state has these problems. But in order for us to clean this up in Missouri, we have to expose this. That's right. That's what we have to do. Deal with it. That's correct. We can't deal with it unless we talk about it. So um, I'd like to thank if Ron Calzone ever happens to chance upon this video. I want to say thank you for that video that you put out and the write-up that you put on the uh, MissouriFirst.org uh, because he covered this pretty well. And, uh, yeah, he did, he did a bang-up job on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Patriot Pearl says, I've shared on my Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let's, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, someone from Jefferson City can chime in here. Hopefully, it would be Plocker or Plockers LA. Hey, Mad Mama Non 2 in the house. Welcome. Yep. So, yeah, no, uh, um, go ahead. All right. Uh, again, the chat warrior class three said most of my friends are at work and intend to watch this after they get off. Yeah. So, any politicians out there thinking people ain't going to know about this <laughs> or watching it or whatever, remember, most of us have to work for a living, you know? Yep. So we can't we can't drive up to Jefferson City anytime we want. We can't stop what we're doing and watch these things, but the word will get out. Yep. Guarantee it. Just well, like with SAPA. Since Dean Plocker can't clear out his voicemail, let's go ahead and uh, get his email on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the YouTube chat. There's his email address. I'll also uh, go ahead and put it on our YouTube transmission as well. If I can figure out how to do that quickly. So, yeah, let's let's keep trying, gang. Um, this is all about Dean Plocker um, actually uh, getting a t in touch with us, you know, uh, somehow communicating with us. That's our problem. It's always been our problem. He just won't communicate with us. So I wonder who he's talking to. He's not talking to the people of Missouri. Um, so I, who do you guys think he's talking to? I mean, he's not talking oh. to us or, yeah, let's speculate on that a bit. Yeah. He's, he's busy spending time, uh, you know, talking to his prosecutor buddies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> there you go. He wants to keep as much power in their hands as possible. Yep. Mother plocker. Citizens rights don't mean a thing. Oh, here's a good one to chat. Voodoo queen. Got to go. But three nurses and two aides here at the home are shocked that this is how Missouri runs business. May have a few new members, lots of laughs. Like I said, you know, most of us might not be able to take time off work to come and watch this, but word's getting out. Yep, thank it's you. Gonna, it's going to spread. Thank you, you know, Voodoo. Social media, people will watch this stuff later, you know, when they get home from work. Yeah, and they'll probably be wondering uh, what the heck is going on in Missouri. Yeah. I you mean, know. you, you got to think that's crazy. You go through all this trouble to get a bill through, you know. I mean, you go through all these committees and stuff like that. You're making all these people making all these phone calls on this bill. And one guy, this one guy can yay or nay anything he wants. Just that. Maybe, we might have to have some rule change. I mean, yeah, obviously we're going to have to have some rule changes. Yeah. Because it's just, it makes it too easy to, for corruption. I mean, look what this guy's doing. Two, two more popular bills, you know. And one, constitutionally, the current law shouldn't exist, which 2118 addresses. And he's he's more concerned about his prosecutor buddies having as much power as they can possibly have. Yep. And we know who bends his ear. The, sheriff, the police chiefs associations, sheriff's associations, prosecutor associations, all of them. Yep. And I'll warn, you know, any politician out there, don't mess with people's kids. I mean, you want to see a, a ferocious animal in the wild? It's apparent when you're doing something to harm their kids. And that's the perception with the beer flu vaccine. 
So, you know, what we're trying to do is just make sure that, yeah, well, whatever, you know, we're speculating on that. Um, But the fact of the matter is it's an experimental serum. And a lot of folks don't want their kids, you know, basically put in harm's way because of their state legislators. Not like, you know, California, California is about as close as a state comes to communism in the state in the United States. They have mandated the the beer flu serum for kids over there and we look on from you know the heartland from the bible belt in absolute dismay and disgust that they would actually allow that to happen we don't want that to happen here parents can make a choice let the parents make a choice once you start taking away their choices on how they raise their kids you might as well say you're communist or you're extreme far left socialist you know that's a basic right you know, basically, is you get to raise your kids, not the state. And that's what well, the people... I got a... Go ahead. I got a reply back from Bolden earlier. He said, oh, cool, I'll try to make the show and listen for a bit. Definitely can't wait to hear this. <laughs> can't join in. Lately, been about uh, three to four weeks advance notice for most shows. But yeah. uh, he'll, he'll probably pop in the comments section later. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, if Mike Bolden makes it in, uh, welcome to you, Mike Bolden, if you're in right now. Yep. And a warrior class, basically, that's what it seems like, doesn't it? Is that Plocker's position is for sale. Not, not the actual position itself, but, you know, basically every service he provides from that pr- position is for sale. That's why we're offering Dean Plocker, if you're watching right now, give us a number. How much money do you want to put HB 2009 on the floor so we can override what appears to be your special interest groups telling you not to let it on the floor, not to let it through? Same thing with 2008. If we need two funds, one for 2009 and one for 2118. Yeah, uh, 2118. Let us know. Let us know how much money you need. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Mad Bomb says we need to get 2118 as an amendment on something else. That may be an option. Uh, Chris says, I'm convinced the GOP is irredeemable as long as it's under the current leadership. Uh, Well, actually, uh, the floor leader is our main problem. The Speaker of the House, which is Rob Vescovo, is a good man. Uh, Jared Taylor is filling in for him right now. Another good man. So it's Unfortunately, both of them are going to be done after this year, right? Yep. And both. who who do we get stuck with? Plocker. Plocker Plocker the blocker. Yep. Man, I can't imagine another two years of this. Yep. Killing everything that people are trying to get through. Yep. That something's got. It's got to be some way to recall this dude or something. Actually, there isn't. We've looked into the House rules. So unless Plocker actually does something illegal, that's the only House rule that that matters for what's going on right now. So those of you who may ask, what can we do to get rid of Plocker? Um, uh, currently, there's really nothing we can do to to take him out of that position. So we're just trying to appeal to, you know, his better nature. First of all, communicate, please. Plocker, we're, we're asking you to please communicate with the people of Missouri. You're not doing this. And you have a very powerful position in the House. We all know this. And, but the problem is, is that, uh, number one, you're not communicating with us. And number two, what little you do communicate, you just tell us how powerful you are. And so that seems somewhat tyrannical. It, se- it, it seems that way. Once again, we're just speculating. I'm not saying you're a tyrant. I'm saying it seems like you're a tyrant. Yeah, it really seems. Yeah. Yeah. Mike from uh, the Tenth Amendment Center kicks butt. He sure does. Uh, we're fans of his, to be sure. Yeah. Oh, God, I love that guy. He's something else. <laughs> so, guys, why do you think? Plocker's not coming on today. I mean, I sent him an email. I sent emails to his neighbors, too. You guys have any possible explanations on why Plocker can't make it to the YouTube stream? Have you donated lately? I have not. I didn't think about that. There you he's, go. He's, 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 he's spending too much time plocking up the legislation. Yep. Okay. Hey, you guys on YouTube, you guys have any ideas why Plocker may not be able to make the YouTube live stream today? In his honor, no less. In his honor. 
Here's a question from Warrior Class 3. What about Hannah Kelly? If she's the assistant majority floor leader, can't she put bills on the floor? She cannot. She steps in if Plocker steps out. That's how that can works. She, can she do it then when, he's, yes. when he steps out? Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, I mean, if if Plocker, you know, for instance, had a stomach problem and was spending a lot of time in the bathroom, um, Hannah Kelly could step in at that point and actually, you know, take over as floor leader. Maybe we can send some crab cakes to his office. Yeah, we could do that. So, gosh darn, I'm trying to think of other reasons why he, what what could Plocker possibly be doing right now that's more important than communicating with the people of Missouri? Um, I know I haven't donated to him. He really just want to talk to the peasantry. Yeah, not talking to the peasantry. Who wants to do that, really? The common folk. I don't know if there's any, I don't know if there's anything he could be doing right now that's more important than talking to the people. But I'm sure there's some things he's doing that he's doing anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, the peasantry is is not important. Yeah. Do you think maybe that Plocker's just shy or something? You know, he's just he's just shy and doesn't want to come on. You know, he's not real familiar maybe, with us yet. Maybe a little, something? maybe a little gun shy. I don't mm, know. Yep. <laughs> Two one one eight shy. Little uh, two thousand and nine shy. Yeah, uh, Chris Diegman says same reason. None of the others you invited did come on. Uh, they can't be seen in something like this, or don't want to get trapped into a position on record. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's possible. That's possible. That may be one possibility. Uh, Mad Mom says, uh, yeah, appears uh, a little tyrant for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, it, not that he's a tyrant. He just seems like a tyrant, you know, because we're just not sure because he won't communicate with us. And so we can't really make a judgment one way or the other. He doesn't have time for the common folk. I wonder if he has time for, for you know, hospital administration or police chiefs association. I wonder if he has time for them. Well, I'm, I'm well, sure he'd find a way. Uh... Yeah. yeah, what about uh, anybody who gives him a couple million dollars, huh? Yeah, well, he doesn't get that much, but I understand what you oh, mean, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's cheaper than that. So he's... I I think, you know, uh, and and once again, he's Plocker, if, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Plocker, if you're there, you know. He's had for less than that. Yeah. He's, 20, a, he's an easy sell, isn't he? Yeah, 20 <laughs> grand might be his number for getting 2009 or, 2000, or 2118 on the floor. I mean, I just don't know. If you need two separate funds, uh, Plocker, please let us know. Two separate funds, one for, you know, 2009, one for 2118. Um, Once again, we're just speculating. We just don't know. You're not communicating with us. We're looking at your list of donors. It just so happens you're, you're going with what your donors want. You're not going with what the people of Missouri want. You know, the citizens of Missouri who are communicating with you trying to communicate with you desperately you're not returning emails you're not returning phone calls we just speculate you just don't care about the people of missouri and you probably more into your campaign contributors and what they can do for you so um chris deegan says play the price is right yeah the price is (laughs) yeah there we go clocker how much can you have for without going over the actual retail price yeah i know (laughs) Well, people in chat throwing your bids. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Uh, let's see. John Bubb is chiming in saying Plocker is bulletproof. Uh, uh, Republican district. His predecessor was John Deal, who left office disgraced in 2015. I uh, didn't follow that one. He said for the November 2014 election, a handful of patriots spread flyers, made a significant dent in his vote. What would happen if a lot of people acted like patriots? Uh, Dixie Strong Ooh. says, uh, April 19th, 1775, 245-year anniversary of the shot heard around the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. My hat's off to all you in Missouri standing up for your rights. Patriots watching from Alabama. Thank you, Dixie. We appreciate you watching from Alabama. Uh, so, okay, guys. Uh, so... Uh, we're not hearing from Dean. I meant, should we start a GoFundMe, you know, and actually start trying to collect funds so we can, or are we too late in the year for that now? I meant, how mu- Dean Plocker, please chime in. Tell us how much money you want to put these bills on the floor that the people of Missouri are asking for. 
Dean Plocker, if you're in the house, please chime in and just give us a number. We want these bills. We'll yes, start a GoFundMe. On, we the people are willing to pay. Yeah. <laughs> it is for, yeah so we'll do it. You Gotta know? do this somehow. I, you know, I, I thought basically, you know, you you told your told your representatives you wanted this stuff, and then they would go vote for it. Being that it's real popular, but obviously, I guess you know, yeah, you gotta do something else. So that's what it know, seems man. like. We're just we're just asking, man. Help us out here. What yep. what's it gonna take to get these on the floor? Yep. It's like any other bill. Yep. You know, and, do and donations. What? Come on. What do we gotta do? Yeah, you guys keep it going. I'm gonna check my email on my other computer right over there and see if uh, I got back or any representatives got back to me. Give me a second. Just keep it going. I'm just wondering how much you got to donate, Bill Bendis, dude, to your. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, you could go up in Jeff City, wait all day, and hope he comes over and talks to you. But even that's uh, not a guarantee that he's going to do anything. Besides tell you no. We'll see you later. Yeah, I, day. Wonder, uh, I wonder how much. Uh... I wonder how much uh, money that the Sheriff's Association and all that give him. I, you know, I don't know if, I don't even know if they really donate directly. You know, they probably, uh, they're probably more like affiliated with other groups or organizations because a lot, a lot of those donations and stuff like that, you can have a group that might be affiliated with another organization or something, and then that organization may donate or something like that. That way you can still look, uh, you know, what's the word, neutral or whatever, supposedly. But, yeah. I mean, and, you know, like I said, we're speculating here, but I mean, come on, when you got, when you got a representative that sits there and tells you, nah, second most popular bill everybody's called about, no, nah, not, not even bringing it to the floor. Nope. I nope. mean, obviously, <laughs> these associations, the police chiefs, those sheriff's associations, even if they don't contribute directly to his campaign, they obviously have some kind of pull, you know? Yeah. Just Cause like I said. Bit. Yeah, it'd, it'd be interesting. I wonder if any of them want to get on and tell, tell us how it works. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, gang, just so you know, Rudy Vice. We just want to know how to work the system, man, because right now it don't seem to be working. So, yeah, we're yeah. not we're not as smart as Plocker is. We really don't know exactly what we need to do to work it. Uh, but I think he does. So uh, he just, go ahead. If he just come on here and tell us how to work the system. Yeah. In our favor. Yeah. Uh, bend his ear. That should be appreciated. Because, uh, you know, calling your refs and telling them what to do, it doesn't seem to be working. You know, going up Jeff City, waiting all day, hoping you get a chance to talk. You think that count for something? Eh, obviously not. No. Yeah, just, you know, Dean, y'all just come on here and tell us how to work that system to bend your ear, man. Yep. Yeah, you when I drive up there, you yeah. know, uh, Mr. Plocker. What when you I need, drive... money? <laughs> what do you need? Yeah, it's six and a half hours round trip for me to go up to Jeff City, and you can't make time for me. And not to mention my gas money. I mean, you think that would count for something, maybe two to five minutes of your time? Mm -mm. Um, but just so you guys know, uh, the only thing I got back from my email was uh, an email, uh, an auto response from Rudy Veet. And that's it. It's an auto response. That's the only thing I got back out of everything I sent out. So uh -huh. uh, once again. Oh, actually, he's been sending out a lot of auto responses. What do you think? Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. GoFundMe or traders? Uh, Gary Ride says. I know, but I, I mean, maybe somehow a blocker is tied in with GoFundMe, and uh, they would benefit from us raising money as well, and that would, you know, sweeten the deal for getting some bills on the house floor. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. We're just speculating here. You know, GoFundMe may be funding Dean Plocker. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. We don't know. I mean, like I said, guys, we're speculating as to what he's doing with his time, you know, because he's not talking to the uh, the people of Missouri, at least the little people like you and me. We know that for a fact. Uh, we have too, too many stories coming from people in our gang and even people outside of our gang that don't get responses uh, from Plocker, either by phone or by email. And, of course, those of you who go to Jeff City have found out you can't get Dean Plocker while you're up there either. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can find out who's funding what, KC? OpenSecrets.org. 
Uh, Casey, you want to take a look at that real quick and see if you can find anything interesting on there? All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. John Bubb says his soul is sold. Well, it's possible he made a deal with the devil. We don't know, but we can speculate that maybe that's what's happened. Um, well, he, what he's trying to do is sell all of our souls to the company store on uh, or on on our behalf, you know. Oh, hang on. Chris Diegman says, I've sent uh, one email to Rep. Veet and two to Plocker. Crickets uh, other than the Veet auto response. Yeah, that's what I got too, man. I got the auto response. It makes me feel special. A little bit warm on the inside uh, because Veet actually has an auto response set up. Yeah, maybe McCloskey would come on. Yeah, I'd love for McCloskey to come on. That would be neat. Uh, he could talk to us about 2118. You know, and maybe he could, uh, maybe McCloskey can actually get some of Plocker's time. You know, maybe even maybe even he'll have enough money in his uh, in his little fancy lawyer office that he can uh, go ahead and start paying it. Off. That's a good point. That's a good oh, now, point. Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute. McCloskey's not a prosecutor, though, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, well, no. hang on, guys. Oh. Hang on, guys. Why Let's not settle. be enough? Let's settle this right now. Let's settle this. Uh, apparently, um, lawyers and lobbyists are one of the top 10, or the top 10, the very top, actually, top number one uh, industry to donate to uh, Dean Plocker. So lawyers and lobbyists. So it, let's click on that real quick. And it looks like law firms. So I think he will take money from lawyers and, rather Ooh. than just prosecutors. So I, I think that is okay. And I'm sorry, I, I had to set the record straight on this. Yes, he is definitely taking money from law firms. No doubt. What about bankers? Yeah, he does take money from bankers too. Uh, if anyone in here is a banker that has access to a slush fund that we can use for the GoFundMe for Dean Plocker, uh, please <laughs> chime in and let us know. Hey, that, do you want to you want to contact Mark McClossy? I got his phone number. Okay. Well, I think maybe we ought to consider it. You know, once again, we, guys. That's what he thinks about 3118. Yeah. We're just, just let him know. Just let him know he's going to be on YouTube. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, since Plocker doesn't want HB 2118, perhaps we should consider him guilty until proven innocent. That seems to be his position. That's a very good point, Warrior Class. Very good point. Yeah. Um, so if anyone wants to send an email to Plocker and let him know that we consider him guilty right now, um, and he needs to prove his innocence that he, you know, basically cares about the people of Missouri and what their positions are and also cares about their kids. Cause he, he doesn't want parents caring about their kids apparently, uh, when it comes to the beer flu serum. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he wouldn't want to be considered guilty of, you know, setting up, uh, Susie Pollock. I mean, yeah. that would. I'm gonna. Yeah, go I mean, ahead. I'm sure he'd want to be innocent, you know, and it would have to be proven. Yep. I'm gonna he, go. He probably ahead wouldn't like that I'm, much. I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, uh, if I'm gonna follow the words of Saint George Tucker, I'm gonna say he's guilty of treason against the sovereignty of the people. Well, I mean, we could definitely say that and speculate on that. We don't know that's the case because he simply won't communicate with us. I mean, <laughs> we just can't get his position on that. That's the problem. So he's a politician. He's supposed to be conveying his position, you know, uh, you know, where he stands on certain things. And he's not even doing that. You know, he's just not communicating at all. You know, um, um, it could be that he has a speech impediment or something like that. Once again, we're speculating. I think maybe he could be just shy. Do you guys think he's just shy? Maybe. Hmm. Well, maybe he's scared. Don't Maybe. be scared, homie. If he's, he's scared. Himself, do you think he's wetting himself right now? I don't think he's wetting himself. But if he is frightened, he may be having stomach problems and spending some time in the restroom right now. You know, that could be oh. what it is. I mean, once again, we're just speculating. We don't know. Yeah. There's no way yeah. to know. Yep. Yeah. So, in Missouri Liberty Report. Hey there, buddy. Thank you for chiming in. Wish we could have you here with us. Uh, we love it when you're coming in the Discord and working with us. Uh, 
he lost his bar card, I think, Mad Mom says. Yeah, uh, let's see. I'm a banker for Stiegman Savings and Loans, Chris Stiegman says. Yeah, you don't want to be giving up anything uh, unless it's, uh, you know, a commercial bank. Okay, well, once again, you know, uh, any politicians in the House, please chime in. Um, Dean Plocker, if you're there, please do chime in. You will be treated with respect. Come in, please, and talk to us. We have some questions. We, we want to understand a little bit better what you did to HB 2009, Thursday, April 14th. Uh, we want to understand better how, you know, basically why you did what you did and uh, what you knew and when you knew it uh, when it comes to Rudy Veet. You and know, it, I'm wondering how, how tied, he, tied in he is with the whole uh, the new agenda and everything and yeah. New World Order agenda just because... Uh, I mean, he is right next to the St. Louis Federal Reserve. It could be. Well, he does get a lot of money from banks. Uh, bankers, bankers. Mm -hmm. You know, the St. The St. Louis Federal Reserve chairman back in March of 2020 just flat called the entire situation a planned, organized, partial shutdown of the U.S. economy in the second quarter, and that is, quote. Yep. Hmm. Wonder where he's getting his money from over there. Yeah. Once again, we can speculate on that, but we do have access to the to the campaign contributors and everything. I suppose we could look on there and see if they're actually. I doubt a Federal Reserve uh, uh, would be used as a campaign contribution. That's a little too much, I think. But yeah, we could take a quick look. Who's who's going to be the subsidiary that's going to distribute those funds? Yeah, that's possible. So let's go ahead and scroll back here. Uh, Plocker, if you're in, please help us out here. We're looking into the Missouri Bankers Association. Um, it just says commercial banks, commercial banks, commercial banks. So that's the Missouri Bankers Association. That's who you receive money from. Um, let's go into retail commercial banks. Missouri Bankers Association, Commerce Bank Shares, Bank of America contributed to you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, heavily tied in. Anything yep. like Goldman Sachs or? Uh... No, nope, nothing like that. But then again, Missouri Bankers Association is somewhat ambiguous, any, isn't it? What about any subsidiaries of Wells Fargo? Uh, well, no, nope, but there's some uh, independent bankers association and then some individuals that are tied to banks that uh, gave money to them as an individual as opposed to a corporation. Hmm. So we got what bankers kind of giving you some money there, Plocker. Um, let's look at conservative policy organization. Missouri Republicans Attorneys for Civil Justice. They gave you $2,600. Um, let's see. Grow Missouri gave them twenty six hundred. It looks like twenty six hundred is like the most you can give. Um, so let's see. Uh, Missouri Majority gave them a thousand dollars. There's a bunch of ones here from Missouri Republican Attorneys for Justice. Missouri Majority, Grow Missouri, uh, Holly Pack gave them three hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, let's hmm. find out. Let's see how much money public sector unions gave him. Uh, Viceroy Government Relations, twenty five hundred bucks, just a hundred dollars below the limit. Interesting. Um, and then Viceroy Government Relations gave him another thousand on top of that. Apparently a tip. Um, so you know they paid for the meal with the twenty five hundred, and then they gave him the tip, which was a thousand. Ooh, look at that! St. Louis County Police Association Fraternal Order of Police Lodge one 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 gave him a thousand dollars. Uh, fire, fire, just local 73, a thousand dollars. Yep. You know, that comes out of property taxes. Yep. It sure does. Well, hang on. Not necessarily. Uh, it comes out of, uh, the pay for firefighters, but then again, that comes property, out of property. taxes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There we go. We drilled <laughs> down on that one. <laughs> okay. So who else is giving him money? Let's see the St. Louis police or police officers association. Missouri Council on Firefighters. Once again, Viceroy Government Relations. We saw them up on top there. They gave him another $250 tip on top of their $1,000 tip on top of their $2,500 meal. Wow. Mm -hmm. These guys just love him. All, and I mean all of these local government things that are on here. Yeah. It is, it, it is basically, it's, it's laundered through, through payroll to mm -hmm. give it out of property taxes. Yep. 
and there's four pages, four pages of um, med- from the medical industry that gave money to Plocker. Four pages of it. Wow. They love him. They absolutely love him. Um, so the Missouri uh, Society of Anesthesiologists, well, I didn't realize they had their own society. That's pretty cool. Uh, they gave him $1,000. Ooh, look, another $1,000 after that. Wow. Oh, and then another thousand dollars after that. They just love him. The anes, you know, anesthetic guys. You know, they they like him. They really like him. If in case you guys are sitting around the dinner table, talking to your family, going, I wonder if the Missouri Association of Anesthesiologists actually like Dean Plocker. Worry and and wonder no more. They love him. They're giving him all kinds of cash. Okay. So, so it's looking like we need about a thousand, two thousand a pop to compete. Yeah, it seems for, uh, like Plocker's, it. Uh, yeah. services, huh? Yeah, it seems like it. Um, yeah. Oh, hang on, Missouri Association of Nurse Anesthesiologists. Seven is so the anesthesist man. They just love him. Wow, they can't get enough of. Well, Plocker. I know why. I know why. Why is I that? Know exactly why. Because first, anesthesiologists, they stick you with stuff. Uh huh. And they want you submissive. And they want you asleep. Yeah. Yes. That's all coming together. Yes. It's making that's, sense that's right the now. Perfect. It yeah. fits. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put you to sleep. <laughs> they want you numb or asleep and compliant. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chris Stegman says, Pat, in case you didn't catch my sarcasm, Stegman savings and loan doesn't exist. I knew that, buddy. <laughs> I understood. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to make a joke about silver and gold, but I decided not to because this is all about Dean Plocker today. Once again, guys, on your screens, and- Dean Plocker's phone number, 573-751-1544. He wants to know what you think. Also, his email address, dean.plocker at house.mo.gov. Email him and let him know what you think. What's the link for this list? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I put it in. Very good question. So let's put in, uh, once again, into the YouTube group. Here we go. This is Dean Plocker's campaign contributors. You guys can go through the list yourself. These are the people that fund Dean Plocker's campaign to run for the House of Representatives. So, yeah, he gets a ton of cash to run for a rep. Holy crap. He gets a lot of it from 2016 to 2022. I meant the corporations just love this guy. The man looks like a lizard. Well, yeah. I. Yeah, I I see it. I get it. Is that, is that speculation or that that would no, be speculation? No, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. He looks like a lizard. <laughs> uh, Mad Mom is once again uh, referring us to open secrets. I'll go ahead and open it up. I don't want to be uh, scrolling through and reading it uh, because I'm doing the live stream and everything. But um, elections and fundraising data, elections overview. You should put that link in the chat. It is in the chat. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Yep. So what Mad Mom is oh, putting there it in is, the chat. Yeah. Yep. That's the one I was asking you to take a look at, Casey. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at it. It's, it showed one thing in there. Some guy named James Kane um, contributed like 250 bucks to him back in 2015, but I couldn't find anything specifically on just Dean Plocker. He was in there with like a bunch of lists of other people who are getting money from those types of associations or whatever. Guys, Mad Mom has put in some interesting speculation here. Maybe we should talk about this. He probably took the jab so he could be having a COVID issue in the bathroom. That's something we never thought of before. I mean, he could be having nasty side effects um, from, um, you know, the beer flu vaccine. Um you know, one of the side effects is losing your soul. Um, another side effect is, uh, you know, disregarding the people you serve, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I'm just speculating. I don't know. Um, so he could be having side effects like that. You know? Um, well, I, you know, I, I, I do hear um, yeah, that, uh, I mean, because of how it affects the genes in the brain, it can be causing multiple types of dementia and psychosis. Yeah. 
No, we just don't know. Uh, we do we do wish he would actually be more responsive to the people, especially when they come out in such vast numbers wanting HB 2009. And he doesn't care. He literally doesn't care. He'll do everything he can to kill that bill. I understand that he also really strongly dislikes uh, Susie Pollock. And I don't know why that is. I know Susie Pollock, and she is a lovely person. Um. I, I didn't visit with her as much as I should have in 2020 and 2020. Maybe that's a problem. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> and maybe, you know, you know, that's a thing. For him anyways. Yep. But apparently, um, you know, basically his friendship is based on a dollar amount. So maybe we could start a third GoFundMe um, for Dean Plocker to like Susie Pollock again. You think we could do that too? I mean, that's a third fund. I get it. It's becoming a lot to manage. Yeah, it's going to be about a thousand bucks, two thousand a pop if you yeah. want to be able to compete. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Be so, ready to open those pockets up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. And yeah, for sure, he probably took the Pfizer too. So he definitely supports military industrial complex because that crap is straight from DARPA. That's that's entirely possible, Mad Mom. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well, oh, there's something in the chat I'd like to read, but we don't want to hurt this man's feelings. Oh, that's true. I yeah, have heard. Good. I have heard. I don't want to say the story exactly, but I did hear that uh, Dean Plocker has thin skin, um, and that his feelings get hurt very easily. So, if yeah. you are calling or emailing him, you know, please keep that in mind. We don't want to hurt the man's yeah. feelings. Yeah. Might be why he's having that. Might be why he's having this tantrum and keeping all these popular bills from the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, somebody probably said something that you know hurt his feelings or something. I don't yeah, know. I hope not. I hope not. I mean, I think most people up in Jeff City know that not to hurt his feelings. Um, so it's just a very sensitive. If, if they want to get their legislation passed, I yeah, if they, that is exactly right. If you have legislation and you want it passed. You know, you, you have to remember, uh, you know, have a post-it note. You know, if you're a representative, have a post-it note right on your computer screen. Don't forget, Dean Plocker is a very sensitive man. Do you have to stand at attention and salute him whenever he walks by? Or I don't know. Well, I wish we had some, you know, some, you know, confirmation on that. We can speculate on that. We just don't know. Yeah. You know what's funny? A whole What's bunch it? of a whole bunch of these uh, these single issue donors mm -hmm. from like uh, let's see here what's one here um, SHC and uh, uh, something for progress. Hang on a second. Uh, let me see if I can find Alliance it. for Progress. Yeah, Alliance for Progress. Um, let's see, SHC Alliance for Progress, and there's one more here too. Heartland Meet Regional Medical Center, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, HBS, uh, Missouri State. Oh, my gosh. Missouri. They're giving money to Wyman and Hannah Kelly? Uh, yeah, they are giving money to – they're giving money specifically to um, uh, Parsons, Vite, and Plocker. All, of, all three of those are all kind of – at least as far as I can tell in all of them. And, and then also a whole bunch of Democrats, including Peter Meredith, um, some which a couple other Kansas mm. City Democrats, and then uh, what was the other one? Um, yeah, let's see here. But it's very targeted. Yeah, seems to that way. People. Yeah. Um, Dean, are you here with us, buddy? Can you chime in and kind of explain some of these campaign contributions to us? Um, You've got Democrats donating to you for some reason. Yeah. Uh, once again, guys, I put in the YouTube chat his campaign donors. So feel free to browse, take a look, and see well, if maybe you can put a connection together, since he won't communicate with us, why he is stopping HB 2009 and HB 2118. Maybe we can find well, some. I guess when you got a lot of Democrats contributing to you, you can't let those bills pass, right? Yep, that's right. He is in the St. Louis area, so it does make sense. Uh, because actually, when you get high enough in the food chain, uh, the the only politics is literally dollars, and you know that whole left right thing doesn't really exist on the upper levels. Yeah, it's all it's about cool. it's all about money the at green. that point. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's the thing: 
the Republican Party knows about this. They know all about it. They know where the money's coming from and who's bringing it in. So they're just as complicit. It seems so. Yep. Hey, so it's it's money. Guys, hey, now, nah, Rebel Cry, come on. Money is money. It doesn't make any difference. Those who are listening to long as they're, long long they're, they're getting that money, world. it shouldn't matter who it comes from, right? Just as long as they're getting plenty of it. I mean, yep. That's what it comes down to, right? I mean, come it on. It should open folks' eyes, though. You know, they, they put their trust in the Republican Party and, oh, we're a conservative. We're a red state. Republicans are going to take care of us. Nah. Yep. I don't see that as being any different than, say, like when a cop does something nasty and then the other ones who who witness it just shut up and don't say anything. Yep. The ones that don't say anything are just as complicit. Yep. Okay, Plocker, are you there? Plocker, please chime in. Let us know if you're here. We very much would like to talk to you, sir. Dean Plocker, if you're in the house, just let us know. Don't be shy. We, we are a kind, simple folk that just want to have some questions answered. We've been trying don't to get a hold of you. Don't be scared, homie. Yeah, don't be scared, man. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we're just regular people in Missouri that want to talk to you. And it, I guess it shouldn't surprise us, KC and, and Liberty and Rebel Cry. Uh, he's not answering our phone calls or emails. He probably wouldn't respond to you know, a, a YouTube stream in his honor either. I mean, he's a busy man, right? I mean, he's he's meeting with prosecutors, attorneys, <laughs> medical, you know, administration. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to donate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, but I don't want to start a fund until he gives us a number. And, and once we have a number, we know what we need to go for, you know. So, Dean Plocker, please chime in. We're speculating that maybe you just want money in order to get HB 2009, what the people of Missouri want. Uh, apparently, the will of the people of Missouri is not enough for you to get 2118 and 2009 on the floor of the House. So, apparently, it's cash. We don't know. We're just speculating. So, if that's the case, just give us a number. I mean, we, we need to know where to start here. And we need to do it quickly, Mr. Plocker, because uh, as you know, if 2118 and 2009 are held back much longer, there won't be enough time to get them through the Senate. So uh, please. Know, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, question I got is do deposits have to clear before he's willing to put those bills on the floor? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's true, too. So cash donations. I mean, if we're kind of, I, I would, you know what? I would think he should just, you know, be good about it and not wait for those to clear. I mean, under the time constraints we're under. Well, how about if we just like buy him a new car or a boat or something, or pay for a vacation yes, for him and his yeah, wife and kids yeah, or something? I don't know something. I man. mean, is that do you think he would accept something like that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he's a cash I'm, kind of guy or if yeah. he, you know he likes hey, getting trinkets I, and stuff. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna start calling this guy Pinocchio because the more the more uh, the more I look at his animal, nose. <laughs> well, yeah, well that that and the more he he's a wimpy little puppet. For uh, oh, we're speculating he is. We're speculating yeah, he's wimpy. Yeah. Speculating oh, yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, he appears to, he appears to be a wimpy puppet that uh, um, that as soon as he gets caught in something, he lies some more, and then you wind up having uh, you know he sticks his nose in more places. Yeah, it it does seem so, that way, yeah. uh, and I've heard that he's very sensitive as well, and his feelings are hurt mm -hmm. quite easily. And he keeps trying to be a re be a real guy, but he's just does he just can't quite get there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, um, Dean Plocker, please chime in and give us. Do you want a new boat? You want like a a real nice tracker boat? You know, like a twenty two footer or something like that. You can go on the lake. You know, we can even throw some beer in the coolers, you know, for I'll, you. I'll, I wonder if he lives up around that Lake St. Louis area. I think he might. Probably had to get I, something. We probably had to give him a really nice boat. Man. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, uh, we can't. Pontoon we can't. Maybe a new yacht he can take out on, the on uh, you know, Mississippi or Missouri. River. Oh, come on, guys. We're just trying to match what he's getting from the people that are telling him what to do right now. We're not trying to outdo them because I mean, it's just, well, it could get uh, very might expensive. Be the, very might quickly. be the only way we can get his attention. I uh, mean, you know. Yeah. We're not prosecutors, so, I mean, think about it, guys. We might have to put out a little extra, you know. Yeah, well, that's right, because we did see several just organizations speculating. tip. Just, just speculation. We're just speculating. Just speculation. So, Dean Plocker, 
please chime in and let us know why you won't allow a fair hearing of the most popular bill in Missouri this year, HB 2009. Please chime in and let us know. Also, HB 2118, you won't even allow it on the floor. At least not until it's too late, probably. <laughs> That's probably what you're trying to do. And, I, you know, once again, I'm just speculating. I don't know. I mean, because you're not communicating with me. So, you know, if if it were a marriage, you know, between the people of Missouri and, and Dean Plocker, the marriage wouldn't be working out right now. It would be a divorce situation, I think. Be but, cheating. Yeah, well, yeah, he's cheating. That's correct. He's he's uh, you know he's cheating with bankers and with and with the medical industry and with law enforcement organizations that are receiving federal funds. Yeah. Uh, did anyone notice that Rudy Veet is one of his owners? Or do, uh, do, I'm sorry, oh, uh, donors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Uh, I'm not <laughs> suggesting that there is a relationship between Rudy Veet and. Um, and uh, yeah, Dean Plocker, but I could speculate that there is one. I mean, they did work together to d defeat the most popular bill in Missouri. So maybe yeah, that's yeah. more speculation. We, don't, we just don't know. We don't know. He's not communicating. Um, but I didn't notice that Rudy Veet was one of his donors. I didn't see that. I missed that. So thank you for that, Chris. <laughs> that's okay, pretty cool. No, that's not speculation. That's a fact, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and facts are facts now. Yep. <laughs> Well, you know, we do what we can here, and we're very appreciative, you know, basically of anyone that comes up with any new information because Plocker just isn't talking to us, just doesn't want to talk to us. I think I'm a pretty fun guy. I can be. I know I'm dry and technical sometimes, but I can be fun too. So, uh, Plocker, come on, man. You know, if you want to go out for a beer today, you know, let me know. I really need to, I do need to go to work today, but... If you want me to meet you for a beer so we can discuss how much money you want to get HB 2009 and 2118 on the floor, I'm game. Just let me know. I'll be happy to help. Yeah, we're, we're trying to work with you, man. Come on. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Just, just give us a chance. Page eight of the donor list, Chris Stegman says. How much did he give him? I'm not going to look it up right now. I'm just going to ask you how much uh, uh, Veet gave uh, to Plocker. Uh, you know, the, the politicians donating to each other. I mean, it's just, you just have to throw your hands up in the air and go, what? All right, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of like in the in the media where the reporters interview each other. <laughs> you know, I always enjoyed oh that, too. Oh, God. Yep. Okay. Like circle jerk? What's that? Is that what they call a circle jerk? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. We could speculate that that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Rudy. Uh, hopefully you can come in. Oh, a thousand dollars. Veet gave Plocker a thousand dollars. Wow. See, I told you you need at least a thousand or two thousand. You were right. Get in the game, man. You were right. But you know what? Veet could have given him oh so much more than that. We just don't know. We could speculate. Could have done some things maybe not you know necessarily yeah much. exactly we can't really talk about that we can yeah. you know uh, but yeah we don't want to we don't want to start an unfounded rumor you know yeah. and and plus Certainly also not. remember we don't want to hurt his feelings remember that <laughs> don't want to hurt his feelings <laughs> dean plocker 573-751-1544 he wants to hear from you missouri he wants to know what you think about him keeping HB 2009 and HB 2118 off the floor in Missouri, the two most popular bills this year, single-handedly. Well, that's not true. Rudy Veet is helping him, too. So if you guys want to call Veet as well, uh, he might be uh, actually more reachable. Uh, not according to my email, though. I get automated responses every time I send him an email. But you can also email Dean with your thoughts. It's dean.plocker at house.mo.gov and uh, remember now let's be nice because apparently his feelings are easily hurt so let's be nice no name calling no um no speculation i would just actually ask him direct questions and say uh i saw the video of what you and veet did on april 14th i'm curious as to why you did that to the most popular bill in the state of missouri in year 2022 
And then not to mention the fact that he is also stopping HB 2118, the Stand Your Ground Enhancement Act. He's stopping both of those bills from going through. So yep. we'll see it a lot of day. Yep. So yeah, if anyone wants to, you know, have any further speculation, if anyone's had any contact with uh, Dean Plocker by email or by voice, please chime in because I'm starting to think the guy doesn't exist because I just don't hear anything from him. You know, maybe, you know, he's just kind of like a, a hologram or something, you know, that he's not really there. Look, man, I know it's hard to believe, but I had an actual physical sighting. I forgot him. about that. I forgot about that. A I, close encounter. I know everybody's going to think I'm crazy or something, you know, like, yeah, right. You see Bigfoot too, or, you know. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah if you saw Plocker, then, you know, actually, that's true. It, your chances of seeing Bigfoot are actually statistically much larger, Better. you yeah. know, you know, than seeing Plocker. <laughs> Yeah, and you probably only need fifty bucks or a hundred dollars to you know sway Bigfoot. Yeah, I, yeah. Bigfoot. No, shoot, not, you, don't even need that. You could probably just give him a package of ground beef. I was gonna yeah. say like a, a number four, you know, from Burger King. You know, that's really all you need for Bigfoot. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave an apple on a tree stump. Yeah, yeah. good enough for him. Yep. Ooh. I don't think an apple on a tree stump's gonna do anything for plocker though yeah apparently hannah kelly donated to uh to plocker as well hannah kelly is the assistant uh floor guy gal in the hey warrior class three let's have a link for that please yeah actually it's in the very document that i've been putting up on the chat that i've been going through okay yeah once again i just I got, well i almost yep. crashed when i tried to look at it so i don't know what the deal is okay so Hannah Kelly and Rudy Veet are donating to Plocker as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. Yep. Oh. So, yeah, any Missouri politicians that are in uh, YouTube right now, please chime in. Please let us know you're here. We have some questions. Um, and gosh darn it. You know, I'm, guys, I hate to say this, but I'm starting to get the impression that Plocker is not going to talk to me. You really yeah. think so? I'm I am. Yeah. I'm getting that impression yeah. now. I'm getting that impression. Yeah. He doesn't really care what I think. Oh, come on now. Are you sure? Yeah, I am. I truly am, guys. I mean, uh, this live stream's been going for an hour and 41 minutes and and you know, I a, a special one in his honor. He got an email at 7:30 this morning. Actually, it was before 7. Um and still no no sign of him. The 22A FUD organizations donated to him too. NRA and CGLA, or I'm sorry, GCLA. That's I'm not surprised. Yep. <laughs> FUD organizations. Yep. Hey, you picked up the term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try calling him. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, I don't. I, I will do that, but I'll tell you what. I won't put it on speaker. Uh, because they get upset, and I don't want to hurt his feelings. Don't want to hurt his feelings, man. No, nah, we don't want to do that. Nope. Oh. I have another number I'd like to put up, which is uh, Plocker's personal cell phone number. Would you guys like that? Ah! <laughs> Suppose. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, yeah we don't. Do it. Okay. So his voicemail is full. So let's start uh, calling his uh, personal cell phone number, gang. Gosh darn it. Should have checked my phone earlier. Okay. Let me put in his personal cell phone number. Give me just a moment to get this oh, done. God. Uh, let's see. Be nice. Don't hurt his feelings. Yeah. Please don't hurt his feelings. Yeah, that's very important. He's a very sensitive man. Three, one, four. Yeah, if you have a couple thousand dollars, it probably helps. Yeah. Just saying. Speculating. Mm -hmm. Are you speculating that his uh, hurt feeling syndrome can be overcome with just cold cash? I think it would be a good start. Okay. Guys, there is a new number on your screen right now. This is Dean Plocker's personal cell phone number. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and give it a call, uh, because we can't get through to him. He's not answering emails. His voicemail box is full and it's actually really important here in the next two days, three days. I mean, we got to get some stuff done in the house and he seems to be stopping it. 
and he's not answering questions of the commoners like you and me. So um, I don't know, maybe if I pose as a doctor or a banker, maybe I could get his time then. People say my voice is very recognizable, though. So I'd have to, you know, do a different voice. You need a voice changer app. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean in person. You know, so I do a British accent or something like that. Do you think he'd be more responsive to a banker with a British accent than he would be to me? Ooh, ooh. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he responds to the Rothschild, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, if you can entertain a Rothschild, that, that might get you pretty far. Yep. Okay, gang. Um, so, uh, actually, no, I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to call him up and ask him if he'll talk live. I don't think that's a good idea, actually. Um, but I'm not beyond trying to call him, but I won't do it um, so you guys can hear, unfortunately. I've been told that that's probably not the best idea. So let's put it that way, and this is from other people. Um, the, they consider it gotcha politics. But the, uh, but the number is up there if you guys want to call. And by the way, I've never called. Is I just There's an uh, angel that texted me on my uh, personal cell phone to let me know what uh, Plocker's cell phone number is. Oh, lovely. Yep. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to that angel. You know who you are. So Team, uh, even the angels want to know mm -hmm. why you're holding this legislation down. Yep. Come on, Dean. Yep. Just put it on the floor. Yep. That's all you got to do. Yep. You guys you should. make this real easy. Yep. If anyone's calling his personal cell phone, please let us know. Uh, you, chances are you'll have to leave a message, but that's okay. At least you can leave a message. He can't do it at his work phone anymore because apparently his voicemail is full, and uh, that's for the commoners. I think this is the number that his campaign donors use. The one I, his campaign donors use. I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, throw in a good accent and, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. So, yeah, if anyone's calling him, please let us know how that's going. Please uh, chime in and let us know. Dean Plocker, if you're out there, dude, I, I hated to put your personal cell phone number up. I really do. But we have very limited time to get some stuff done, and you're blocking it. The people of Missouri want it. Your donors don't. That's what it looks like. We're speculating that's what's going on. You're not, you know, answering to us. Hey, Charles Uplifted is on. He says, hey, hey there, Charles Uplifted. Good deal. Hey, that's my buddy up there in, uh... <laughs> yep. up and, there north of me. Yep, and I'll tell you what, I mean, they're going to be convening the house in 15 minutes. Uh, we could probably throw that on the live stream so we could keep making phone calls. So that's an idea. Yeah. So in about 15 minutes, the house actually convenes. If anyone in Jefferson City is currently watching, I'm sorry, any politicians in Jefferson City are currently watching this, please chime in and let us know you're here. Don't be afraid. We are very, very kind people here. And uh, we hate to speculate, but that's all we have left. That's the only tool we have left because, um, you know, Plocker won't communicate with us. Charles Uplifted says, do it. Do it. You know, may, maybe Plocker's thinking to himself, I already told that one guy I ain't doing anything to 118. Don't these people understand? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, like, once, ag once again. It's like, how obvious do I got to make it? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it is. Yep. Don't these people just shut up and go away? I mean, what do I got to do? I mean, uh, I'm, that's uh, what it, I'm just speculating. You know? Yeah, I understand. That's all we can do, really. I'm keeping folks informed about what's going on if they can't. Uh... Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> the... <laughs> My buddy up in Maryland's getting a kick out of this. Is he watching? Uh, yeah, he's been watching on and off. He's, okay. he's pest control, so when he's kind of going between jobs, he's checking Pest control. Hey, hey, we need him up in Jeff City. Yes. Hey, yeah, we do. We, we, hey, hey. hey. Yep. Blondie, if you're watching, we need you over here. Yeah, <laughs> we got we got a job for you, Jefferson City. Hold, on, let me get the room number. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, he just yeah, he just posted it into our chat too. So, I... okay, gotcha. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> 
This okay. is gonna get fun. Okay, gotcha. Oh boy. Hold it. You guys, if you want to share, I gotta that... give him the room number to fumigate. All right? <laughs> this is gonna get great. It just got posted. <laughs> Okay. Put chat with a bunch of boys in it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, put it in signal. Yeah. That's what we just did. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Charles, just put it in signal. Awesome. Well, guys, I have a feeling that one's going to get filled up soon, too. That's Can't that wait to see there. those photos going in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. man. Dean, I'm sorry, man. I mean, you left us no alternatives. We're trying to communicate with you, sir. He's gonna get. He's he's got. Oh God, he's gonna get. Um. Oh God, what's the term they use for that? Probably can't use it on YouTube. No, actually, uh, no. There's a term for it. Um. He's gonna get ratioed hard. <laughs> ratioed. Yeah, that was close to what I was thinking. Close enough. Yep. Okay. I know there's probably some of that. How dare you do that to him? Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Really? I know. Really? How dare we do that? To, how dare he do to us, to the people of Missouri, what he's doing? You know, yeah. how come, I'll, I'll, you know, anybody got a problem with what we're doing, better, better, you know, give us an answer for that one. Yep. And and a lot of people may say that that this isn't fair. Um Really? Um, I, 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 no, I'm, this is all, I'm joking turned off, joking aside right now. I have tried to get a hold of Dean Plocker for two months, two months, and he is not returning my phone calls or my emails. And, uh, if he is that busy and I don't know what else to do, guys, uh, this is a guy who doesn't care what the uh, Missouri voters want. The people of Missouri want three bills that are i'm sorry they want more than that but three bills have received the most attention i can tell you what they are the first most popular hb 2009 the second hb 2118 the third hb 1992 and we have not seen them on the floor yet in fact we saw the travesty that was hb 2009 with rudy beat we saw that we haven't seen 2118 out yet and we haven't seen 1992 out yet. Why is it that the uh, floor leader won't give the people of Missouri the bills that they want? We, these are legitimate questions. We're asking him to answer these questions. I have left voicemail after voicemail with him. I have emailed him. And so has Casey Rich yes. um, and many others. We don't know what else to do. We're giving every avenue humanly possible for him to communicate with us and the, uh, the voters of Missouri who want these bills because he's not responsive. Uh, let's see. Chris Diegman says, just sent a text at new number. Awesome. Hey, uh, Caleb, your pest control friend, tell him when he gets to the Capitol in Jefferson City, that's room 302A. He needs a fumigate real good and the house floor. Yep. In fact, he's probably on the house floor now. That's the best. Yeah, that's probably, probably, probably where he should start first. Yep. Yeah. And, and because of the uh, special relationship we're um, speculating he has with Rudy I'm going to leave a voice message on Signal real quick. Okay. Well, okay. I, it just it, we, we want him to steam clean the carpets, too, in Rudy yeah. Beat's office and in Plocker's office, just in case. I mean, we, we don't know that there's something going on between the two of them. We're just speculating. And once again, that spec yeah, the speculation is based on a video on the House floor. Nobody's uh, rebuffed yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No one said we're wrong. You know, yeah. so no one's come out and said that video isn't true. Susie Bosch says he's just hoping that all the emails and calls stop if he ignores them long enough. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, for the next two days, I mean, he's going to have his hands full. I think. I mean, the people of Missouri want to know why he is not putting them first. You know, funny how all this aligns with these ballot initiatives. That's a very good point, Scott. Ganai in the chat here says, funny how all this aligns with these ballot initiatives. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Yeah, you know, those all those ballot, those ballot initiatives got out of the house and the Senate so quick, man. Very they quickly. They see the light of day, didn't they? Mid-February. Mid-February, third week February, maybe. Uh, so that... That flew through very quickly. So Dean Plocker didn't have a problem putting out bills that would take away some of our freedoms. 
um, as quickly as possible ahead of everything else. You know, Patrick, I see a pattern here. Guy wants to take power away from the people and put it towards the politicians and the prosecutors. I mean, think about this. He doesn't want 2118. He's fine with uh, a defendant being guilty until they prove their innocence when they use lethal force to defend themselves. And he has no problem letting these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, these uh, ballot initiative bills through, which would take away power from the people mm -hmm. and give it more to the politicians. Yep. I'm, I'm starting to see a little pattern here. Uh, maybe it's just me. What you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll I like to draw upon your expertise. You see okay. a little pattern here? I do, I do see a little bit of a pattern here. And in fact, I'd mm. like to incorporate this into that pattern, and maybe we'll have a larger discussion. Chris Stiegman says, if Rudy is giving a grand with no strings attached, I'm getting in line. Chris, you don't want to do that because you really don't know what service that Plocker performed to get that $1,000. You don't want to get in that line until we have more information. This is yes. the problem, the lack of information. So all we're left with is speculation at this point. Uh, we don't really know exactly what, um, you know, Plocker did to get that $1,000 from Rudy. We just don't know. Um, so, but yes, I agree with you. It does seem that, that, um, that Plocker is doing things that take away freedoms from the people and give more power to the government and to large corporations. It does seem that way. Yeah. It, you know, but once yeah. again, we, Biden said it best. Yeah. We don't need your vote to win. Yeah, that's true. I meant they had an enormous amount of uh, fraudulent ballots come in, I think, once again, speculation uh, from the mail-in ballot folks. Yeah. All right, Caleb, you look like he's having way too much fun over yeah. there. You got to tell us what's going on, or do we have to speculate? Oh, I'm just, I just had, because I know these people, I had to go over there and say, okay, be nice, but don't be afraid to roast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, gotcha. So uh, the number is uh, aggressive. Okay, gotcha. The number's being used then. I'm guess I'm going to say yes. Apparently, Charles already called and left a voicemail. He's going to call every two hours. <laughs> okay, gotcha. That's wonderful. Yep, guys. Uh, if you feel free to call his cell phone number, uh, it's available on your screen right now. It's three one four three zero eight nine seven three three, and uh, Dean Plocker. The floor leader of the Missouri House of Representatives wants to know what you think about what he's doing. And also, he wants you to call so he can explain to you what he's doing. So feel free to call. Yeah, he's just kind of busy right now. So, you know, yeah. we, we got we to gotta yeah. <laughs> reach out to the man, okay? Yeah. Chris says uh, the operative word is with no strings. I know. I was making a joke. And I know you were joking, too. So, yeah, I just thought I'd play off of it. So, yeah, there's no such thing as no strings in the political world. That's right. When uh, a warrior class says when democracy turns to tyranny, the armed citizen still gets to vote. That's correct. The armed citizen gets a vote. So, uh, Dean Plocker, uh, you in yet, sir? Because, you know, you got two minutes until you're on the floor. So please tell me you're in and you want to talk to us and give us like the last two minutes before you go on the floor. Because otherwise I'm thinking that I'm starting to think, man, I got the cold shoulder on this whole YouTube thing from uh blocker. What do you think, Casey? I don't know. You know, I, I I've think you let up. Hannah handle it for a while and they can just come out here and, you know, talk to us. Yeah. Hannah got the email too. Hannah could, Hannah, if you're there, please come out. We'd love to chat with you. Yeah. Or just tell or Dean, Vita. you know, that she'll she'll cover for him while he's talking to us. Yeah, Vita, so I wouldn't mind talking come to out here. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of folks we'd love to talk yeah. to. Them. I mean, seriously, guys. Spe you know, especially if there's like any representatives that are really upset at you know what's going on here and that the people aren't being properly representative. Yeah. Or represented. If yep. they want to come on here and say something. Yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah. Yeah, we're open. Yeah. We're very inclusive. I think that's uh, kind of an important thing here is that we are inclusive. We are. Uh, it's not like uh, we're recommending people hate uh, Dean Plocker. We don't. 
we do want people to contact him and see if they can get in communication with him because he's simply not communicating with us. Um, so, you know, the last thing we recommend is hatred or anger in your emails or phone calls. You know, a little bit of levity, you know, you know, because he is, you know, the floor leader. But I also think a little bit of juvenile humor would be fun, too. That way you can make him laugh. If you can make Dean Plocker laugh, that's that's actually, I think, um, if we don't hurt his feelings and we make him laugh, I think we, we'll get him, along with a, about two or $3,000. I think he's got a pretty good sense of humor. Like he said, hey, can you put, like, put 2118 on the floor? I'm, I'm sure he'd make him laugh. You know? Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Charles Uplifted says, as soon as I have room on my cell for Discord, I'll join y'all. Okay. Uh, room on your cell. Are you having to empty things out of your cell phone to put an app yeah, on? Yeah, he's yeah, he's <laughs> he's got a, he's a truck driver. His trucker app takes up so much room in that thing. Okay. He needs a new phone. Okay. I swear he just needs a Samsung like I've got. This thing holds so much stuff. Samsung. Half tempted to drive to his home and stand uh, till he comes home. So... Uh, I know he hears my message, but I'm sure I'll get harassment. I don't know if Dean Plocker would harass you. He might ask you to get off his property. But... Cops might. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So Dean. I don't know. Was... When, I, when I was up on the floor and I asked who he was, where he's at down below. Son of a gun. It's 12 o'clock and he didn't come in. Gosh darn it. How about that? Gosh darn it. Guys, I've tried so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry I failed you. I have tried you so hard. That? Yep. Gosh darn it. That? Yeah, our, you know, our first, you know, virtual, you know, attempt to get him after all the phone calls and emails have failed, and this one failed too. Um, so I'm starting to wonder, you know, basically we could speculate as to why, you know, is is it me, guys? Is it me? Or but I also know a lot of other folks that he's not responsive to. I mean, do I smell or something or uh, I don't know. Yeah. We don't have smell o vision though, so. I mean, and there's no smell phones. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> One. Okay, let's uh, take jokes. a look at the. Bad uh, jokes. Let's take a. Guys, remember now the number's on your screen here to call Dean Plocker. Speaking of bad jokes, we've been talking about one all all morning long. Yeah, let's see where the hearings are. Oh, but it hurt his feelings. No, we don't want to hurt his feelings. Tuesday, 12 o'clock. There's no 12 o'clock. Oh, that was Charles that said that. Oh, shit. Said what? Oh, the thing about uh, about driving to us. <laughs> Since I never do that shit, yeah. dude. <laughs> oh, that was Charles. Yeah, okay, yep. <laughs> okay, hang on. Uh, let's see, fiscal room. Let's see if the fiscal room... Oh, hang on. Gosh darn it. I am just trying to... Find out where they're at right now. Let's see. Close created. Uh, uh, workflow. Uh, nope, nothing there with 2000 or 2118. Guys, can you tell right now if they're live anywhere? Uh, I've got the chamber on right now. There's a few people milling around. Don't look like they're starting yet. Okay, gotcha. Fantastic. We may still have time. Dean Plocker, please get a hold of us. Uh, uh, Dean Plocker, um, we have your phone number, 314-308-9733. Uh, we're trying to get in touch with you to find out why it is you don't want 2009 to pass or to even get any reasonable floor time uh, without some elaborate concocted, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy with Rudy Feet to prevent it from going through uh, in any meaningful way. I be we're begging you, sir, please just contact us and let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, perhaps you can convince us that, uh, that you know better than the uh, folks, the fine folks of Missouri, um, you know, that it's your best judgment we shouldn't have 2009 and 2118. Just come on and let us know. We'd be happy to debate that with you, uh, discuss that with you, in a very respectful way, by the way. So, Dean Plocker, once again. Please. I think Dean would put 2118 on the floor if he had uh, Rudy <laughs> up there totally gutting it. I don't know if gutting it or just giving him cash will get it on the floor. I'm not sure which, wow. you know. Um, 
I'm trying to see if I see Plocker walking in and if he's if he's like just patting at his phone or something while just continually buzzing or some yep. shit. <laughs> yep. Probably well, threw it in the trash by now. Yep. <laughs> he's got to get a new number. Mm-hmm. Chris Steegman says, in all seriousness... He's probably going, Hannah, you're going to take over the floor for a while. i got to go to a T-Mobile. <laughs> 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 got to get a new number. <laughs> Holy crap. So quick, call Hannah. Tell her to put 2018 on the floor. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, there you go. Yep. And guys, continue, if you don't mind, giving Dean a call, texting him, emailing him. Let's let him know what we here in Missouri think about him uh, preventing HB 2009 and HB 2118 from getting to the floor of the House in any meaningful way. The two most popular bills this year, the two most popular bills, he just doesn't want them out. And, you know, we're speculating as to why, because we can't get any communication out of the man. So he did communicate a little bit with uh, KC. KC went to extraordinary measures to meet with the man. Uh, That was last Wednesday. Um, And he just simply said, you know, basically that uh, 2118 is never going to hit the floor. So, and he has the power to prevent it. Never see the light of day. Never see the light of day. So, yep. So apparently the measure, um, innocent until proven guilty, doesn't, uh, doesn't really apply to uh, his campaign and, and financial backers. I mean, that's we're speculating at this point. Uh. Yeah. So, gosh darn it. Dean Plocker, I've got your personal cell phone number up here. I'm surprised you haven't chimed in and said something. I mean, I, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get your attention, Dean Plocker. Oh, I, I really do think it's going to come down to just coming up with large wads of cash and or a boat. It, it, yeah, something like that. Because he's not responsive. I mean, everything. Shoot, man. I, I have best friends, and I have never created a YouTube video just to get in touch with them. And I know that they'd be all over that if I, if I did. They'd be like, oh, cool, man. Let me come in and talk to you. You know, but yeah, apparently not yeah, blocker. If anyone has any other our ideas of how we can get uh, Plocker's attention, I'm I'm all ears. You guys uh, just chime in. Let us know. Uh, no. Well, anything short of uh, I don't know, just having a bunch of us go up to the Capitol, go onto that rotunda up top, and say and just chant Plocker the Blocker. Plocker the Blocker. Yep. Where is he? Where is that Plocker guy? Mm-hmm. John the doorman, crazy. Have everybody yeah. do it like every five minutes. Which one's Plocker? Mm-hmm. Where's Block? That's called a chief of staff, security, everybody else up there. Yep. I just want to talk to the guy. That's all. I know. And, you know, and I think he, you know what? He may mistakenly think that we have nefarious intentions. Why wouldn't he? You yeah, know? It might be nefarious to him, you know. Exactly. I mean, exactly. People because... get the bills that they want put on the floor. That could be nefarious to him. Well, yeah, we just need him to answer, you know, basically uh, how much money he wants or what he wants in exchange for putting the two most popular bills this year on the floor for meaningful perfection and debate time. That's all we want to know. He needs to answer for what he's done, too, with 2009. Yeah, I think so, too. In fact, uh, Plocker, if you're going to come in and answer for what you did, uh, please bring Rudy Veet with you. Uh, because actually he conspired with you. It's an actual conspiracy gang. A conspiracy means more than one person involved. Mm-hmm. And so that's actually honest to God a conspiracy. And it's not a theory. More than one person involved to achieve an, uh, an ends, whether it be corrupt or not. Yep. Which this one is inherently corrupt. Yep. Just speculate. Yep. We're just speculating, gang. I mean, we just don't know. We just, just speculating don't. his corrupt his corruptness. Just yep. speculating. Well, I mean, the other one was caught on video, so House yep. Floor. Yeah. So we're just speculating what was caught on video. Just speculating. Yep. And for those of you who have not seen the just Missouri speculating version, the obvious here, people. Just speculating. <laughs> just, just speculating. And for those of you who have not seen the Missouri First write up on what Dean Plocker has done. There's the write-up right from uh, Ron's website, mofirst.org. Let's read it. Yep. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, I've put it on the YouTube now. It says, uh, basically, uh, this is the title of it. Majority floor leader Dean Plocker and Rep. Rudy Veet play Republican colleagues as fools. So the write-up begins, Dean Plocker's target was Rep. Susie Pollock, but all the Republicans, along with the integrity of the House, are collateral damage. In the uh, two and a half decades, this, by the way, Ron wrote this. In the two and a half decades I've been active at the Missouri Capitol, I've seen a lot of underhanded and deceitful schemes, but this one tops them all for pettiness and deceit. The main lesson for all of us is that the rules of the House need to be changed so that no one person has this much power. So what happened? The hit list. Floor leader Don Plocker doesn't like conservatives, uh, Rep. Susie Pollock so he will not let her legislation advance. No matter how popular her bills are, Susie is not the only rep on Plocker's hit list. A bill too popular to ignore. HB 2009 is one of Susie's bills he's holding up. But his quandary is that her bill is immensely popular. Nearly 50 fellow Republicans, and it's over 50 now, by the way, have co-sponsored HB 2009. We have another story about that, too. Uh, more than any other bill since the Second Amendment Preservation Act in 2021, which we were all behind. We got that. We saw that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. He continues, and I'm going to go back to that story. It addressed several Republican priorities, like parents' rights, COVID tyranny pushback, reigning in the Department of Health, religious liberty, health care freedom, and more. Over 850 citizens supported HB 2009 at its hearing, at its hearing, gang. We're not even talking uh, phone calls and emails. We're talking about witness uh, testimony and witness forms. Uh, and when you get that many average people at a hearing, that's saying something. Yep. Legislative staff report that they are getting more phone calls and emails about HB 2009 than any other bill. We, we've called it. We knew this. It is the most popular bill this year. And then right after that is 2118. And then right after that is 1992. Uh, so uh, Dean Plocker can't ignore this demand for the bill. So the less leftist AAP. Apparently, though, neither can he ignore or dislike. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Neither can he ignore his dislike for Susie or perhaps his loyalty to the ultra left American Academy of Pediatrics, the lead opponents of HB 2009. The AAP not only opposes HB 2009, health care freedom, they also are vocal opponents against the Second Amendment, religious exemptions to vaccines, the right to life, and they are promoting the transgender ag agenda to put boys in girls' locker rooms and sports teams. They're, these are the people who are still promoting the COVID-19 vaccine for five-year-olds. The scheme, what did Plocker do? He hatched a scheme that he likely thought would humiliate Susie Pollack, give AAP what they want, and allow him to tell, uh, to tell the thousands of citizens pushing for HB 2009 that he allowed the bill, or at least the bill's language, an opportunity for floor debate. Watch the video link and see the plan unfold. That's the video we watched at the beginning of this broadcast, gang. Plocker couldn't risk real debate because the overwhelming support of the bill. So he made sure Susie Pollack was kept out of the loop. To do that, he had to rescue a dead bill to use as a vehicle. And that's Benny Cook's uh, HB 2452. Then he found Rep. John Wyman, a supporter of HB 2009, but not truly up to speed on the bill, to offer language from HB 2009 as a good amendment to HB 2452. Had the scheme stopped there, it would still be a slap in the face to Republican Susie Pollack, but at least Missourians would have had a chance of greater freedom if the bill would pass the Senate. The problem, though, is that the leftist AAP, the ones with the professional lobbyists and the money, would not get their way. Enter Representative Rudy Veet with his complicated amendment that literally guts the bill, all except for the part the AAP had previously said they could live with. Hmm... Because all this was done in stealth, everyone was blindsided. Rudy Veet misrepresented his amendment when he introduced it, making the body believe he was just taking away the conscientious objection out of the bill. Uh, there was not enough time for anyone suspicious of it to digest his amendment and discover otherwise. 
So what can be done? Floor leader Dean Plocker can still do the right thing and bring HB 2009 to the floor for a real debate. This late in the session, it would take a lot of work to get it through the Senate, but it's possible if Plocker doesn't continue to stand in the way. The larger picture, though, it relates to the rules of the House. They must be changed so that so few people in leadership don't have all the power and do this sort of mischief. Each rep, Republicans and Democrats, should have an equal opportunity in the arena of ideas. We've talked about that in a uh, two, three podcasts ago, by the way. The fact that they're stymieing, they're preventing other ideas. And that was in relation to the ballot initiatives. So actionable items. Call and email your rep and tell uh, him to demand that Plocker give HB 2009 a fair chance at debate. Call and email Dean Plocker. Well, we know, you know, we're trying, we're trying. And tell him that you expect him to put an end to the pettiness and stop helping with the agenda of the leftist AAP. Tell him to allow HB 2009 floor time on April 19th. That's today, gang. So we have, uh, you know, he also says, be civilized. And also, during the primary season, tell every candidate to the state house of representatives that you expect him or her to support a new set of rules that evenly distributes power or decentralizes power and tell them that you expect them to vote against Dean Plocker for Speaker of the House. Okay, that's the write-up, gang. Now to go back to uh, uh, what I was talking about earlier. Um, uh, let's see, apparently we were talking. I had a story. Oh, um, the, the 2009, HB 2009 had more co-sponsors, but people literally um, were advised to take their name off the co-sponsorship. Otherwise, their uh, legislation wouldn't hit the floor. Now, I don't know who did that. I think I heard that Dean Plocker did that. So literally, Dean Plocker is literally threatening people at the House. If you have, and that is if it was Dean Plocker, I think it was, uh, if you have your name on the co-sponsorship, your legislation doesn't get through. So let's test that theory. KC, do you have your computer in front of you? I have it in front of me. Let's see if, um, let's see, uh, uh, is there anyone else's legis uh, Jared Taylor, Jared Taylor's uh, 2118 is not being allowed through. Can you see if Jared Taylor was a co-sponsor of Susie Pollock's HB 2009? Let's look that up. Yeah, that wouldn't be speculation. That would be just fact if it's there. That would explain why uh, Jared's legislation is not getting through this year. His 2009 final co-sponsors. Let's see who we have. Oh. There's a Jared Taylor on there. Okay. That was back in March 2nd of this year okay. at 11 a.m. that he signed on. There we go. Oh, so we have somebody in there that actually stood on principle that didn't compromise because of the threat. <clears throat> and now they can't get their, even get their <laughs> bill on the floor. Yep. It does seem like Dean Plocker is oh, literally. Wait, wait, wait. There's another one. Who's this uh, Tony Lavasco guy? Tony Lavasco, that would be the sponsor of Bill 1613 that ends civil asset yeah. forfeiture in the state of Missouri. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Someone else with principles. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Got a lot of weird stuff going on with this. Um, let's see if we can find anyone. You know, we just don't know the bills well enough, I, I think, to go through this list you know here. i still don't see hannah kelly on this list but if you go to her her page you know on the house website it says in there that she did let's see let's try this one more time i'm still wondering about that it's kind of strange i don't know if that's just an error one way or the other or what i don't know we're just speculating right now we're just yeah just speculating Speculating. Let's pull this up. Let's see if it's uh, still on there. There we go. Okay. Okay, I'm on her web page there. Uh, Co-sponsored bills. Still says 2009. Okay. But when I go on the actual bill, when I track the actual bill of 2009, 
and it shows co-sponsor. She's not on there. Oh, and what was the other one we brought up the other night? Let's let me go back to that. Hang on, hang on. Warrior Class just gave us some some info. Uh, Jim uh, Calibro, uh, Jamie Berger, Bill Owen, uh, Sean Poucher, uh, Randy Railsback, John Wyman, Ron Hicks, Travis Smith, Dave Griffith withdrew their sponsorship of 2009. When they do that, Warrior Class, all at the same time or different times? I wonder if there's anyone, can we call any one of these guys and confirm whether or not uh, they were asked to take their um, their name off that legislation? Because you know, they were, they were... Patrick, that'd be a great idea. Yep. Yep. Oh, I got to love a little investigation. eh? Yep. I'll tell you yeah. what, I don't have, I'm not real good friends with any of these guys. Um, so, and by the way, I won't make a live call, so I may do it off camera here real quick. But then again, these guys are probably uh, uh, anyone monitoring the house. Is the house busy? Oh, that's right. I get to look back at that. Uh, where's my Chrome? Me bloody Chrome. Looks like they're filing in now. Okay. Okay, we're not going to be able to get rid of or get them. Well, we yeah. could probably try their LAs. HB 2152, third red, looks like. Well, no. Yeah, 21. What is, which one is this? Are they are they doing informal or formal calendar right now? Don't know. Uh, calendar, house bills for third reading. Wait, which one is this? So they're going off the, well, yeah, calendar. That's a little bit ambiguous. This, we, this, this one they're doing is allows school innovation teams to submit plans for school innovation waivers. So spending more money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get going here for just a, a few minutes here. I've got to get right. uh, oh. refill my drink here. Um, did, what what bill number did you say it was? Hey, before we take off, do you want to stick the house thing up there? i got to run in the house real quick. What do you mean the house thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Give it to me in the Discord chat. Yep, hang on. Ah, uh, shit. Oh, what, what the hell is this Hang on, we got something from Susan at the D.C. Project. Plocker's office has been telling the ladies of the D.C. Project, women for gun rights, they're hoping that it will get to the floor soon. Week after week, when I pop in or out or call, feeding ladies a line. I'm hot at the moment over it. Yep, he's stalling. That's what he's doing. Uh, so yeah, he told I, me that. That means he's nervous, though. <laughs> yep. That's a sign of being nervous. Because mm -hmm. he knows he's got people with pressure on him. Yep. Okay, there we go. Uh, I stuck it in the Discord chat. That should be the link directly to the feed for today's thing. I'm going to go grab a soda real quick. Okay. He's yeah, Chief I Operating know. Officer of Broadband. And we also have other board members who have joined Mr. Schuster today to recognize his retirement. <laughs> they include former Representative Rodney Shad, who served here in the House floor from 2005 to 2015. So we welcome Rodney back to the House. We also have Bill Betridge, Bruce Wolf. Gary Harris, Rick Purden, Gene Eulinger, and like I said, Rodney Shad. They're all members of the Board of Directors. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask for the House to recognize John Schuster as I present him with a resolution honoring his years of service to the Como Electric Cooperative. Welcome back to the House, gentlemen. Some sort of photo op and meet and Gentlemen treat. from Newton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Introduction of special guests. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today with us between the fourth and fifth column is a great family from my district. And this is Jason and Jennifer Rhodes and their three children, Jaden, Jacob, and Jenna. And I would like the house to make them feel welcome here today. 
And Mr. Speaker, I would also ask that Jenna would be made page for the day without compensation. He would be made page a day without compensation. Welcome to the House. Guys, sometimes it mutes. Um, Gentleman you know. from Cole. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, I move that House Bill 2090 be third read and passed. Gentlemen, hold on one second. We're going to finish this one. Okay. Has everyone voted? Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote. By your vote of 134, yes, zero, no, you have third red pass. House can be substituted, House Bill 2152. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on oh, that same order of business, I ask that you recognize the gentleman from Cole for a motion on third read for his House Bill. I'm, uh, Dean, call me. Call me, Gentleman Dean. from Cole. Thank That's you, Dean Speaker. Parker, by the way. I move that House Bill... 2090 be third read and passed. The gentleman from Cole's move for the third reading and passage of House Bill 2090. Gentleman from Cole. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is the bill that we uh, perfected last week. This allows the salaries for our state employees to be paid in a biweekly installments uh, as, as designated by the commissioner of the House Office of Administration. Uh, for many, many years, uh, our state employees were paid once a month. And back in the 80s, we moved that to uh, bimonthly. And this is one more step in, in an effort to try and meet those needs of our state employees uh, during times when their payday may fall, might fall on a time that's, where they wouldn't receive their paycheck for over a weekend or over a holiday. Um, I think what we've done in the House this, uh, this year uh, is really taking a good look at our state employees and showing them the appreciation we have for them and compensating them for what they do. And I think this is one more step in trying to show them that we are being responsive to their needs. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I renew my motion. Discussion. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To briefly inquire of the bill handler, please. Gentleman from Cole, do you yield? I sure do. Proceed. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so so I, I was looking at your bill here. I think you've got probably a pretty good bill. So in summation, basically, this is going to move the cycle of pay. Yeah, right now, they're being paid on the 1st and the 15th. And sometimes those paydays, when they, they fall on a time when um, it's over, over a weekend and they may not uh, have that. You know, it's, it's really sad that many of our city employees live paycheck to paycheck. And De definitely. being able, to, been, being able to, do, to do this, I think it's going to be re responsive to them. Um, many of them have come to me and, 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 and thank their appreciation for me carrying this bill. So I think the, this is a good thing. So this will make the pay cycle a little bit easier. Instead of having 24, we're going to have 26. In yeah, be, yeah, they'll have 26. It's actually so, one month. They'll, they'll get paid three times. So, so they'll be able to, to breach that gap a little bit easier going Correct. from paycheck Correct. to paycheck. I, I sure do appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Further discussion. Lady from St. Louis City. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just to briefly speak on the bill. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think this is a good bill. Um, I don't know many people. Um, it's already hard for folks um, to retain employment here in the state, in our um, our state department. So making sure that we pay people biweekly will help a secure their funding in some way, but also give them the option not to have to pay rock, paper, scissors. So I appreciate the gentleman for bringing this forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion. Joan from St. Louis City. To speak on the bill, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to echo a lot of the sentiments that's already been said. This is a good bill. I appreciate the gentleman carrying it, something I carried uh, last year with a representative from the uh, Trent District. But uh, within that, we heard a lot about, especially our state employees, how they struggle to be able to get by, especially when you're getting paid on that 15th and 30th compared to uh, you know every two weeks. So this is a good bill, especially for our state employees, and I appreciate the gentleman for carrying it and ask the body to support it. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none. Gentleman from Cole, you are recognized close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I renew my motion. The gentleman from Cole's move for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2090. All those in favor vote yes. All those who vote no. Ms. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board.
The lady from Laclede. Uh, point of personal privilege, please. Proceed, lady. Uh, I wanted to thank the Capital Connection Mentor Group under Pastor, Pastor Andy Schmidt and Miss Melanie Black. These fine young folks between the fifth and the sixth column have spent every Tuesday morning here at the Capitol. While here, they've developed leadership skills, communication skills, and an understanding of the legislative process while serving in the Missouri House of Representatives, developed skills in communication and in the Missouri Senate. And today, they have their families with them up in the upper gallery, and I would like to make them pages for a day without compensation. And their names are Connor Parrish, Andrew Schmidt, Tara Marks, Elijah Robison, and Cole Marks. Would the body please make them feel welcome. Has everyone voted? Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote by your vote of 134 yes, zero no. You have third and pass House Bill 2090. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on that same order of business, I ask you to recognize the gentleman from Clay on a motion for House Committee substitute to House Bill 1683. Gentleman from Clay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that House Committee substitute for House Bill 1683 be third read and passed. The gentleman from Clay's move for the third reading of passage, House Committee Substitute House Bill 1683. Gentleman from Clay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the advanced placement bill that we perfected last week. Uh, this is a bill, to recap very briefly, that would require colleges and universities in the state of Missouri to grant freshman level three hour credit for individuals in high school that scored a three or better on an advanced placement test. Uh, Missouri is a handful of a few states in the union that does not have an overriding policy for this, either made by the legislature or the state's Department of Higher Education. In Missouri right now, awarding the, the college credit on that freshman level is a little arbitrary, it's a little random. So all we're doing, all we're doing with this bill is just adding some consistency and uniformity to this. And I, and I have to tell you that this bill is kind of a, uh, the origin of it is kind of cool. It actually started in uh, Liberty, uh, Liberty, Missouri, in a high school in an advanced placement government class. Some students and their teacher were simply wondering, why is Missouri not doing this? Why is Missouri being different? And so they actually kind of got this going at the grassroots. They contacted their representative, who actually at the time, well, it still is, it is the honorable gentleman from the Ellibrock District. He ran with this, I believe, in 2020. Uh, COVID hit, it kind of fell apart. I took it last year got it out of the House, got it to the Senate, and it kind of went south in the Senate. This year, I would like to remind the, the, the body that it did get out of committee uh, unanimously, and I, I'm hoping that we can get it out of the House today with a lot of bipartisan support. It's a clean bill. There's no amendments on it. I'm hoping it's going to get some legs in the Senate, and would love to see it get to the governor's desk. Again, I would like to remind the body that this is kind of a feel-good bill. When you go back and you talk to your, your constituents, this is a bill they can relate to, they can understand it. Uh, it's one that could put money in their, their, their pocket, their kids' pocket. It's good for Missourians. And, I, and again, um, like I said, try to uh, show some support. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, I think that's all I need to say. So, with that, I would renew my motion. Discussion on House Committee Substitute House Bill 1683. Gentleman from Randolph. Uh, to speak briefly on the bill. Proceed. Yeah, this I, I agree with uh, the representative. This, this is an excellent um, opportunity for us to make sure that the people um, that pay good money for advanced placement classes um, actually get some reward for it. You know, getting a three on a history um, advanced placement test is fantastic. Uh, and yet then when they go to college and they go to, say, MU, for instance, uh, and, they're, and they're said, oh, we only accept fours, um, and that's just so that they can collect more money from, from us and from our students. Uh, is just really uh, not well serving and uh, I just vote for you know want everyone to vote uh, in favor of this bill thank you Mr. Speaker further discussion gentleman from St. Louis County thank you Mr. Speaker to speak on the bill proceed I like to thank the di gentleman from the 16th district for bringing this bill and pushing it across the, the finish line for the students of Missouri the high school students who are working very hard to get advanced placement classes completed so they can complete their college education at the university or college of their choice. 
hopefully in four years or less. This is a great savings for our citizens, our parents who are paying for that education, and it's great for the kids who are really working hard and learning a lot of things in high school to be prepared for the college. So I urge this body to support this legislation, to push it forward, and to get it over in the Senate, and let's beat upon the senators to support this legislation for the people of Missouri. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion? Interesting. He's worried about the parents and how much money they have <clears throat> to send their kids to school. So he's worried about the parents there, but apparently they're not worried about the parents with their ability to choose whether or not they get a experimental uh, vaccine injected into their bloodstream. That's interesting. Interesting is an understatement. Yep. <laughs> And they're muted right now at the house. Yeah, they're muted at the moment because they yep. got to do their role and then they call it out. Yep. Thank you all for joining us. For those of you who worked with us from the beginning of this podcast, uh, we're basically asking people to call up Dean Plocker at the number on your screen, 314-308-9733, and ask him why HB 2009 and HB 2118, the most popular bills this year, have not been allowed on the House floor in any meaningful way. Hmm. Hey there, LaTanya. So we still have time. So basically, uh, let's, uh, let's give Dean, Dean a call. You can text him at that number too, by the way. Did you almost say demon? Uh, I, that was a, a Freudian slip. It was an accident. <laughs> I was thinking minion. And so, so sorry about that, gang. <laughs> but you're watching the live proceedings right now in the Missouri House of Representatives up in the lovely Jefferson City, Missouri. Yeah, his voicemail is full, Latanya. That's correct. His voicemail is full. That's why we provided a different number for you to reach him at. The number on the screen now is slightly different than his office number. So you can text him or call him at that number. Let's see. Because uh, they're criminals and they have an agenda. Well, David, come on. Let's, David, let's give them the benefit now. of the doubt. We're, we speculate here. We don't know they're criminals and that they have an agenda. It just looks that way. Just speculating. Yep. We're looking at his campaign contributions, and it just it looks like they may be criminals, and they may have an agenda, <laughs> you know, that uh, that we're just not a part of. That's between the corporations and the Has everyone voted? What's that? <laughs> oh, I thought that was one of us. I think that's the house that came through. Yeah, we're just waiting for the house audio feed to resume again, gang. Latanya says, I'm going to do both. Awesome. Hopefully, he'll be on the floor when his, when his phone rings. Actually, he probably has it turned off, but that's his cell phone. Through that this clerk, please close board now, and tie the vote by your vote of 135 yes, zero no. You have third grade pass. So house can be substitute House Bill 1683. The texts and everything that's coming in through that. I'm just trying to figure all, all the all the pictures that got sent to him. From <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh, gentleman no. from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on that same order of business, I asked you recognize the gentleman it from Crawford on a motion for House Bill 2372. Gentleman from Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the House Bill 2372. Speaking boys, there's a boy Jared getting up to the podium there. The gentleman oh, yeah. from Crawford has moved for the third There's message of House Bill 2372. The gentleman from Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is the right, parking garage quick, bill we talked about last <laughs> week. Just clean up the statutes to make it fit what we're actually doing. It includes the amendment from the gentleman from Jefferson requiring that all vehicles parked in the garage be up to date on their tags. Without taking questions. Discussion. Lady from St. Louis City. 
To speak on the bill, Mr. Speaker. Proceed, lady. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This comes through admin and accounts. It's a basic bill that's going to have us oversee our parking garage. And as we did speak on it at length last week, I'll just let everyone know I will be supporting it and hope you support it as well. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, gentleman from Crawford, you recognize close. So the close. On the whether gentleman whether from Crawford has renewed his motion for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2372. All those in favor of the It's almost like yes. they're filibustering. All those opposed, no. Mr. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but Jared can only bring up on the floor what Plocker gives him. Remember that. Yeah, Jared has no power to bring stuff on the floor unless it's given to him by Plocker. And I really hope the boys aren't sending inappropriate pictures, by the way. I mean, we're trying not to do that sort of thing. Oh, he's going through all the house bills for third reading today. Okay, got you guys. I got a phone call coming in. I got to mute my mic. So give me a second here. I got to take this call. I wonder how many of these he's going to go down before he uh, goes back to uh Gentleman from Polk, House bills if you're in the perfection. chamber, you're required to vote. Has everyone voted? He's going to make a day of this. Has everyone voted? Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote. By your vote of 131 yes, three no, and one present, you have third read and passed House Bill 2372. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on that same order of business, I ask that you recognize the gentleman from Scott on a motion for House Bill 2625. And I would remind the body there is an emergency clause. Gentleman from Scott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that House Committee substitute for House Bill 2625 be third read and passed. The gentleman from Scott has moved for the third reading and passage of House Bill 2625. Gentleman from Scott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 2625 was paid, voted due pass by the Standing Committee on Workforce Development by a vote of nine to nothing. Legislative oversight by a vote of 10 to nothing. This bill allows certain individuals holding a valid current professional license in another state or territory of the United States to practice such profession in Missouri. Without obtaining a Missouri license and as part of a partnership hey there, with the gang. Federal Innovative Trade Program off. with the United States Department of Defense. Hey there, gang. Such I'm individuals must be audio. active duty or reserve members of the Armed uh, Forces we have a of the United guest States. Speaker. Members of the National Guard. Okay, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we have a yeah. special speaker with us right now. We have Eric Burleson, Senator in the, uh, for the state of Missouri. He's actually my Senator. And uh, so at any rate, uh, he's agreed to join us live here as we're doing this, uh, this oh. campaign to get uh, 2118 and uh, 2009 and 1992 done through the House. So, hey, welcome. This is uh, Eric Burleson. Eric, Eric, you're live. Hey, I don't know that I'm that special. You well, are pretty special. It. So, D yeah. Hey. Yeah. Tell him I tell him I haven't heard from I haven't haven't talked to him since he was at the uh turning your call on my way back from Jeff City and uh, I was calling in, so I'm glad to glad to I didn't realize you guys were live right now. Yep. Good to talk to you. Yep, good to talk to you too. It, and we're basically we're doing a campaign right now. We're trying to get people to email and call Dean Plocker uh to allow two one one eight along with uh two thousand nine on the floor today. And uh, he can do that if he wants to, uh, but you know he keeps stalling and stalling and stalling. It's what it feels like. Um, so is that is that a common practice? I guess when someone doesn't want a bill to go through, to just kind of stall it. Yeah, there's there's a thousand and one ways to kill a bill, and a lot of them you can you can do. If, if people are not paying attention, a lot of times they'll try to do it in, in such a way where. Bill dies and no one's fingerprints. Yep. So, uh, but if you're paying attention and you're putting pressure on a bill, it's hard for them to get away with it. Yeah. And for, unfortunately, good bills don't pass by themselves. They have to have a ton, a ton of momentum and grassroots effort, phone calls. As you remember, when we had SAFA, 
but it, it became such a it became such a torture for leadership that they that they it was so painful that they wanted to do anything and everything just to get it passed and out the door so that it's on to so it's no longer their issue. And that's almost how you have to do things. You have to make it extremely painful. Otherwise, they just are not, uh, people are not, a lot, most of the people in Step City are not there because they're just passionately driven to, to pass Second Amendment bills. They, the nature of that building is that it's full of people that are lobbyists that are paid and have got pack checks and they're, the nature of the building is to try to please those people and please all the people that have money and pack checks. And if you're going to do that, you're not going to spend your time sponsoring bills like Second Amendment bills or pro-life bills because there's no money behind those bills. It's, uh, it might be the right thing to do, but you know, I, I've gotten accused by citizen people on internet saying, oh, he sponsored SAPA because the NRA gave him a donation. Well, I've got news for people. I have never received a check from the NRA. In fact, I write checks to the NRA because I'm a member. And it's, the NRA doesn't do, and unfortunately, and you remember from SAPA, they actually don't even, weren't even really that much involved with some gun bills. So. Well, I'll tell you what then. You brought up an interesting point. There's no money in it. Uh, so, you know, uh, let me ask you a speculative question here. Do you think that maybe Dean Plocker would hear these bills if we'd started a GoFundMe and uh, gave him money to put those uh, those uh, bills on the floor? So I, my thought is you need to, I, I would, I think spending money to build more awareness is probably the wise thing to do with the money get more people involved, more people to make phone calls. Um, I, I wouldn't try to, try to. Uh, yeah, we're just, I'm just joking with you. We're just trying to have some fun with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it is uh, very apparent that the two most popular bills this year, it's extremely apparent, uh, in the House are 2118 and 2009. Those uh, that's where all the phone calls and the emails and the visits have come. And, you know, that's interesting that the uh, floor leader simply won't let those on the floor in a meaningful way. I think he knows that it would pass. <laughs> so he doesn't want to be, he's not going to give it the chance. Yep. So uh, what he, we're trying he to have an issue. With, Go ahead. We had an issue with him with SAPA. For several years, he held up SAPA in committee. He did. He was a committee chairman. And uh, he, he, he wouldn't let it out. And he, uh, when the pressure mounted and he was running for speaker, he, he, he let SAPA through and supported it. But, you know, and I'm not, I don't predict what's going on inside somebody else's head. But I think that a lot of it had to do with pressure that you guys and the Missouri Firearms Association is placing a building and placing on him because he wanted to be speaker. He knew if he wanted to make his caucus happy, you can't be killing every gun bill. You got to pass some stuff. So, and the, and the existing speaker, Speaker Muscovo, was making it a top priority of his administration, and that that helped a lot too. Yep, you know he was definitely helpful with SAPA. But that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to get him to be responsive to the people. And uh, we have failed so far. Uh, just so you know, I've got six phone calls into him and three emails, and I've not heard a peep out of him. Uh, so, I mean, we've tried. And by the way, that's my story. But if you talk to uh, people in the Missouri Freedom Initiative, that's everyone's story. Uh, he's not responsive to the people. That's why we're beginning to speculate that maybe his campaign contributors are, you know, the ones calling the shots. Do you think yeah, that? I don't know. I, I don't know that that's, I think, I, I'm not so sure. I can't predict what's going on inside of his head. Right. No, we, we can't either. We're just speculating um, because we just, we, we can't seem to get an audience with him. Uh, but we do know that these are the most popular bills in Missouri. People want this. They want 2009. They want 2118. 
and he simply won't be responsive to the people. He won't put these on the floor. So we're left to speculation at this point, I think, you know, especially at this late hour. So, yeah, yeah. so between the two, which one is your, are you, do you guys have polls on those two uh, bills? Well, there are two bills we've been carrying um, since the beginning of the year. And then um, right after that comes 1992. So 2009 and 2118 are our two biggest bills. Okay. And one, with the one is the vaccination bill. That's correct. Right? Yep. That's Susie okay. Pollock's bill. Susie Pollock's bill. Okay. Yeah, and I saw what happened with the with the YouTube video where they talk, talked about how it was amended or watered down yep. in the house. So yeah, Ron. We've been trying to we've been trying to do the same thing in the Senate. Pass very strong, um, you know, language that would protect the worker from being forced to get a vaccine. And every time we do, leadership in the Senate tries to take it over. So the first thing they did, they sent all of those vaccination bills to one committee, and then the committee chair combined everybody's vaccine bills into one bill so that the, it took away the corruption you know, of the conservative caucus members. They no longer were in possession of their own bill, which is about one of the most disgusting things you could do to somebody, right? Yeah. Because... Is you take then you take my bill number and you put, you merge it with somebody else's bill, and then what if that bill goes in a direction that I totally disagree with, and now I'm along for the ride, and and you've got me on the you've got me on the hook for something. That's really not not cool at all. That's what that chairman did. Yep. Hey Eric, I've got a question uh, from the live stream right now uh, from Cuddy. Cuddy is asking, with a $3 billion surplus, why does Missouri need uh, the gas tax increase for last year from Schatz, or from Schatz? I agree. Totally agree. I, would, I never voted for the gas tax. I voted against it. And if I were given the opportunity, I would vote to repeal it. And, and or, at the very minimum, have a reprieve of some kind. I do... I will say this, if I were going to cut taxes, if I had my choice, I would cut income taxes. That would be the, that would be the one tax I would want to cut. Because as, an, as someone who studies the economy, income taxes are, are punitive towards growth of an economy. And so if you want people to invest and, and make more money or be driven to make more money and produce more widgets, more things, then you don't want to punish production right. or income. You want to, you want to punish consumption. So I, I'm all for cutting taxes of any kind, but if I was to cut my brothers, I would rather cut income taxes. Yep. No, I would too. In fact, that's one we're supporting this year too is uh, HB 1992, which uh, actually repeals all the sales tax in the grocery store. And I'm sure you know, Senator, uh, you know, the groceries are going up. We have inflation, pretty bad inflation, actually. And it would certainly help Missouri, Missouri families if, uh, because we don't need that tax anymore. Um, yeah. So, you I know. I went to go get my favorite cashew chicken today for lunch, and it was $9. Yep. <laughs> I could not believe it. Yeah, those of nine dollars. Those people in California, that may be normal, but that's not normal for us here in Missouri. <laughs> hey, Patrick. Yeah. Ask I, Patrick. I remember getting um, cashew chicken for two dollars and thirty-five or forty-five cents uh, when I, I mean, when I was in high school and college. It was basically less than three dollars, and now you can't, now you cannot get it. So that nine dollars, that's insane. Yeah, hang on one second, Eric. I got a guy asking a question here. Go ahead, Caleb. <laughs> oh, um. Uh, you can't so hear the, him, Eric. So, uh, but this, I'll relay this, it. The uh, the suggestions that we made about the uh, uh, the uh, SB or was it the seventy uh, HGR seventy nine and whatnot those um um the ballot initiative things about that language. In oh, it. Uh, ballot initiative. 
Um, uh, Caleb's yeah. asking about the ballot initiative. There's other ideas that don't take away uh, freedoms, you know, basically from the folks of Missouri. Um, and there's uh, Ron Calzone um, might be involved with that. I'm not 100 percent sure. We've submitted some ideas. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so obviously there's a problem, right? I mean, we all can agree that we have what, what was intended to be a good thing is being totally exploited by people like this latest one. Guys, this, this latest one is going to be extremely detrimental to Missouri. Um, it's, what I'm talking about is the ballot initiative that was that's being proposed by I believe a Texas billionaire, he's, he's a liberal, and what he wants to do is, is have ranked choice voting. Have you heard this? Or, yeah, that, that kind of makes it complicated, too. I, I get that. But the outcome of that, and the reason why they're proposing it, is because you were forever, you're never, ever going to elect a conservative if you have ranked choice voting. Okay. You will always have the moderate bit. And it's it just the way that, and so that I've seen people run those mathematical models, and, that's, and they just basically prove it again and again that under ranked choice, when people are make, making those numbers, they will always end up, you always end up with a moderate, either Republican or a Democrat. And so you will never, a guy like me, who is a principled conservative, you'll never elect folks like me ever again. It'll always be the, the person who is a moderate Republican. And, and that's why, I mean, if, if that's what you want, then vote for that. But that's the outcome. And so if this is the problem that we have with our ballot initiatives, is that this is being proposed by people that are not even from Missouri. And they're messing with our state. Because it's so simple to get something on the ballot in Missouri and change the Constitution. And literally someone in another state can basically change our laws, and even our own lawmakers can do nothing about it. And so that's why we've got, I feel like we really need to do something to strengthen the Constitution. My thought is it should be, if you want to leave it in a place where they can, you can pass a bill, or a law with a simple majority vote, that's fine. But it should be a higher threshold or more challenging to change the Constitution than it is. And so I know that there's some of the proposals include requiring a two-thirds vote, one by myself and Bishop Davidson. We are exploring requiring it to be a simple, a, just a, a majority of voters have to vote, which means People would have to show up at the polls and vote. Um, you can't just do it with like a, at a small, like but today, right now, the governor can put a ballot initiative on the August primary, and very few people would be deciding how to change the Constitution. So, and then, and then the third proposal, which is one that I really do like, that's Ron, Calzone, Ron Calzone's idea, which is to have a a constitutional amendment require a, a majority of the population, or a, a majority of the voters, in addition, a majority of the uh, uh, House districts have to have supported the issue. So you have to have it, a lot of the rural districts around the state would have to be required to pass something. And I think that that would be good. That's probably the best outcome. It would be the best resolution if we could get that with the where is that bill at currently? Is that still in the House, or is you have a Senate version? There is. There, it's in the House. It's in the House. Okay. Is that a House Joint Resolution One Thirty Two? Maybe. Um, I'm driving, so I can't confirm. That. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm trying to sure remember. Yeah, actually, Caleb is telling me he thinks that's the bill number. Okay. And I think that that would work. Here's here's where I'm. You have to remember, too, so whatever we're going to change it, we have to put it on the ballot, and the voters have to approve it. Right. And there's those special interests 
that have been getting things passed year after year after year, they're going to have a concerted effort to try to stop that. When I say this special interest, there's literally – the Democratic – a gentleman who was the chairman of the Democratic Party, he left, the, left his role there, and he started a campaign firm where this is all he does. He makes millions of dollars going and pitching new ballot initiatives to liberals in other states. And then when they when he, when they agree to it, he puts it on the ballot and gets paid to get these things passed. So I'm mm-hmm. saying, so we would basically want that people like him are going to have a financial interest in trying to kill any in, initiative that we're going to try to do to, to strengthen the Constitution or make it more challenging to change the Missouri Constitution. Understood. That For, sense. Yes, it does. And yeah, I agree with you. Ron Calzone's idea is is better than the one that they uh, put through the House and the one that's currently in the Senate, in my opinion. For those of you joining us live, uh, I have Senator Eric Burleson with us. If you guys have any questions on the YouTube side, please throw it in the chat. Uh, if anyone on the Discord side uh, has a question, just uh, let me know or or type it in, actually, So because I can't have it so that... Uh, Eric can hear you and you guys uh, can hear him on short notice. So, but at any rate, anyone on YouTube have a question for Senator Burleson, let us know. Okay, uh, yeah, Eric, I, I, I'm so appreciating the phone call too, and also your insights here with the uh, ballot initiative. Uh, that's something that's uh, near and dear to our hearts too, and we think that there's better ways of handling it other than the bill that they, they shoved through the House as quickly as they did. Yeah, especially yeah, that, since. And I get both sides. Uh, I get that we were worried that we're going to lose the opportunity to pass something like the Hancock Amendment. Yes. Um, but we haven't had, we have not had a grassroots, a true grassroots conservative initiative petition since the Hancock Amendment that I can recall. Um, it, it just is not happening. And I can think I can come up with some ideas that would be fantastic. One idea would be to eliminate the personal property tax. You know, we these taxes on vehicles. Mm-hmm. If you put that on the ballot, it would pass. But the we cannot get that uh, passed uh, through the legislature because the, the bureaucracy and government loves taxes. And they love that personal property tax. Yes, they do. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. there's just no way to get it passed. Um, so th- I, that would be one that would be a great ballot initiative if, if a group of people wanted to try to get the signatures and put it on the ballot. Another one that would be really good that probably would be would be catchy if the, is an idea of mine, and that is to, to have a ballot initiative put it in the Constitution that no tax is permanent. So, so basically, you say every tax, no matter when it was passed, has to be reapproved at least every 50 years, something like that. Yeah, right? I would say probably every 10 years. Um, some would say every 25, because that's a generation. Uh, by the way, I do have uh, some yeah. comments here I'd love to share with you, Eric. Uh, Latanya King um, it says that does he know uh, the level of of uh, of uh, you know how pissed off we are with the legislature, and it, she says it's bubbling up and that's for real. We can't get anything done. Also, Charles Uplifted says I feel ignored by uh, by the legislature. Um, so that's well, the kind of feeling. I hope that you're just. I hope that th- that those people, and I hope you feel the same way. Yeah, well, I hope you don't feel like I'm ignoring. You. No, uh, uh-uh, they're that not. They're not in your district. So no, uh, Charles up is up in my area in Kansas I, City. I, I, <laughs> I can tell you, I feel ignored as a lawmaker <laughs> when the bills that I file get sent to committees to die. Yep. Um, the, like they, like my pro-life bills get sent to veterans committee. And my Second Amendment bills get sent to transportation committees. Yep. What? Die. Yep. And, and I, 
it's just a frustrating thing that they have declared war on the conservatives because they would rather work with the Democrats than to than to work with the conservatives, pass conservative legislation. They we've become apparently um, apparently it's just that's what they've had to they've come to the conclusion that they would rather shoot their nose. I would say they. I mean, other Repu- the mainstream Republicans would rather shoot their nose to spite their face and and work with the Democrats than they would to be, be conservative and pass conservative bills. Yeah. And when it- they do pass them, they're going to water them down as much as possible and, and just check the box and tell you that they passed something. So when we do election integrity, they're watering it down. They've been watering it down since committee. Yep. They do um, these vaccine mandate bills. They've been watering them down. They, and they end up giving these bills instead of letting a conservative carry it because they know that they can't stop us. They're putting it in the hands of, of moderates so that the moderate can will water it down and then check the box. And, we, and when we stand up and scream or try to stop it from happening, uh, imagine the position that it puts us in. Yep. Right? So then if I stand up and, and try to oppose a watered-down vaccine bill, then, then, not, then now politically I'm in a bad bind because I'm opposing the vaccine bill. Yep. Yep. No, we see that happen, too. I mean, remember we were afraid about uh, Biden with OSHA, tried to get a special session with the governor, and he simply wouldn't listen. I mean, he just made an actual effort to pretend that no one was trying to get through to him. Um, The emails and phone calls that went through the governor, um, you know, once again, to do a special session to protect Missourians in case there was an OSHA mandate, and he wouldn't do it. And I think uh, a lot of people in Missouri felt very, very betrayed. It was a massive effort, too. Also by the Senate and by the House. We saw that. We were part of that. And uh, so sometimes, uh, you know, so LaTanya and Charles, you know, basically, I, I feel you. You guys, we sometimes our leadership totally, completely ignores what we want. And then what it starts to look like, Eric, you start to speculate because they won't talk to you. And you start looking at their campaign donors, and then all of a sudden, everything suddenly makes a lot more sense. And that's unfortunately what we've been doing with the uh, floor leader today. We've been looking through his campaign contributors and what their public stances are on things. And unfortunately, a lot of things are making a lot more sense. Yeah. Well, and it's, sometimes it's not just the people that are writing checks, it's the other power structure, right? So. Politicians, even though superintendents don't write checks or they're prosecuting attorneys or they're sheriffs, uh, as you know, with SAFA, that was a hard thing. Yeah. With, with getting over the challenge of law enforcement. And because people want to please, politicians want to please the other government agencies and, and political subdivisions and bureaucrats that they have to work with. And that because they know that those people talk. And that they are in basically their influences. Yep. Right. And so, in this scenario, for example, I think that what you're experiencing is that Flocker is very, he's listening to the prosecuting attorneys who are the influences. Yep. In fact, we have confirmation of that. He actually told uh, one of our group exactly that, that he is listening to the prosecuting attorneys. Um, so, but he is not listening to the people nor to his constituents and that's on bill 2118. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Caleb. Yeah. He also, he also proceeded to tell him that, uh, that bill will not see the light of day. Yep. He, quote. yep. He literally told, um, our friend Casey Rich that 2118 would not see the light of day on the house floor. He didn't care how popular it was. He says that bill never sees the light of day. It doesn't get on the floor. You know, and one way that you guys can do something that would, is to make an example, to find, just for example, this prosecutor that testified against SAFA, testified against, uh, I, I believe he testified, I don't remember SAFA, but he definitely testified against 
uh, the Stand Your Ground bill and my, my Senate bill, and then he touched on even Sarah Taylor's Senate bill, and, and was very nasty in his testimony. Okay? Here we have a bill that is Jared, Jared's bill and my bill takes language from, has been passed in a dozen other states, okay? States like Oklahoma and Florida. And yet they want to say that this would make murder legal, okay? I mean, it was such shocking testimony. I felt, I was like, I was flabbergasted thinking that I must have gotten something wrong in the language. But when we, when we went to recent research, we found out, no, this is the exact same language they've got in other states. And so it's just, he was so over the top in his testimony at my hearing that it just set me back. And, um, and that is a guy that we, people like that who are so ardently against the Second Amendment, if they're going to be that much against the, the Second Amendment efforts in this state, then their constituents need to know that. His constituents, his district, and he has to run for office. They need to know that he is an enemy of the Second Amendment and their rights, and that he is someone that is that not only does he oppose it, but he goes out of his way, gets in front of a committee, and and uses a fast rhetoric that, that borders on lies to to oppose and to stop the advancement of their Second Amendment rights. Yep. And that somebody like that needs to be scouted. And I, what I mean, I don't mean literally. I mean, he needs to be politically scouted um, for, for what he did, and, and people need to be able to. Yep, I agree with you. Um, do you happen to know the name of that attorney that uh, testified that way? And was yeah. that on Bill 666 uh, back in February? Yeah, and I, I mean, I, don't, I, I believe it's Russ Oliver. Russ Oliver. Okay, gotcha. Hang on. We're talking All about right, southeastern Missouri. You want to confirm for me? I believe he's from Stoddard. Stoddard. He's okay, got you. Yeah, Stoddard Stoddard County yeah, okay. County yeah, we need to have a we need to have a private conversation about that, Eric. I can't talk about what I what I think I know on YouTube, uh, but I would very much like to talk to you about Russ. And so, <laughs> I mean, it's just so the thing is like I. So would I? I've been following that from the beginning. Trying to do your part and trying to help out. And he's in a situation where he's in total control as a bureaucrat, you know. And and what people have to remember is that uh, it, at the end of the day, he his job is to do his job as prosecuting attorney, and not we don't want to make it easy for him to take away Second Amendment rights. It should be hard for him to be able to, you know. At the end, at the end of the day, what happened to Mark McCloskey and his wife should never happen to anybody. If you have an angry mob of people, or you've got somebody like a thug breaking into your property, and or on your property or your lawn, and you don't even fire a weapon, you just simply display one, and suddenly a prosecuting attorney can drag your name through the political, through a judicial process, ruin you financially, and ruin you publicly. And, the, and we think that this is okay. That's what we're trying to stop with with this bill. And the fact that that you know what he his position is simple. We're making him do his job, and we're taking away his a little bit of his discretion and giving it to Lady Liberty, Lady Justice. Right. Okay? And if you can demonstrate that you, at the very beginning of the process, if you can demonstrate that you that this was done in self defense. Then it's over. Yep. If you can demonstrate that you <clears throat> acted, in, you know, appropriately in in self defense, then, then why should your why should your life be ruined at, at the discretion of a prosecuting attorney like Kim Gardner or like him? Yeah, and not even because, a shot fired. And uh, look what happened to right. to Mark and his wife. You know. Exactly. It, so, uh, but uh, sure. Latanya wants you to know that definitely she looked it up. It is Russ Oliver, and uh, we'll have a private conversation about that later, Eric. Hey, uh, does does Eric have? Hang on signal? one second, Eric. What's that, Caleb? Does he have signal? Um, I, that's I'm not going to ask on the live stream. Okay. 
Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Ask him uh, so, later, though. Yeah, Ask more him later. more stuff that'll be covered later. Um, but I think it's incumbent upon all of us to actually look at what legislation takes away freedom from the people and what legislation takes it from the people and starts heaping it up, you know, basically at the federal government, at the state government, or even at the county or city level. And a lot of people don't consider that. And the stand your ground enhancement actually gives freedom back to the people and to be literally innocent until proven guilty. And that's what a lot of people I think are missing. Yeah. And so what a what a foreign concept, I guess. So when it comes to, um, uh, you know, gun crime, uh, I don't want to even want to call it gun crime. That's not even the right term. When it comes to an incident with a gun, uh, you're automatically guilty until you can prove yourself innocent at this point. And even, you know, self-defense. And that's one thing that um, Plocker was very quick to point out. Uh, he was asking my friend. Um, Casey Rich, he was asking him, how many people do you know have been, um, you know, prosecuted for, for a crime they didn't commit? And the McCloskeys is really the only one that's come to mind. Uh, so I don't know that that happens a lot. But the fact of the matter is it did happen to the McCloskeys and their names were dragged through the mud. You know, uh, something else. It shouldn't matter anyways. Yeah. It shouldn't even be a question. Yeah, it shouldn't even be a question. KC says KC is on the discord side. Um, so it shouldn't even be a question. You know, basically, there was so much video with the McCloskey's yet. They still decided to or they I say they Kim Gardner decided that she was going to take matters into her own hands and use a loophole basically to make them prove the f they were innocent of what they did, which was nothing more than brandish firearms when people came on their private property and destroyed their gate to gain access to their private property. It's all on video, yet she proceeded anyway. So the stand your ground enhancement yeah. would, would protect people like the McCloskeys, you know, from having to go through that, that madness. And so, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah and and it, for, me, for, for me, uh, and I, I wouldn't want anybody, I wouldn't wish anybody to go through what I did in that committee testimony hearing. For two hours, we called a racist and for a bigot. I would call anti semite everything you can name in the book simply because I want to protect people's Second Amendment rights. But for two hours to just go through that and not have a single member of my Republican Party come to my defense on that committee. Or, you know, it just was, it was, that, that should tell you what it's like right there, what's going on in the Senate. Is that if you want to stand up for these things, you're going to be all out on your own for the most part. Yep. Hang on one second, Eric. KC has a question for you. Go ahead, KC. Well, it's not a question. It's just that that hearing that you had that they, uh, you know, basically verbally assaulted you under. I was wanting to go to that hearing, but they post those with so little time for somebody like me. It's mm -hmm. halfway across the state. It's like by the time I got wind of it, it was already open. It already happened. Okay. You know, that's, that's what sucks about these things. Cause these, you know, the prosecutors and all those people, it's their job to keep track of that. And they can get people there to testify and stuff for people like us, man, you know, we're picking it up at the last second and somehow we got to drop everything we do and drive yep. over to Jeff city. It makes it really tough. Like I said, I missed that one. Yep. And, what know, Casey was saying is basically, uh, it was a comment. He wanted to go to that hearing, but there was so little notice that they were doing that hearing, uh, that he literally couldn't make it there. And he was hoping that, you know, maybe something can be done in the future to give a little more heads up. Even two or three days notice would be nice. Well, they gave the opposition plenty of heads up. And I, yeah. I believe that that was done on purpose. Yep. Uh, I believe Plus, the, the opposition has the organization and everything. They'll get people there. Yeah, and the, oppo the opposition has organization and they get people there. And uh, so you didn't have time, for instance, to get your supporters of the bill time for that. Um, so they didn't know when it was going to happen. Same thing happened when uh, KC went to um, Jefferson City last Wednesday. And, and so it you know, basically went to a hearing. Uh, it was 24 hours notice. I didn't have enough time to get up there. 
so you know I couldn't go but yeah so the short notice uh, does hurt but you're right I think the opposition gets a lot more heads up notice I mean, in that case, I, I believe they did. Yep. Yep, and I'll tell you what, I'll, I'm going to let you go here because we got to get back to the House floor, but I want to thank okay, you I'll so just, much yeah, for... Yeah, I appreciate it, and I'm, going, I'm driving through an a, a area that's bad reception, so it's perfect. Okay, gotcha. I just want to say thank you very much for okay. calling and, and agreeing to be part of the show. And if you think of it, an evening this week, give me a call. I have some information I'd like to share with you. Okay. Thank yeah, you thanks for sure. coming on here, man. Good day. All right, you too. Thank you, sir. Bye. Yep. Okay, guys, that was uh, yeah, Senator that was Eric Burleson who came uh, in to, uh, uh, to weigh in with us today. That was kind of nice. Yeah, it was. It was nice having him on. Yep. Yeah, I see how easy that was, other politicians? Come on. Come on, Dean. Yep. So Eric Burleson won all other uh, politicians in Jeff City zero. That's right. Eric Burleson got a one. Zero for everyone else. Okay. Has anyone been following the House floor? Yeah, we were we were on sixteen ninety six. Okay, gotcha. So they nothing... might have moved on to another one. Let's check. Okay, I've turned the audio back on from the House floor. Gentleman from Jackson. <laughs> Introduction of special guest, Mr. Speaker. Proceed, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Up in the gallery to your right and to my left is the ghost of Johnny Cash. It's like a boat, it? Today on the floor, we have many people who are honoring the legend of Johnny Cash oh my God. by wearing all black today. Now, okay, I'm just muting because they're doing something. They're honoring Johnny Cash right now by wearing black. <laughs> um, so, dear God in heaven. Uh, look who's behind the speaker, to, or the guy speaking right now. That's the man in question, Dean Plocker. So, guys, remember, Dean Plocker wants to hear from you. His number is 314-308-9733. You can text him at that number, too, or you can email him at dean.plocker at house.mo.gov. And I hope to God he is watching our show live on that laptop right in front of him. Dean Plocker, please give us a call. Please chime in on YouTube, Dean. He's smiling. Look at him. Gosh darn it. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad, gang. That's pretty bad. So we're taking time out in the Missouri House right now to honor Johnny Cash by wearing black. Oh, dear God. How dare they drag Johnny Cash into this? Now I, oh, there's Dean Plocker. There we go. Uh, so they need to go to Folsom prison. Yep. He's looking at his phone. He's looking at his phone. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. How dare you drag Johnny Cash? He's going to get all kinds of phone calls now. Even Johnny Cash is going to be turning over his grave going, gosh, darn it. They got more important things to do. Johnny Cash would be writing a very bad song about Plocker right now. If he knew this was Okay, I'll turn the audio back on. We'll see if they're on to something else. Discussion on House Bill 1629. Lady from St. Louis City. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to briefly speak on a bill. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We spent a lot of hours. I know a lot of amendments got added to this bill. I just want to point out that Juneteenth um, was added to this, making it an official state holiday, um, whereas in statute you might see the Emancipation Day, but it is not one of the holidays that are paid off. Um, so this will allow people when they do Juneteenth. Okay, so the state's looking for another paid off holiday. Well, we're waiting for 2009 and 2118, the two most popular bills of the year. Look at what they're doing, gang. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I renew my motion. The gentleman from Souders moved for the third reading passage House Bill 1629. All those in favor vote yes. All those opposed vote no. Mr. Clerk, please ring the bell and open Hey, I noticed Viscovo is up there and Taylor's stepped down. Yep. Well, I wonder if he's getting ready for a bill. I don't know. One can hope, huh? One can hope, huh? Yep. Well, he said 1619. So uh, yeah, basically, they're drawing. It was that on the formal or informal calendar, Casey? Can you look that up for me, real let's, quick? Let's go check it out. Thank you. What was that number again? Sixteen nineteen is the number he yelled out. 
And for those of you watching in YouTube land, on your screen you have Dean Plocker's cell phone number. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know what you think about uh, basically uh, uh, 2118, Stand Your Ground Enhancement, and also 2009 the uh you know basically parents rights uh for kids vaccinations it's basically okay go ahead i'm sorry he, he pulled this off the informal calendar okay it's uh, house bills for perfection informal 1619. okay so he's still pulling from the informal holding back 1992 and 2118 mm -hmm. he is yep. literally stalling gang guys uh i hate to say this but he keeps doing this all week um it's gonna make it tough Real tough. He knows what he's doing. Um, he definitely doesn't want these on the floor. Dean Juneteenth. I have the audio turned back on from the house, but it's muted right now in the house. Call Dean Plocker, 314-308-9733. You can also text him at that number. You can also email Dean at dean.plocker at house.mo.gov. Let him know what you think about... Uh, uh, the bills that he is stalling and not allowing on the House floor, the most popular bills of the year in the state of Missouri, receiving the most phone calls, emails, and visits to Jefferson City in support of these bills. Yet Dean Plocker is smarter than you and I and is protecting us, apparently, from our own bad decisions, apparently. Uh, we're just speculating now. Blocker the blocker. Ah. Any more activity, um, you know, for from the uh, signal group at all, Caleb? Uh, nothing too crazy. Okay. I'm just checking in real quick. It's going on to it. It's going on to people talking about AKs now. So. Okay. Yep. So that would be Alaska <laughs> to everyone who who has everyone voted. <laughs> okay, the audio is coming back on. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote. By your vote of 111, yes, 24, no. You have third read and passed House Bill 1629. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on the same order of business, House Committee substitute House Bill 1704 will move to the informal calendar. I now ask that you recognize gentleman from Montgomery on a motion for House Bill 2566. Gentleman from Montgomery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that House Bill 2566 be third read and passed. The gentleman from Montgomery is moved for the third reading passage of House Bill 2566. Gentleman from Montgomery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This legislation is based on Travel Insurance Model Act adopted by the National Council of Insurance Legislators and the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. This legislation builds upon Missouri's limited lines of travel insurance producer licensing statute. Basically, it's to provide uniformity and appropriate scope and read to, to the statutory and regulatory framework of the na nation's travel insurance laws. So basically, we're going to be on the same par as all the other states that has adopted this measure. At this time, I would entertain any questions. Discussion on House Bill 2566. Gentleman from Clay. To speak on the bill, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this bill came through insurance policy several weeks ago. I believe it was voted out unanimously. Uh, both caucuses supported the bill. As the gentleman says, it's very um, super exciting insurance policy stuff. Uh, I encourage the body support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Super exciting For the discussion, gentleman from St. Charles County. To speak briefly on the bill. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, this, obviously this bill came through insurance. Uh, we had a, a hearing on it. It's uh, quality bill it's uh, simply just trying to bring a little more transparency on this particular area with trans uh, travel insurance and I completely support this bill thank you further discussion seeing none gentlemen from Montgomery you're recognized close thank you mr. speaker I close the gentleman from Montgomery is moved for the third reading of passage of house bill 2566 all those in favor vote yes all those of those vote no mr. clerk please ring the bell and open the board yeah keep in mind gang as you're watching this that the Speaker of the House has no control over what bills are heard. That's the floor leader. That's Dean Plocker. So, um, you know, not everyone in the House is evil. Everyone I'm sorry, uh, apparently evil. Uh, we're speculating here. Um, but uh, you see Rob Vescovo out there, you know, actually at the podium, and he can only uh, bring up the bills that uh, the floor leader is giving him from the backside of the House. And Dean Plocker is that man, the floor leader, and he is not allowing the two most popular bills 
to uh, go on the floor for debate. He's simply not allowing it. So give him a call, 314-308-9733, or you can email him at dean.plocker at house.mo.gov. It's on your screen. Give him a call and let him know what you think should be Mr. his Clark, priority. Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally please, the vote. By your vote of 132 yes, zero no. You have third round pass House Bill 2566. His, uh, Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The body will now move to House Bills for Perfection Informal, and I ask that you recognize the gentleman to, from Livingston on a motion for House Bill 2493. I'm saying the number we got for Plocker on his phone. I'm gentleman from still got it with him or if uh, he ditched it. Yeah, he may have ditched it. Uh, I don't, it, don't see him with his phone. But I do see House, it's not like a rule. I see House members with their phones all the time on these video feeds. So he's just put it away for right now. I wonder why. Yep. Yep. So, guys, it's I've, I've muted the audio from the house. All of you watching on YouTube, you're seeing this in real time. He is not going from the formal calendar. He keeps picking things from the informal calendar, running out the clock on the two most popular bills, actually three most popular bills in uh, Missouri. That's exactly the strategy that's being used right now. And everybody knows it. You know, you heard, uh, you know, the senator speaking earlier. He knows it. I mean, everybody knows it. But no one can control Dean Plocker. That's the problem. And they can't take him out. They can't, you know, replace him with someone else. You know, so it's, like I said, this is a rules, house rules problem that needs to be dealt with. But remember now, you can reach out to Dean Plocker as a constituent and let him know what his priority should be. His number is 314-308-9733. You can also text him at that number. You can also email Dean at dean.plocker at house.mo.gov. Let's see. Let's go back to the chat here. Uh, Charles Uplifted said, uh, there is a cognitive and growing distance between the people who believe they run the nation and those who make the nation run, workers. When that happens, you're in effect creating radicalism. <clears throat> you know, workers unite. I know, baby. I wish politics understood this for once. So Latanya says, uh, when they say transparency, they mean no transparency. That's correct. We learned that one from uh, Washington politics, actually. The more uh, someone runs on being transparent, the least transparent their administration will be. Okay, let's go back to the House real quick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak in support of the bill. Proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great bill. I really congratulate the gentleman from Livingston County for all of his work on Career Ladder. And most importantly, the reason why we need to get this done is that it's good for the students in our state. It provides students more one-on-one -on -one time with educators outside of the school day. And it really provides an extra incentive for the so many tasks that teachers do, quite frankly, outside of the school day right now, and they're simply uncompensated for many of those tasks. Also, I'd like to congratulate the members of the Budget Committee for funding this um, and uh, listening to the Senate today. It looks like it's moving through there as well. So we will not only get this passed, hopefully, in statute this year, but we will also see this funded. So I urge the body to vote yes. Thank you. Further discussion. Lady from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak on the bill. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To uh, echo my colleague, the lady from Clay, uh, this is a good bill for children. It's also a good bill for school districts in terms of teacher recruitment and retention. Um, it means that oh boy. teachers More money. won't need to run off after the end of the school day to go to their second or third job in order to get the supplemental income uh, that they need to get those extra things for their families. Uh, and good for school districts because they will be able to keep their teachers there in the building. Uh, really applaud all of the work that went into this and uh, hope that the body wholeheartedly supports it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion. Gentleman from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To quickly inquire the bill sponsors. Gentleman from Livingston, do you yield? Yes, I do, sir. Proceed. Good afternoon, sir. I noticed the original intent of the bill was teacher career 
plans, the teacher ladder bill. I, that was your original bill and your original intent, was it not? Yes, sir. Okay, and then we took it to public school finances, and I was just curious, kind of a quick question of why we went from teacher career ladder to finances. Was that to open the bill up? Was that? That, that, is, that would be correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, but the original intent was teacher career plans. That would be, that would be true, and it also included school finance and the fact that we changed the percentage in which the state supports the program versus the local education okay. authority. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, gentleman from Livingston, you are recognized close. I close. The gentleman from Livingston is moved for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2493. All those in favor vote yes. All those who vote no, Mr. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board. Okay, so yeah, they've silenced or muted over there for right now. Guys, don't forget, uh, email and call your representatives to put pressure on Plocker as well. <laughs> oh, God. Has everyone voted? Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote. By your vote of 135 yes, three no, you have third read and pass House Bill 2493. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on that same order of business, I ask the recognized lady from Buchanan on a motion for House Bill 2365. Lady from Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask that House Bill 2365 be third read and passed. The lady from Buchanan is moved for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2365. Lady from Buchanan. Yes, you Hello, Mr. thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this bill allows us to take the quality assurance um, program, take it off of its um, pilot and its sunset, and um, put it there um, forever. So thank you very much. Discussion. I sure Lady don't. from Clay. I put out feelers in my. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great there. bill. Vote for it. Thank you. Passed away last year. Further discussion. That's it. Seeing That's none, lady from Buchanan, you are recognized close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I close. The lady from Buchanan is moved for the third reading of passage House Bill 2365. All those in favor vote yes. All those opposed vote no. Mr. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board. Well, that was convincing. We used to. We used to. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, we just don't have anyone, like I said, that close. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Have you guys hooked up with Jody Grace yet? Has everyone voted? Mr. Clark, please close the board and tally the vote by your vote of 136 yes, zero no. You have third read and pass House Bill 2365. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Staying on that same order of business, I ask you to recognize gentleman from Green on a motion for House Bill 2571. Gentleman from Green. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that House Bill 2571 be third read and pass. The, the gentleman from Green's move for the third reading and passage of House Bill 2571. Gentleman from Green. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is the bill that I sponsored for the Missouri Division of Finance. Uh, it does primarily three things. One, it uh, authorizes them to issue and publish industry guidance. Second of all, uh, there is a slight increase uh, in fees to the non-bank lenders. A and third, there's some errors and clarifications in the statutes that we kind of cleaned up. Now, what we did, though, during, as you recall last week, uh, as, as we went through the perfection process, <laughs> Uh, we made five changes, uh, five amendments, and, and one amendment to the amendment. And I'll just real quickly go over those to refresh your memory. Uh, the first one, of course, was the titling amendment. Our idea was to expand this bill so that some of the other good measures that came out of our committee uh, of financial institutions could get onto this bill. The, the second one was from the lady from Bates. 
uh, hers was House Bill 1472, and it is related to money laundering and efforts to try and crack down on human trafficking. Uh, the Third Amendment uh, was the uh, Missouri Workplace Retirement Savings Plan that the gentleman from the 95th, uh, it was his bill, which was uh, 1732, uh, which would allow for small employers to put their employees into a 401k program uh, that would be uh, administered by the, uh, the state treasurer. The Fourth Amendment was House Bill 2127 just, just from the gentleman from Lafayette uh, on man. the snatch and grabs on ATMs, which is a problem not only for banks but for other retailers like convenience stores and gas stations. Uh, the fifth one uh, was uh, the, uh, uh, the gentleman from Perry. Uh, it was 2706, and this was creating the uh, commercial finance disclosure law uh, this was to take a certain type of, of lending and put it under uh, certain guidelines as far as disclosures and to establish penalties if any of these lenders chose not to use these disclosures. And then finally, we had an amendment to that amendment uh, for the gentleman from the 87th uh, to exempt uh, Missouri education savings plans, that's the 529 plans, from entering bankruptcy if the parents should for any reason uh, uh, run across uh, some, some challenging times and go into bankruptcy, it would be determined that the 529 plan belonged to the child and would stay out of the bankruptcy. With that, Mr. Speaker, I'll, I'll uh, respond to any questions if there are any. Discussion, lady from Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to inquire from the gentleman from Green. Gentleman from Green, do you yield? No, not really. Further discussion. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak on the bill. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was very tempted to inquire of the gentleman and have him go through this line by line, but he did a pretty good job of it himself. Um, we worked diligently on these bills moving through financial institutions, and I asked the body for their support. Oh. Thank you. Further discussion. Seeing none, gentleman from Green, you are recognized close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I close. The gentleman from Greens moves the third reading of passage of House Bill 2571. All those in favor vote yes. All those those vote no. Ms. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board. I wonder why he cut that one lady off. You're going to speak against the bill? <laughs> that right there would be a no vote, or I'm concerned. I just texted, I said, enough of the informals. Let's get 2118 on the floor now. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Okay, gang, sorry about that. I'm back. I took a phone call. Yeah. Okay, anything exciting happening? I uh, just voting on another informal. Of course. Calendar so, bill. Okay, so once that's done, they'll bring up another bill. Yeah. It was, that, was, that was rather comedic. Um, Has everyone voted? <laughs> Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tally the vote by your vote of 126 yes and 9 no. You have third read and pass House Bill 2571. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, staying on that same order of business, I ask that you recognize the gentleman from Jackson on a motion for two seconds here. Motion for House Bill 2325. Gentleman from Jackson. Thank that you, Mr. Speaker. Like I move that House move. Bill 2325 yep. be third read and passed. The gentleman from Jackson is moved for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2325. Gentleman from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is the Workforce Diploma Bill. This would allow vendors to come to the state and provide opportunities for people that do not have high school degrees to go out and get a workforce diploma, which would be a high school degree equivalent. 
We did uh, add a couple amendments during perfection. The gentleman from Newton's amendment with extended learning opportunities had some cleanup language for previous uh, adult high schools. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I would uh, renew my motion. Discussion, lady from St. Louis County. Speak on the bill, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Thank you. This is a great bill. This helps some folks who may not have graduated from college, didn't have an opportunity to return to do a GED. Um, the oh, dear God. I just muted the house. Yep. He's just pulling all kinds of stuff off the informal now so that they don't, because they have to go in order, gang, on the formal calendar. And uh, that means uh, 1992 and 2118. Uh, we would have heard those last week. If they were, if he wouldn't uh, keep pulling stuff off the informal calendar. So this is a deliberate move on the part of Plocker to, uh, you know, actually stall. And he doesn't have to do it for too much longer, you know, because, like I said, we're running out of time to get stuff done in the House so we can get it through the process in the Senate. Oh, God. I want to thank everybody who is uh, participating in this process and actually calling up and leaving emails and, uh, you know, trying to, to get the good work done. <clears throat> Let's see, HB 1613 is on the informal calendar, says Warrior Class. That's correct. It is. God. All right, let's see what they're up to now from Jackson's move for the third reading of passage of House Bill 2325. All those in favor vote yes. All those who vote no, Ms. Clerk, please ring the bell and open the board. Okay, so they're on a different bill right now. Susie Bosch says, ridiculous agenda today. Actually, from Plocker's point of view, it's great. It's a great agenda today. More stalling, more obfuscation. Stonewalling. Stonewalling, yep. Has everyone voted? Uh. Hey, if I put exclamation Clark, points please close the board and tie the vote. by your vote of 130. When I'm texting him, is that being mean? <laughs> no, I don't think that's being mean. <laughs> Telling him he looks like a turtle or, you know, uh, what is it? He looks like a fish or? Pinocchio. Pinocchio, that's it. That would be mean. Remember now, he's a very sensitive man. His feelings get hurt very easily. Yeah. It does kind of look like a soft-shelled turtle. A yeah, soft-shelled turtle, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if him and what's-his-name are related. Yep. Oh, God. Uh, what's, Mitch McConnell? Yeah. Mitch McConnell. Third I'm going I'm I'm to text him and ask him. Turtle Club? I'm going to text him and ask him if he's related to Mitch McConnell. The Amish community near Jamesport plans to call on Plocker. Thank you, Charles Uplifted. That personally. Don't oh. carpool. Oh, guys, my feed's there. been cut off. Oh, hang on, it's reconnected now. Uh, it was the feed to OBS to YouTube. Sorry, oh, sorry about that hiccup, gang. I don't know. It suddenly disconnected and then it reconnected. I checked my internet. My well, I still heard you guys on Discord. So it was just on the YouTube side. Okay. Yeah, it's time for me to text Blocker as well. Huh. Ah, big brother. Okay. Seven three three Representative Plocker. Oh, it's misspelling his name and it's doing it in a way that's going to hurt his feelings. Ah, uh, no, too late. I already took care of that. 
<laughs> okay. You didn't correct your auto. <clears throat> I'm doing speech to text. I asked him if he's related to Mitch McConnell. They both look like soft shell turtles. You seriously <laughs> texted him that? Yes. Holy crap. Come on. We're t his, he's a sensitive man. He's a sensitive man. Hey, I'm getting a little sensitive myself. I want my bill on the floor. I was curious if you were going to put HB 2009 and HB 2118 and HB 1992 on the agenda sometime soon, period. Normally I wouldn't ask, but I happen to know for a fact they are the three most popular bills this year in the state of Missouri. And yet they don't see any real floor time, period. Can you tell me why you're not giving these bills that the people of Missouri want any time on the House floor? Question mark. See, Casey, that right there, that's a text message. I, I didn't hear it. Oh, Read it out to us. It's okay. It's Representative Plocker. I was curious if you were going to put HB 2009 HB 2118 and HB 1992 on the agenda sometime soon. Normally I wouldn't ask, but I happen to know for a fact they are the th uh, three most popular bills this year in the state of Missouri, and yet they don't see any real floor time. Can you tell me why you're not giving these bills that the people of Missouri want any time on the House floor? Because him and Mitch McConnell look like soft-shelled turtles. Well, it, it, I'm thinking about sending a follow-up text if I don't hear back from them. I mean, I already sent that one to him a hundred times. Oh. I've been saying, could you please put 2118 on the floor? I've been yeah. texting him just nonstop. Yeah, gotcha. Like I said, that phone's probably in a trash can by now. Yep. Or recycling. <laughs> okay, I'll turn the audio back on in the house and see if we got anything new. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak against the bill. Oh, if Charles, Proceed. if uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. you happen to be listening I, uh, right now, uh, uh, look up whatever, uh, hey, uh, actually, Patrick, what would be what would be some good other numbers for them to call over there in the from the Amish community? Uh, good other numbers. How about his main office number? Other than other uh, than just the uh, the just uh, Plocker's number, but anyone around there that might be good. To oh yeah, up. hang on, I'll give you that. Give me just a moment here, and I can get that for you. Yeah, okay. just uh, if you can post those numbers or if you you know any or you know tell them which ones and because he can look them up and uh uh just give over the numbers because they won't use a computer but they have like a couple of people that will use a phone so okay and they I'll... could represent themselves on behalf of the amish community in that area gotcha okay well i'll tell you what that i can could, that, could, that could make a good angle there it's yep. like we even have the amish coming after you now i'll give you his direct neighbors and the first one is Alan That's Andrews. That's pretty bad when you make the Amish mad. <laughs> yeah, when you're making the Amish mad, you've definitely done something wrong. Yeah. They have a wicked sense of humor there, too, Plocker. If you're watching, they, they cow tip. So be careful where you walk, man. Okay, first phone number is Alan Andrews. And that number is, oh, hang on. Do you want me to put it in the YouTube chat? Yeah. If you okay. could, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me, Alan Andrews, let me type that out. Alan Andrews, and he's 573-751. Okay, Charles Uplifted, if you're listening to us, brother, uh, the first one is a next-door neighbor of uh, Dean Plocker. That's Alan Andrews, and his number I just put into the YouTube chat. And the second one is Kel Kelly Hanna. Very interesting. She's the assistant floor leader. She happens to be next door to him. So type that in, Hanna. Yeah, I think they share the okay. same office, don't they? I think they might. Floor leader and assistant floor leader? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. So I thought I'd see her name in there, too, when I went up to his office last week. Okay. Those are uh, the phone numbers to his next door neighbors uh, for uh, Charles Uplifted.
Okay. Look out. One Amish attack. Uh-huh. <laughs> impossible for teachers, and if okay, they have the 29 different opinions, it will be impossible. But I would like to b- remind the body, when we, we pass here. bills like this, it is a double-edged sword. We should be careful of what we vote on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion, gentleman from Pike. Pike or Pope? Pope, my apologies, That's gentlemen. Fine. To speak on the bill, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Uh, the gentleman from Newton has created a, a wonderful document that, uh, and the, uh, the, the defense of it was eloquent and I have to uh, give a resounding amen to the sentiments that he has expressed and I uh, greatly uh, um, appreciate and support his intentions. Uh, words, however, uh, Mr. Speaker, do have consequences and we are in the words business. And uh, as we, what we have done in this bill and we probably should have been a little more attentive at the time of perfection, and I profusely apologize for not being, Uh, but there are items in this bill that that will, are completely disruptive, and while we support vigorously the intentions that that the sponsor has, eloquently put forth and put into this bill, uh, we do need to pay attention to the words. Uh, The lady from uh, St. Louis County actually uh, brought forth some of these, uh, a couple of these items that are going to be extremely uh, problematic if um, if enacted. Uh, It has to do with the uh, 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 getting written permission to participate from a parent to participate in, in every uh, activity uh, on its face. Perhaps it sounds appealing. I certainly uh, uh, appreciate and understand and support that. But when you uh, talk about the practical application of every time a, uh, a class uh, wants to participate in a particular activity to expect every student uh, to receive the uh, the permission slip and the permission slip to get to the parent and the parent to sign it and the parent to give to the kid and the kid to get back to the Do you recognize that pin, so Caleb? He has can, on his lapel. Uh, Latonia is asking. In the day of participation I can't zoom comes, in on it. The, uh, I'll try. The, uh, uh, the student uh, happens to have, uh, uh, the dog He's happened got, oh. to have uh, eaten the, the homework and uh, uh, so there the student is left left out. Um, there's on, there's okay. some uh, there's some uh, there there's got to be there has uh, to be more American flexibility in in this flag. process. That American is, and Ukrainian uh, is flag. How about the other in, one? In that uh, uh, sure in that particular the provision, uh, the other provision, uh, and the lady from St. Louis kind of alluded to this was the was the general statement, which we so is a narrative guy uh, again that the the spirit of which the uh, uh, the gentleman from Newton so eloquently uh, uh, elucidated, uh, we support completely. Uh, we've seen the uh, uh, we've seen the uh, fallout from uh, parents not understanding what is going on in schools and and the trouble and the uh, and the and the problems that 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 has uh, arisen from that. And and we want to address that. We want. Uh, to do everything we can to to make sure that uh, that the parents are reengaged and and they do participate. And oh my they, God! And, and they Every have a time voice the parents in, in the, actually uh, in the try process. to engage in schools, uh, the school boards are calling the FBI. Uh, so yeah, parents are a little frightened to engage the schools now because the school boards call the FBI and say they're threats. Affirm that the protected right of parents to direct the education of their minor mm-hmm. child. It, it, to, to me, those words are, are critically important. They're critically important. 
we, we should have done a better job of, of finding words that, that open the door for more parent participation, where they know what's going on in the school, and they have a voice that, that is, that is oh, heard is the, and is recognized the, um, and, and has weight. The, par the Parents' Bill of Rights bill? I don't know. I, I didn't hear the bill number. If, oh, shit. I think this is. Transparency in public education. Oh, just oh, more transparency. That is functional. I've got and, the audio back that, on from uh, the house feedback. Uh, that is not hamstrung by uh, over uh, by overkill and overzealous uh, um, regulations. And I am deeply afraid that this is uh, that this line recognized and affirmed the protect, protected right of parents to direct the education of their minor child. I believe that that uh, that could have would have and should have uh, been more closely, uh, more closely examined uh, to, uh, to open the door for parent participation without hamstringing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the work, work in the classroom. So with, uh, with enormous, well, first of all, with enormous uh, uh, support for the, uh, uh, the work that the, uh, that the sponsor had done, the spirit that he has, uh, that, uh, that is contained in this bill, I, I shout hallelujah for, uh, for, for stepping forward. But we're, uh, once again, we are in the words business, and words matter, and words have power, and these words are, are go beyond what, what should have been uh, intended in this bill. And so uh, with um, uh, extreme reluctance, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to oppose this bill, uh, hoping that uh, there's a uh, there is a uh, this is the a possibility in the process this as, as this goes through the process that we can uh, contain that we can continue the spirit of the bill and be be more cautious and careful about some of the uh, some of the uh, details contained within. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion, lady from St. Louis City. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to briefly speak on the bill. Proceed. Um, Mr. Speaker, the gentleman said a phrase, indoctrinate our students, teaching them what or how to think and not what someone wants them to think. The bill reads transparency, but most of the language that we're passing, just like the lady just said from St. Louis County, is not even happening in Missouri in our schools. So while we're here advocating for revision, advocating for revisionist history, while we are advocating for our students, our scholars, our future to not have the necessary uh, tools in order to potentially so be elected officials, out, saying that, oh, well, to potentially be presidents. This is, a, this is an anti-CRT bill. Correct. It sounds like it. And that might be Bishop Davison's. Yeah. Uh, uh, so hello to American Man, a California high de desert preacher. Welcome. We've been going a long time today. So we've already been live for four hours. And uh, the number on your screen, Dean Plocker, can be texted or called. And uh, so at any rate, uh, yeah, that's the guy we're asking to actually do the bidding of the people as, as opposed to the bidding of the corporations. We're speculating that he is doing the bidding of the corporations. Hey, if this gets out of the House today, um, we need to watch this one in the Senate and try to make sure it gets through. Because yeah, absolutely. It, we'll, make, we'll make sure the wording in it is right. Mm-hmm. But this is a parent's bill of rights bill. Okay. This is taken for third reading. Um, it's Ben Baker. Okay, Ben Baker's bill. Okay, I, I know what it is now. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Warrior Class has sent four texts to Plocker the Blocker. Thank you very much, Warrior Class. Yeah, I just checked my phone, and I have not heard anything back from Plocker the Blocker yet, which doesn't surprise me because he doesn't respond to my emails or my phone calls either. But it's good to know. I was taking it personally, and it wasn't until you guys, you know, actually started calling him and texting him and everything and not getting anything back from him, I realized that 
it's not just me. Yeah. Revision history means rewriting history. Yeah, that's correct. My God, what is this, a filibuster? I don't know. And apparently she's well, pretty I... upset, though. Yeah, she's she's claiming that CRT and all that isn't taught in schools. It may not be formally taught, but it winds up being taught mm -hmm. because they do it. They split it up in different chunks in schools. Now you start getting to Kansas City, St. Louis, things like that. Yeah, they teach it directly. It's it's implemented. It's implemented in various ways. Yep. <laughs> Whether it be subliminal or See, she's starting it already. Sorry to talk about. Slavery, and I guess, could be, you know. Yeah, and I don't want meanwhile, wanna... meanwhile, in modern day, if you have to defend yourself, you're guilty until proven innocent. Okay, Amish called, no answer. Build up voicemail, block or sell. They don't know how to text, LOL. Okay, gotcha. Well, as, hey, as long as they're filling up voicemails, you know, uh, that's good. That works. I'm about ready to, to call Ashley, uh, Jared Taylor's LA, and ask her to uh, walk over to Plocker's office and ask them to uh, drain the voicemail so we can fill it up again. With the Amish. <laughs> yeah, with the Amish. <laughs> yeah, Charles, we're going to see if we can get somebody to go over there and drain that voicemail and, you know, whatnot. Take okay. the notes down and get somebody. I'll put the uh, the feedback on. I'm going to call Ashley really quick. Of history, you have the opportunity right now to do what your ancestors couldn't do and be on the right side. I by just voting on this Man, I, I heard, heard even the people. Amish are calling you now. Further discussion, lady from St. Louis County. <laughs> you messed up, man. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To speak you take off the Amish. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, I have one major. I was going to be hearing from an Amish My major paradise. concern with it is one of the amendments that, I'll be right uh, long back story with you guys. short, would allow for the general public to put things Let's on the King school board's agenda. By whatever Old process, so Mr. Speaker, up. that is a statutory uh, subdistrict, and like this body, people who are not a part or an elected part of this body cannot make our house rules. They cannot come and say, I'm going to get all these people to sign a petition or I'm going to sue the Speaker of the House because he's not referring my representative's bills to committee or they're not discussing the bill I want them to discuss on the floor or they didn't vote my bill or what have you. This bill allows parents or people in, in the school district to actually sue the school district if they don't get their way. Mr. Speaker, we elect these people. We elect these people, and for any sub-district in this state that can raise and lower taxes, their primary duty is to be a steward of our tax oh. dollars. Not to talk this? about whatever whomever wants to speak about for three minutes, belaboring whatever point. They are there to do the business of the school district. That does not mean the parents' voices are not being heard. Similarly, we can make that same argument about this body. Just because you know their bill of choice may not be referred to a committee or get on the floor, they don't get to sue us. They don't get to sue the legislature for that. And I just want people to keep that in mind, whereas I understand what's trying to be achieved with the particular amendment that got on this bill. Um, I just want those of us who are elected to do a job to consider what that would be like if the person that this body elected as the speaker of this body, who sets pretty much the agenda and what bills we're going to focus on for that particular session. That needs to be changed too. We need to If be able someone to or anyone from around the state <laughs> were able to get signatures or to petition and sue us as a body because we're not doing exactly what they want us to do, when they want us to do it, how they want us to do it. That is what elections are for, Mr. Speaker. Um, and so this is in part why I would urge the body to vote against this bill. Thank you. Further discussion, gentleman from St. Louis City. To speak on the bill. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I missed the debate on this bill in perfection, uh, unfortunately, but listened to the entire thing. And uh, 
was, was very proud of a lot of the folks that stood up and uh, opposed this bill and a variety of the, the debates that happened within this bill. But I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm really disappointed that this bill's still moving. I, I thought those points in opposition were incredibly compelling and well thought out. Maybe, just maybe, folks would think twice about moving this bill forward. But here we are. This is not a good bill. Now, a lot of it maybe oh, doesn't have a lot of meaning. It either prohibits things that are already illegal, that aren't happen or that just aren't happening in this state, or it grants rights that already exist. There's a lot of that in here. But there is stuff that will have an impact. And that impact oh, is almost over and over again in here to make the lives harder of the people that run our schools. The teachers, the administrators, the school boards, people whose lives are already extremely difficult, whose jobs are hard, they've been even harder the last couple of years, and this bill will make their jobs harder. This bill also has a number of things that would create a lot of litigation and costs, potentially, for our schools. Costs to draw money from our schools. Now, I, I would like to think, I, I appreciate the gentleman from Polk pointing out uh, uh, some specific problems that were discussed. I know the lady from St. Louis County did a great job of pointing this out. Like the litigation from uh, parents being able to, quote, direct their kids' education. Now, the bill sponsor responded and sort of suggested that, well, the intent was that they have the right to object and voice their concerns and that they should be involved in the process. We, we all agree with that. That's not what the bill says. Now, I would love to think that's an accident or a misunderstanding, but the reality is that and all of this in this bill was drafted the way it was drafted for a reason, and frankly, by national folks. By national folks with an objective, with an agenda. And that agenda is to weaken our public schools. That agenda is to weaken our public schools, to defund our public schools, and move us further and further toward a world of privatized education. Because oh, for some again. libertarian folks out there, they see education as one of the highest oh, things we yeah, spend money on as government. And they don't like that. Is pretty good they want to get rid of taxes. Yeah. They Do you guys remember when this ginger was going against SEPA? Oh, yeah. Yep, big yeah, time. He had, he had no solid uh, arguments. Nope, nope. He was the one saying that's defunding the police departments with the, uh, the actual enforcement mechanism of SEPA was defunding the police. He was worried about the police being defunded. Ironically enough, it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This because guy's there a is an agenda clerk. for this right now. Um, and when we so see bills the that... one that was up there speaking uh -huh. was um, basically complaining about how that bill makes it to where if they don't allow parents, you know, to get involved in the district or they start teaching CRT, then it allows you to sue the district. Mm -hmm. And then was, was basically saying, well, how would you feel... If uh, if if people were able to sue the legislature for not letting the bills that get on the bills get on the floor that they want to get on the floor, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like I'm good with that. <laughs> hey guys, I'm just like to sue blogger. Uh, I just I've muted the house right now, so I thought I'd let you know. Ashley's running over to Plocker's office to ask them to uh, clear out the voicemail so we can fill it up again. So yeah, she's actually going over there right now. And uh, but, so, <laughs> bring on the work. Amish. Yeah, the, the the Amish need to be able to leave messages. Holy crap! You know they can't can't text yes. us. So we need his. Uh, uh, Charles Uplifted said ninety percent of libertarian believe in private education. I would argue that number is a little higher than that. I would argue ninety nine point nine. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um. Okay, I can't remember his name. I need his number. Okay, you talk about the, the guy that's speaking, the red-haired guy. He's a representative. Gosh, Peter, Peter Meredith. Peter, Peter Meredith. Meredith. Uh, so I'll get that number for you real quick. Give me just a second. 
Meredith. Uh, yeah, that was hilarious though. That was her complaint. Was like, well, what? Well, how would you like it if 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 someone's if you know how would he was she was arguing to the people there is like, how would you like it if someone was able to sue you because you weren't hearing the you weren't putting the bills up that they wanted? <laughs> Latanya, that's for you, Peter <laughs> the Meredith. Irony of it. The irony of that statement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there he is, Peter <laughs> Meredith. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, now that I'm looking at him and everything, I'm, he'd be a great guy to do a caricature of. You know, I'm not quite sure because yeah. you know, he, he just has that way about him, that look on his face and everything. And yeah, just kind of that that buck tooth ginger that's like a like a, a pencil thin thing with a giant head. You know, like Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Not it, by the way, we're just speculating. We're just speculating. Speculation. Yep. Folks. Yep. We don't know. He may he may be a sensitive guy. He, he, we don't want to hurt his feelings. Yes, that's quite possible. <laughs> very, very, very possible. Uh, Rhino76 sent at least 10 emails yesterday. We'll start making uh, calls next between jobs. Thank you, Rhino. We appreciate it very much. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a good bill to come up today, but this is actually a good one. Okay. Maybe we should be listening to this, too. Uh, that's yeah. that's the opposition when you see they're they're opposing the bill. The Democrats will be opposing it if it's a parents' rights bill. Mm -hmm. I I went and took a quick look at it, at least a summary, and it looks like it is just straight up the parents' rights bill that they've been trying to get through. Okay. Well, okay, I'll turn the audio back on. Number of hearings on the Joint Education really Committee. Bad, uh, I, I now chair that good. committee. Uh, we sent through hours and hours of public testimony, people coming in from all areas of the state on each side of this issue. And I can tell you that the bill that's in front of us is not the result of some outside uh, political interest group uh, that is uh, using the General Assembly as a puppet. This is actually a response on the part of uh, the House uh, as it stands currently. Uh, to what has come to us uh, regularly from uh, nearly every point of uh, every corner of our state. Uh, I can tell you personally that I have heard from teachers, uh, school board members, administrators, parents, students alike uh, on both sides of the issue. Uh, but I can tell you that we have definitely heard from many people who have uh, deep concerns and have been able to provide evidence of those concerns and there's no way for us to ignore the legitimacy of what they've communicated. Uh, I've heard directly from teachers who were concerned about what was taking place in their school district, uh, what was being uh, so required of them in terms of some public or, uh, professionals. Uh, we had Eric Burleson join us a little while ago. So Eric Did Burleson. Did he mention there's any pressure on the floor or anything? No, he didn't know. I mean, on the Senate side, things are quite different right now. Um, he was actually yeah. actively driving to Jefferson City. At yes, he was. Yep. So, yeah, uh, so nothing from any representatives. Now, I did call up uh, uh, Jared Taylor's L.A., Ashley, and she is going to, uh, in fact, she's probably already done it now. She uh, is going over to um, uh, Plocker's office to have them drain the email so we can fill it up again. <laughs> or drain the voicemails, I'm sorry. So, yeah, his voicemail box has been full. It's happened sometime between 6.45 last night and 7.35 this morning is when it, it was full. And uh, so it's never been emptied. So it's still full. I haven't tried it lately, so I should probably try give it a shot right now, actually. Let's see if the voicemail box is full still. Oh, dear God. No, I'm going to have to look it up. I, I, my phone is filled with 573 numbers. I don't know which one's his. It's 1544. Okay, thank you. Fifteen Yes, I can actually remember it now. Okay. <laughs> That's how many times I've called it. Speaker. Speaker phone. Hi there, my name is Patrick Holland, and I'm actually calling for the representative if he's available. Um, no, he's not available. 
He's on the floor. That's a shame. I've uh, been trying to get a hold of him for, for actually over a month, but I was just hoping that I could get an update from him about when he's going to put HB 2118 on the floor. Uh, it's the second most popular bill in Missouri this year. If you want, I you can leave your message and uh, I let you know about your call. Sure. I also I'd also like to see HB two thousand nine on the floor for a proper hearing, uh, because the hearing that he held for it last week, unfortunately, didn't go very well. Um, I think there was uh, some miscommunication there, maybe some deceit, you know, maybe on his and Rudy Avit's part. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, that he'll bring it back to the floor. And also, I want HB 1992. And it's brought to the floor as okay. soon as possible. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know about it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Goodbye. Okay, gang, we can call up the, you know, the, the, the guy who's on the phone is answering Let's the phones it. over at Flocker's office. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to add the number as opposed to replace it. That way you guys have an option of two numbers to get a hold of Dean Flocker because we're all about choice with the Missouri Freedom Initiative. We're not going to force you to have just one number. We're going to give you a choice of two numbers. You the know, choice that's a, of numbers. Yeah, it, Dean Flocker would never give us that choice. Never. Uh, but yeah, he we, is now. <laughs> yep. Okay. So let me go ahead and update the text on the screen. Okay. And then I will go ahead and list it as cell. And then 573-751-1111. Okay, 1544, is that right? Yep. Okay, got it. <clears throat> okay, and that is office. Okay, let me go ahead oh, and move great. that box around just a little bit. There we go. Transition. Boom! You got two numbers. Uh, okay, let me see. If Wonder I if he has a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you know what? You know, maybe, maybe it's not money he wants. Maybe he wants us to do a, a choreography dance or something like that on TikTok for him. Maybe. Wait he'll... a minute. Wait a minute. I'm off. I'm gonna check something. Okay. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, gotcha. All right. Casey's gonna check something for us. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can clean up this text so you guys can see it a little bit better. So we're going to go back to uh, kind of a hot red. <laughs> hot red and see if that transitions better. Uh, not really. Okay. Get another. Oh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with teal and see how that works. There we go. That works a little bit better. Okay. All right, guys. The numbers. Uh, Dean Plocker. Remember now, Dean Plocker wants to hear from you. You can call him at one of two numbers, your choice. The cell phone number also takes texts, but you can call at his office. And Igor, or Igor, I'm not sure, is it Igor? Igor. Igor. Igor is waiting to take your call. He wants to hear from you. His number is 573-751-1544. That is um, not the L.A., but an assistant uh, for Dean Plocker. So... You guys have a, a variety of means to get a hold of Dean Plocker and let him know what your thoughts are. He wants to know what your thoughts are. So let's continue texting, calling, emailing. Let's do it all, gang. Yeah, he's probably feeling pretty lonely in that office all by himself, right? I now. would I think should, so. Uh, give him a little call. Yeah. I think it's important. Make that... him feel wanted. Sure, sure. I mean, everyone needs to feel wanted, really. I mean, it, it should be... You know, once in a while, we, we just need to reach out and let him know. Let him know amen, what you want. Let him know what bills you want, you know, on the floor. You know, he wants to know what you think. And uh, by the way, I did post, 
I did post earlier his neighbor's uh, numbers, too. If you can't get a hold of him or you, you're you getting a voicemail box full, there are other numbers in the YouTube chat. They're his direct neighbors. And that's Hannah Kel or Kelly, Hannah, something like that. Hannah uh, Kelly. Hannah Kelly. And then the other one is, uh, gosh darn it, I can't remember anymore. Uh, so at any rate, yeah. Let's see. Moga has been calling, texting, and emailing Plocker for days. Shelly Hess, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Ginger isn't answering, nor is his staff. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, that's a Ginger. shame. That's a shame. Um, so hang on. Hang on. I got a nickname for him. He's the gingerbread man. Oh, <laughs> gingerbread man. Yeah. Okay. So Peter Meredith is now the gingerbread man. I'm picturing the gingerbread man that's on like Shrek. Yep. Latanya King, MOGA or M M O G A is Make Missouri Great Again. So that's Jody Grace's group. So uh you know, J J I did speak with Jody Grace earlier today. And uh so she's a friend of ours. Let's see. I did ask why so many reaching out to him and why he hasn't responded to any of us. Susie, that's an excellent question. And and that's a very valid question. Um, if people want to actually reach out to him and ask why he is not getting back to us, that works. So let's keep the pressure on, gang. That's That's our job. If we want to get something done, we need to make the effort. You know, and apparently, um, you know, thousands of phone calls, you know, isn't enough. So let's make it, you know, 10,000 phone calls and emails and texts. Well, I'll tell you what, when the Amish start calling it, that don't work. I don't know what's going <laughs> to Okay, let's see what they're up to in the house. Yeah, that's up pretty bad. Get out of his people. For perfection call you. informal, I ask that you recognize a gentleman from Lawrence on a motion for House Bill 1692. Okay, they're on 1692, House Bill 1692 from the informal calendar. Okay, yeah. believe it or not, Plocker does not have a TikTok account. Ah, he does have a Twitter account, though. Oh, that's right. Dean Plocker is on Twitter. Those of you who are on Twitter, uh, at Dean Plocker, that's who Dean is on Twitter. So if you guys have Twitter, okay, I'll bring up my Twitter real quick because you guys twisted my arm. Gosh darn it, you guys are rough. Hang on. All right, let's bring up my Twitter over here, home. And at Dean Plocker. There he is. Hey, there's little Dean. Hey, Dean. What's up? I know what's 23. not up, which is HB2009. HB2118 and HB1992. Can, <laughs> can anything be done to bring these popular bills to the floor? Asking for a friend. Wait a minute. What one are they on now? Uh, I read it out loud. I don't remember anymore. I, I, I said it out loud. Uh, yeah, no, I cast 23 something. I can't remember. Okay. Okay. You guys, if you could see that on your screen there, I'm about ready to uh, leave Dean Plocker a tweet. It says, uh, hey, Dean. This is not my first tweet to him, by the way. Hey, Dean, what's up? I know what's not up. Which is HB two thousand nine, HB twenty eight or twenty one eighteen, and HB nineteen ninety two. Can anything be done to bring these popular bills to the floor? Asking for a friend. Tweet. There we go. So, yep, you can get Dean Plocker on Twitter. So, hang on, let me go ahead and put his Twitter address on the screen for you. Um, hang on, I'll get it. 
Uh, technology is my friend. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can make that work. There we go. Transition. There we go, gang. Now you even have his Twitter. Oh, we'll have all of his socials on here, but you won't be able to see much on the screen anymore except for all of Dean's information. But uh, it's important information, gang. Dean wants to hear from you. If you have Twitter, uh, that's yet another avenue to harass, I'm sorry, to contact Dean Plocker. <laughs> all right, gang. So, yep. Yet another way to contact uh, Blocker the Blocker. <laughs> yep, let's tweet him as well. Yep. Time to put the dumpster in dumpster fire. Yep. That's right. Guys, so yeah, let's, uh, let's keep tweeting uh, Dean Blocker. Let's uh, email and keep calling. And remember now, Igor in his office, that's a guy with a thick Ukrainian accent. Uh, you know, he is now taking phone calls. So I don't know if they, because he answered. I don't know if voicemail is still full or not. Okay, I'm going to turn the audio back on at the house. We'll see what's shaking. Um, there on that bill, there still needs to be some additional work done on that bill. And so we're going to have to look at that bill in the the conference committee as well as what bill in the specialty ag crops bill the senate adopted the original bill did not adopt the committee substitute bill we need to see if we can exceed the differences on that the rest of those bills are intact the way they left and the ones they added were good this bill contains if not all the majority of the ag group's priorities Last year, the ag bill didn't make it across the finish line. We have Mazda tax credits that people are signed up for. Those expired on the 31st of December. Um, those need to be restarted. And then we've got some um, green fuels on this bill that are Missouri made. And um, with that, I will take any questions or I close. Discussion on the motion, lady from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To inquire the bill handler. Gentleman from Pettis, do you yield? I do. Proceed. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah, I don't know what time it is, so <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, I want to thank you for all of your work that you've done on this huge omnibus ag bill. I think we're all in agreement that this is something that needs to get uh, across the finish line uh, in a clean, uh, in a yeah, very so clean way, too. Um, there's a lot of dates that have expired. Okay, you sent him a tweet? Yes. Awesome. Everyone, let's uh let's go ahead and fill up his Twitter box too. So uh, I uh, I just uh I tagged Michael Bull and I said my friend up with Charles just uh north of me <clears throat> has the Amish calling Jefferson City and then I proceeded to reply to that and add a tweet to it and I said the Amish are picking up phones to call you out on withholding legislation. You are a thorn in the side of the peop of the Missouri people, and the public knows your actions are intolerable. There you go. I see that. I just liked your tweet there. Where's, where's it at? i got to add to that. I am retweeting your tweet. Hang on. I'll bring it up on the screen here for everyone to see. So uh, as Liberty Revolutionary just read, that is correct. Uh, that is exactly what he sent. Good for you, man. Well done. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get hey. Let's see if we can get Dean Plocker trending on Twitter. <laughs> okay, let's go. Pound sign Dean Plocker. The blocker. Okay, see if I can start something here. Dean Plocker, the blocker. What say you? I have to admit. Admit. I am getting a bit frustrated with your lack of 
attention. Okay. Put hashtag blocker the blocker. Yep, that's what I did. All right. Let's make it go viral. <laughs> okay, blocker the blocker, what say you? I have to admit, I'm getting a bit frustrated with your lack of attention to the most popular bills of the year in Missouri. Oh, blocker the blocker at Dean Blocker. Okay, there we go. Oop, I did, I spelled Dean, dang it. Uh, P-L-O-C-K-E-R, dang it, I misspelled it. P-L-O-C-H-E-R. Yeah, I know. Uh, hang on, let me copy this and I'll redo it. Copy and delete tweet. Delete, and let's do that again. Paste, and Dean, P-L-O-C-H. Okay. Just get off the phone with Igor. Yep. Made sure I called him by Igor so he knows everyone knows his name. Cool. Did you talk to him? Hey, Igor. Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody, when you call, say, hey, what's up, Igor? Yeah. Right. What's shaking, man? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, everyone. Yeah, uh, you have actually multiple ways to get a hold of Dean Plocker now. You have his private cell phone number, which uh, takes texts as well. You have his office number. You have his official email address and his Twitter handle. So let's, uh, let's let Dean know we're out here. So everyone, uh, if you don't mind... Uh, let's uh, let's burn up the phone lines. Let's uh, let's fill up his text messaging, and let's keep uh, getting him on Twitter. And don't feel guilty about any of this uh, because he has this coming. I mean, he's not answering any of us, so just keep going until. And if someone gets a response from Blocker the Blocker, please chime in and let us know. I will stop the show and, uh, or I'm sorry, I'll stop talking. And then you tell us exactly the contacts you had from blocker, the blocker. We want to know. I've tweeted this live stream twice. Yep. I just replied to your tweet, Caleb. All right. I'm putting it on signal too, and they'll retweet it everywhere too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> social media if you know how to work the algorithm you can make it function you could spread shit so fast yep. yep don't forget to hashtag blocker the blocker with every single yep. text you do for this let's get it trending okay all right i gotta put this out on twitter twitter The live stream. Oh, oh, let me redo that. Uh, delete, delete, and hashtag blocker the blocker. Space, then the YouTube. There we go. There you go, Dean. Okay. So we got to get everyone uh, doing Plocker the Blocker on, on Twitter. Be sure to, okay, I'm going to turn the audio back on. None. Lady from Laclee, do you recognize clothes? Oh, God. Oh, hang on. Mr. Susie's up. My motion. The lady from Laclee has moved that the vote by which House Committee substitute House Bill 2452 as up? amended was perfected be reconsidered. All those yes. in favor vote yes. They're All trying those to reverse. Vote, no, Ms. Clerk, They're trying to reverse the it. The board. It's up. Guys, uh, 2009's right, up. We got it. Well, we got got one. nine is up. <laughs> Is 
you Amish people. Yeah. Oh, look at this. GK Farm is retweeting, voted? retweeting my stuff. This is going to go viral. Who's doing it? A guy by the TK Farm. He's got, uh, let's see here. He's got 1,300 followers. I'm following him back. Okay. Hang on. I got to get in and retweet your stuff Please. here real quick. This is going to go viral. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Retweeted. Love. Retweet. <laughs> Oh man, I, I think they got tired of <laughs> oh. Yes, Charles, dumpster fire troll level. <laughs> is everyone voting? <laughs> this is how Woo. you do it. What is Bam. he tweeting? He trolled. He he tweeted. He retweeted my thing, and he put two two Amish people, one throwing a cup of milk on the other. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Awesome. So we're trolling blocker now. We're okay. trolling blocker. It's going to pick up. <laughs> okay. All right, gang. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to keep that audio Gentleman going. Jackson. Mr. The Speaker, audio is on. Please call the absentees. Mr. Clerk, please cle call the absentees. They're trying to reverse the damage that was done last Thursday right now to Susie Pollock's bill. Andrews. Oh, my God. Notifications are just Land lighting Madeline. up on my Butts. Twitter. Krista Finelli. Coleman, 97. Davidson, Durgis, Dogan, Fitzwater, Gregory 96, Griffith, Hardwick, Hawks, Mackey, Mayu, Agar, Mosley, Owen, Perkins, Heisman, Price, Roberts, Schnelting, Shawl, Brent, Mr. Speaker. Has everyone voted? Mr. Clerk, please close the board and tie the vote by your vote of 54 yes, 79 no. You have failed to approve the lady's motion. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The next order of business is announcements. Announcements. Gentleman from St. Louis County. Oh my God, guys! Speaker announcement. Did you hear that? Uh, it failed. The motion to reverse uh, failed on Susie um, uh, Susie Pollock's bill. For today, oh, um, if anyone is interested, though, uh, sometime after, I, I would say right around. It looks like it. The morning for the committee's knowledge, we will not be executing um, in the morning. We'll be doing that Thursday morning. So, uh, but we we'll still have public testimony at eight o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further announcements, gentleman from Jasper. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your committee on budget will meet in House Hearing Room Three at three o'clock this afternoon for executive session. Thank you. Further Mr. announcements, Speaker. seeing none, gentleman from St. Louis County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members should be prepared to consider all House Joint Resolutions for Perfection, House Joint Resolutions for Perfection Informal, House Bills for Perfection, House Bills for Perfection Informal, and the following bills for perfection appropriations. House Committee Substitute to House Bill 3017, House Committee Substitute to House Bill 3018, House Committee Substitute to House Bill 3019, and House Committee Substitute to House Bill 3021. And with no further business, Mr. Speaker, coming before the body today, I now I move that the House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Wednesday, April the 20th, 2022. The gentleman from St. Louis County has moved the House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have the House is adjourned. Oh, they get to go home now. Okay, gang. Uh... I'll tell you what, let me confirm what I think I heard. Let me uh, text someone real quick. 79 no. Whose legislation he... Uh... Threaten withholding. 
they voted for it. I'm waiting for a text back. And when you get a text back, let me know what's up. I'm going to immediately tweet it. Okay. I can't believe that thing got shot down. Yeah, she was trying to reverse the amendment. Now, I wonder if she gets another shot at that if her bill goes on the floor. Well, that was it. They called her bill to the floor. Oh, and she was oh, okay. oh I'm sorry. I thought it was bill. just... Yeah. turn this off <clears throat> okay guys uh we i don't know the status of 2009 yet but 2118 and 1992 still have not had their time on the floor so uh but i'm waiting to let you guys know here i've, I've texted jody grace and hopefully we'll hear something back from her real quick I can also uh, text a few other people here. Real quick. Well, I tell you what, man, they don't get two one one eight up there. Come that gun rally day, every one of them people need to know what a uh, plocker did. Yep. Y'all need to know. He told me that thing was never going to see the light of day. Okay. Two texts in now. How many of those people that voted were aware, though, what happened with that other amendment I, before? I don't know. Oh, they're still withholding which ones? Uh, 2118 and... In 1992. And actually, on the informal calendar, is 1613, but we've not been pushing real hard for that at this point. Um, because they can fix it if it gets back on the floor again. Or, I'm sorry, if it gets on the floor. It's not been on the floor before. It was destroyed yeah. in committee. That's the civil asset forfeiture bill. Okay. Still waiting to get a text back to see what happened with 2000. In other words, whatever they did um, can't be reversed. Or it, it they voted to not reverse it on Susie Pollock's bill. That's what it sounded like to me. You know, we need to do, we need to call some of those, uh, whoever voted, voted against that, call them up and ask them why they did that. Yep. Well, with that being said, you're going to have to call just about everybody in the house. Pretty much. Well, half of them anyway. Right. Just pick out some main ones, you know, and let's see what the deal is. Were they even aware of what they were voting on? A good question. I mean, I would think that they would have to know they've had they've had time to take a look at it now. Well, everybody pushing their own legislation and stuff, they might not have. I mean, I guess I'm just trying to figure out where where Missouri has shifted. I mean, obviously it's gotta be, you know, funding or whatever, but by who? Is it federal? Is it, you know, Pharma, is it, you know what I mean? I think what it is, is you just got a few bad apples in high positions, man. They're controlling the legislation. You know, SAPA got passed. Uh, powers to be weren't too happy with that. Now, now this is punishment. <laughs> They're trying to send all this crazy uh, ballot initiative legislation. They're shutting down every, everything that people want. Pulling, you know, nonsense like this. But to me, though, it seemed like this this really goes deeper than SAPA, though, because they, they've pretty much cut our voice out even without doing, you know, a ballot initiative. 
Yep. So they pretty much cut all Missourians out anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. When SAPA got passed, we uh, threw a big monkey wrench in their way of doing business. Now this is, this is, you know, now they're going to try and crush us. Right. But hey, at least, at least we're exposing them now. At least, at least we know they're, they're mad at us and they're trying to do something. Well, well and like we just like when Plocker came straight up, told me, yeah, you building ain't going to see a lot of day. At least now we know, you know, if you come out and say, there's no, well, maybe it was the redistricting or maybe it's the budget. No, that's not it. Well, I'm just saying, they're even, not even, the crushes. I'm just saying, even outside of that, though, like we have, there's, from all the chats and stuff that we've done, it seems like there is no recourse that Missourians can do. We can't recall anybody. The people, you know, the people in the House and the Senate, they can't do anything about it. So, yep. I mean, the, you would think you would think that they would let people know that, hey, man, this is what's happening. I'm, I'm not against, you know, I'm not for it, but nobody's saying anything. Like they're just going along with it. Well, the the average folks in Missouri don't know, and I think. Um, the elected people are afraid of their bills failing if they speak out against leadership or bills not even being called to the floor. I think that's what's going on. We'll confirm that, though. Right. I will actually confirm that. Uh, I'll call up some people I know in the House and ask why they're not putting their foot down on this whole blocker thing. And I think it's because he's everyone thinks he's going to be Speaker next year, so they want to be in his favor so they can get their pill, their bills through. And if anybody says they're, you know, because it's because we're what we're doing, that's nonsense. All we're doing is trying to put some sunlight on this thing and show everybody what's going on. That's right. And we won't this stop. Is, this is this is our right now. This is our only recourse to do it. So I, I, you know, if any any of these reps come out and say, "Well, it's the way you guys are acting," well, how else in the fuck are we supposed to act? We got no other recourse. Just supposed to sit there and let these people stomp on us. That's what they're doing. That's what this plocker motherfucker is doing. Yep. Yeah, Rhino Rhino seventy six got a comment. So now Plocker can say, "See, I moved it to the floor. It just didn't pass." Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what went on behind the scenes. Yep. We we yeah we got to start calling people and asking, hey, why'd you vote against this? Yep. I'm still waiting. I've got texts into two people. Still nothing back. Tanya King. They keep cornering Missourians, and we will come out fighting. I believe they want. Well, if they want it. They'll. I, Fucking give it to him. Way too much power needs to stop. If it interferes with the will of the people, they cross the line. Exactly, Rhino. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I still haven't gotten anything back, so I'm going to call Susie's L.A. real quick and see if I can get some direct information. Call it Susie. I just tweeted some more stuff. Um... Let's see here. Guys, I'll be right back. You guys can keep. You guys can keep talking, though. Oh yeah. I'm just looking at the all these tweets. I get. I guess he got mad when his uh, Twitter got lit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's about to be even more mad when he gets back to his office. Man, he's gonna get. He's gonna get now. lit. He's gonna get lit. <laughs> 
Oh, here's a good one. TK Farm. I put you have to be blocking some real popular legislation when the Amish start calling you. Yeah, I didn't know that's that's Latoya King. I didn't know that. Is it okay? Yeah, you got up there facts. <laughs> Did you see what I retweeted of your, uh... Yep, sure did. I'm gonna... reply to that. God. This is Oh, okay. See if she's willing to come on. Okay, gang. Um, Susie Pollock right now is meeting with um, Ron Calzone, and Ron said uh, he would call me back as soon as he was done with the meeting. Okay. So that's where it's at. So I did not talk to Susie. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, all right. God. Well, it, Ron did get my text, though. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what I understood happened. She tried to reverse that amendment on her bill, and it was voted down. So her bill still stands with that, with those two amendments on it that basically killed the bill. Yep. Question and is, why did everybody vote it down? I don't oh, know. Oh, we already know, because the, the, whatever legislation they want to try to get through is threatened. Yep. Mm -hmm. We know it. Dean Plocker is an extortionist. That is. Are we? Are we even? Are we even speculating anymore? Really? That's I mean, not even. That's not even. If if the if that is the case that he went around threatening them, then that makes it makes it extortion. Yep. Okay. So speculating on that, but if it is true, yep. then it's extortion. Yep. Without a doubt. But getting anybody to come out and say that 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 happened would be a whole other thing. But you know what? If a few of them would, we could get this dude out of here. Sometimes when it comes to dealing with people like this, you word things right and you make it public. Um... Big words like extortion and bribery and things like that tend to put a bad name on these people. I'll tell you what, man. Like I said, if, if some, there's been representatives where he said, if you want your legislation to see a lot of day, you'll yeah. vote this down. If they, if it's happening, man, if they had the guts to come out, say it. Mm -hmm. I think this dude can be dealt with pretty quick. I hope I read that wrong, but I, I, Pretty sure that's what I heard. What? Uh, what happened on the floor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's exactly what happened. Ron said it. That's because he's there. He's no, there. Ron didn't say anything yet. I'm speculating. Oh, he didn't say anything. Who no, oh, uh, -uh. Okay. no. I'm waiting for him to call me. Actually. Oh, okay. Because he's currently meeting with Susie Pollock. We'll see. Okay.
All right, gang. Well, I'll tell you what. The House is adjourned for today. Um, waiting to hear back from Ron, for, but I think I'm pretty sure that's what I heard, is that um, Susie tried to reverse the damage they did to her bill on Thursday, and that was rejected by a, a, a House vote. So uh, that's what I think happened. If that is not the case and I hear something different, I'll certainly put out a video and let everyone know. But um, I'll tell you what, though, um, for those of you who are watching this right now, let's continue calling Dean Plocker's office. We have um, other bills we do care about. Um, and, you know, obviously he's, he's really trying hard not to let 1992 and 2118 hit the floor. He keeps bringing up informal calendar stuff over and over again not hitting the formal calendar that as floor is you know the floor uh what is he floor manager or whatever he has the right to do that floor leader that's what it is floor sweeper yeah blocker the blocker strikes again man this dude's something else yes he is Chats, you have competition. <laughs> okay. All right, gang. Well, if it's all right with you guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop the live stream for now. Um, if uh, we won't do another live stream tonight unless something extreme comes up. Uh, so I'll tell you what. Right now, as it stands, we just need to be watching what's happening in the house. But I have to go back to work. Uh, I can't keep taking time off. Uh, so... Right now, our regularly scheduled Thursday night live stream is our next event. If something comes out before then that we can't do anything about, I'll put out a video about it. And KC probably will too. So, um, but that's what I think happened. Um, let's see. Uh, Latanya King says, Twitter's forever, so I'm going to continue to do my thing and text him. Okay, gotcha. All right, yep. Uh, I thank you very much. Everyone who's participating in this, thank you very much. Uh, you see what we have to do to try and keep our state free because there are people that don't want it to be free. And so we have to continue fighting. And on the state level, you can actually get things done. We still have SEPA. And th by the way, there's nothing new from the Supreme Court on that. But in fact, uh, we should look that up. Supreme Court rulings uh, Tuesdays. And today's Tuesday. So maybe they release some rulings on that. We'll take a look at that real quick. Yeah, they're going to hold off on that until all of SAPA legislation with teeth has been struck down in all the states. Okay, opinions of the Supreme Court. They don't want it getting outside of Missouri. Okay, looks like the last time, oh, no, it's four or five. Last time they released something. And, uh, nope, nothing on SAPA. Uh, so it'll be next Tuesday. Yep. Next Tuesday, um, we should have some some news about SEPA. Actually, four or five? No, it'll be today. They just haven't released it yet. So, yeah, we're still waiting to hear about SEPA. Uh, check back on that. I'll go ahead and throw that in the YouTube. If you guys want to check on the Missouri Supreme Court, we're still waiting to hear their findings on SEPA. However, um, it is, uh, I have it on pretty good authority that it is most likely um, not going to overturn SEPA. And th the reason we know this is because the uh, Department of Justice has already filed a case in the uh, a Federal Court of Appeals. So I think they've had heads up that uh, the Missouri Supreme Court is going to say SEPA is fine. So that's what we think anyway. We don't know, but yeah. we do think that's the case. They're just going to drag their feet before they come out with that decision. Mm -hmm. they hold it. They're going to hold it off as long as they can. Yep. So, but at any rate, there's the link to the uh, Missouri Supreme Court. I want to thank all of you. It's been a long day. It's been five hours since we started streaming, and I certainly want to thank those who came into the Discord today uh, to help me, you know, basically with this process. That would be Casey Rich. And, of course, uh, Caleb, a liberty revolutionary. And Scott came in for a while, and Rebel Cry came in for a while. So thank you to all you guys uh, for doing this on short notice. 
Um, and like I said, gang, um, we need to keep making these phone calls, but not only to Plocker, but to your representative as well for the bills that we care about. Uh, because there's still a little bit of time left, but trust me, there's not much. So, and what I mean by that is it still takes a while for that stuff to go through the Senate. And so that's the limitation we're hitting. They could pass it in the House, but they may not have enough time to get it done in the Senate. So, uh, you know, like I said, this, this time right now that we have is critical. And uh, if I, uh, when I hear back from Ron, I'll probably make a standalone video to let you guys know um, what Ron had described to me, what actually happened. But I do think that's what happened. And I didn't catch all of it because we were muted. So yep. I'll have to go back and see if they've got a recording of today's events so I can listen to that. Yeah. Um, I will say that uh, I'm glad Charles came in here. Got the, he got the Amish in on it. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much to Charles. If you're listening in, thank you, Charles Uplifted, for all your help. <laughs> Thank you, Amish people. Yep, and thank you to the Amish folks and, if you uh, guys are listening in. You know, if 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 for some reason we we push like this and we don't get something to, and we don't get as much done as we want to get done or nothing gets through, we know who to blame. Mm -hmm. Yep, blocker. Yep, yep that's, that's right. right. It's it's he not redistricting. It's not the budget. It's blocker. Yep. Well, it's both. Well, we actually, redistricting a took a lot of time. Yeah. It's blocker. Yep. Yeah. It's blocker. Quit. It's blocker. Yeah. Okay, it's blocker. Gotcha. Yep. At the there end you of, go. At the there end you of the go. Day, though, if we uh, if we don't get a major win this year, the next year it's focusing on blocker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, actually, um, there is a Democrat running against him, and this primary is primary. This yeah. This, well, actually, that won't even be uh, on the primary. That'll be on the general well, election. Yeah, general election. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. And so one thing we may want to consider is supporting the Democrat who's running against Plocker. And I know that's counterintuitive to a lot of people, but strategically, yep. it's a very, very good move because, number one, if that Democrat won, Plocker would be gone. And number two, that Democrat would not have, um, you know, speaker or floor leader or anything else like that. So and number it, three, it's a message. Yep. Because we're, we're already over two thirds Republican in our uh, legislature i'm sure at this next election election cycle we might wind up with a couple more too yep so if we had gotten rid of plocker and even if a democrat gets in there it's still in the st louis area but it means that they would hold that that district that plocker came out of that has all the banker ties and everything would wind up being in a minority position meaning yep. they cannot hold a majority floor leader and they cannot hold a speaker of the house position yep so that's something that we can do. We're asking people in the House to deal with Plocker. They have no House rules to deal with him. So, uh, you know, but once again, there is a vote that's going to happen in January of 2023 uh, to determine who is Speaker of the House and who is the floor leader. So that they can deal with. Now, what we can deal with is actually making sure he loses his election. It's too late for anyone else to file to run, but there is a Democrat running against Blocker. So, uh, at any rate, something to think about. Okay, if you guys have uh, any other comments or questions or anything, please throw them in the YouTube chat as soon as you can, because we're going to wrap up here pretty quick. Again, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, we, we did our best, gang, and uh, like I said, as soon as I talked to Ron, and understand a whole lot better because there's parts of this we missed. Um, as soon as I understand a whole lot better, I'll put out a standalone video explaining what happened with Susie's bill today. And I'm sorry I muted for so long. Uh, I, I muted, you know, the feed from the house because they were dealing with some nonsense issues. And I didn't want that, you know, taking up uh, any of our valuable talk time. Uh. Yeah, I know. Well, it was a disappointment here, but we will have many successes ahead, though. We will. <clears throat> We're not done well, for the year. Hey, look, first of all, we got his attention. We finally. <laughs> yep. Yep. He put it on the floor. Of course, now, now he just could. Like I said, man, we need to talk to these people that voted against it and find out why they did. Yep. Oh, he's not going to like what's coming here. He, no. He, he's he's going to see his Twitter, and he's going to be pissed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, he'll just see it as trolling. <clears throat> so, you know, he won't pay any mind to it. Yeah. But at least other people will see it. That's yeah, the point. Other people will see it and find out That's what's going the point on. Is it spreads that information. Mm -hmm. I ain't worried about what Clocker thinks about it. I'm worried. People just need to see it. Yep. Okay. We haven't had anything new come in the YouTube chat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap her up. I want to thank you all again for joining us. Uh, yes, definitely. And I know this was a long day. Um, I took time off of work today to do this. I, it was that important to me. Um, keep watching the house gang because 2118 in 1992 will eventually get to the house floor. They will eventually get there. But when? I mean, Plocker's not following, you know, the, the, the main calendar. He keeps pulling from the informal. So we don't know well, when he's going to bring them up. We got to force him to do it. Yep. Pretty much. So that's the pressure from us. And who knows? Maybe it's because of us that Susie's bill was actually brought to the floor. Uh, you know, we just don't know. Um, I suspect. Hey, Go ahead. I am say I was going to let you know, Charles sent me an audio, audio message about 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, send me his profile. Send me everything you need. And he's going to get a bunch of goons to go out and troll the living hell out of him. Yeah, there Good. you go. There you go. Well, hang on. He's got a lot of that. It's on the screen right now. I know, but he's going to get about a, a hundred times over that. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thanks again. He's going to become a very popular, more popular than he wants. Yep. Plocker the Blocker needs to trend on Twitter, gang. Let's make it happen. Yes. So every Let's tweet you send out, no matter who it's to, just go ahead and hashtag Plocker the Blocker. Plocker the Blocker. Yeah, let's get it trending. <laughs> Is that all one word? Yep, that's right. Plocker the blocker. Or actually, it's Dean Plocker the blocker. I think is what I put. Well, we, I, it, bo do both. Yep. Block, Plocker the blocker and Dean Plocker the blocker. Yep. Yeah, Dean Plocker is actually a person on Twitter, so it's better to do it that way if you can. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, my thanks again to all of you. Uh, and this stuff matters. We're not going to win every battle, but the point is to win the war. And that's what we intend to do with the Missouri Freedom Initiative. In other groups like Jody Grace's Make Missouri Great Again, Ron Calzone's group, Missouri, uh, uh, Missouri First or MoFirst.org, and uh, our new friends with, um, uh, oh gosh darn it, what's the name of that organization? Conservatives Against Corruption. Yep, thank you. Conservatives Against Corruption. Um, In other words, against Dean Plocker. Yep. There's a lot of grassroots movements growing up around this, and we're making noise, and apparently we're being heard. So uh, let's see. Charles Uplifted said, we need a propaganda system to make posters and let people know about these bills. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not a half bad idea, and we have plenty of time to get stuff done during the uh, campaign season once legislative season's over. So we uh, printing press and, and I could work on this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So uh, let's get the good work done. Thank you again, gang. Uh, can't thank you enough for everything that you've done. And once again, we can't win every one of them, but we're going to try. And the, the real deal is here is to win the war. We're going to lose some battles. I think we lost the one today with 2009. But I'll make a, a video on that as soon as I know for sure, and I'll let you guys know. Guys, may God bless each and every one of you. Thanks again to uh, uh, Casey Rich and uh, Caleb uh, for being here with us all day. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Remember now, live stream Thursday night. If we have something come up sooner, I'll send out an email and put out a YouTube notification. Take care, gang. Auf Wiedersehen.